Hey, who's this guy? Who let this guy in?
Oh, chat. I am so excited for today. You guys have no idea. I have literally been waiting to stream because all I want to do is play this game. <laughs> So that's like the main reason why we haven't had streams in the past few days. Um, so anyways, before we dive on in and answer all the questions, I have one more surprise for those of you who are not, who are not Discord subs. For those of you who aren't Discord subs, you, you might not know about this. But we did in fact hit a goal a little while ago where I had to order something. And that thing arrived. It arrived. And it's being added to the wheel, baby. It's a bear onesie. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, it's actually so... F it's so warm. It is so warm, dude. I cannot... I cannot tell you how actually nice quality this thing is. I'm genuinely blown away. It's like super soft. The pockets are fur lined. Okay. There is a tail, but I'm not going to get up and show you guys my butt. You guys have to give me money for that. Um, the, the head is like actually really solid. I got, I got a medium. I'm thinking I should have went with a large because it is like a little tighter than I wanted. Like I wanted a little looser. I have to wear pretty thin clothes to be comfortable in it, but it's pretty great. It's pretty great. I'm a little worried I'm going to cook myself in it, though. You're going to be drenched by noon. Honestly, yeah, I've already been wearing it an hour, and I feel like I'm dying. Um, So that's, uh, we might have to, like, do a little unzipping every once in a while just so I don't, like, overheat and have to go to the hospital. <laughs> um, are you implying that you're naked under your clothes? No, no, no. I have a shirt and, and shorts on, but I might have to be in the future. Um... <laughs> Anyways, welcome to TDW, welcome in Claude, welcome in Lane Grady, welcome in and Swanee, welcome in J15, welcome in Top K Pop, Christabel, who else is here? Sully, obviously, welcome. Uh, Mr. Papa Bear, thanks for following, welcome in. Um, thanks for the punch, hey guy, bud, appreciate you. Also, welcome in. Uh, Ms. Gander, RLJ Slick, welcome in as well. Harbor Master J, hello, hello. And Bradley. Hello, Bradley. The most normal chatter we have. Uh, listen, guys, I was not going to do a, an energy drink tier list today, but then I was like, we haven't done one in a while, and I'm like actually hoarding energy drinks at this point. So uh, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna do it. Um, you were listening to the original, like the OST for the game, um, but... Uh, yeah, I only downloaded a couple of the songs from the OST. So, like, now we're back on the master plan music until we launch in the game. Uh, so, just so you guys know. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm actually very impressed with this thing. Oh, my God, this looks like I'm looking in a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, I'm very excited to play the Manor Lords. I hope you guys are excited, too. If you guys didn't play Manor Lords during the demo two years ago when it was out, two, three years ago at this point, I don't remember how long it was. Um, I did. I was obsessed with it. I loved it. I was disappointed when it went away. I'm very excited to play the game again. Um, it, spoiler, it looks beautiful. Um, I have some super sick sh screenshots I took. They're not, like, insanely good or anything like that, but they were just, like, I was just naturally playing the game and saw the view and it was like, this is beautiful, you know? Um, so yeah, game stellar. Game is stellar. There's a lot of creators that have early access also. Um, so I want to give you guys some context into today. So today, no wheel. So if we fill up any of these bars, they're going to stack. So no wheel today. Um, we're just doing the bear suit. Bear suit's getting added to the wheel also just so you guys know um potential for streams this weekend definitely one monday no stream tuesday my wife has to have surgery on tuesday so no stream tuesday um but i have this early access until the game comes out so expect definitely some more manor lord streams after today for sure uh 
All right, well, she's at work right now. <laughs> but she will be chilling, big chilling. Uh, it's a pretty decent... Um, it's like a decently long recovery. It can be anywhere between one to six weeks. So, um, first thing to get cut off time schedule is streams, sadly. Then it's YouTube videos. Then, uh, obviously it would be work, but I would hate to have to do that. So, um, yeah, my wife is having surgery on Wednesday. Let's go surgery buddies. Um, yeah. When did you get access? I'm tempted to DM them, but I want to watch you first. Uh, I've had it for, I don't know how much I can say. I'm choosing to be more conservative in my, what I'm allowed to say and what I'm not allowed to say on this game because there was a lot of discrepancies that people had in the NDAs where a lot of people said they had the game before they were supposed to. So I want to err on the side of caution with it but I've had it for uh, not longer than a week. So, but I did email them like two, three weeks ago. Now that everyone has like their content, like now that everyone's gonna start pushing their content out, I have no idea how busy, I'm sure they'll be super busy, the um, community people are from Hooded Horse, which is the publisher. Um, I don't know how busy they'll be, but they were like pretty responsive when I was messaging them. So, uh, yeah, dude, let them know. I mean, it doesn't hurt. I, mean, I have two weeks early access, guys. <laughs> like, I mean, like the game doesn't come out until like what the 26th It's 26. Yeah. So yeah, I had to step away. I came back. What are you wearing? <laughs> Stink up the room. Yeah, dude. I'm going to cook in this thing. I'll be honest with you. Thankfully, I'm in the basement, so it stays cooler than the most of my house. But I had to turn the heater down. I did. I had to turn it down. I'm going to I'm gonna hopefully not cook today. We'll see. I get hot real easy, but I'm okay so far. I am okay so far. Um, Eventually, we, we're going to have to do a little, a little zip tease, if you know what I mean. Um, from the miscarriage, your body hasn't actually flushed out what it needs to. Oh, yeah, word. Uh, say so that AC to minus degrees. Yeah, I might have to turn on the AC. <laughs> First time of the year. Five subs if you're not wearing anything underneath. Yeah. Sadly, I am wearing something underneath. Um... Anyways, yeah, let's start diving into the energy drinks so we can actually dive into the review or into the reviews. Taylor and I also started buying these Fit Crunch bars as like protein bars. Shout out to Sean and Chat for suggest. Well, I guess you kind of suggested these with the foot with bread. <laughs> bread. Okay, all right. Uh, well, yeah, we started buying these Fit Crunch bars. The peanut butter and jelly one's really good. I'm gonna try out the uh, chocolate peanut butter one today. We're about to start doing a protein bar tier list. Are you guys excited? No, I'm just kidding. I just need to eat something. Mmm. Okay. Those are good. I think I prefer the peanut butter jelly one. But that's good. That's on his only bears account? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Where's Lone Bear? We need Lone Bear in here. <laughs> That's actually really good. All right. Let's dive into today's energy drink review before we dive into Manor Lords, shall we? Cerveza Cristal. Cerveza Just kidding, we're trying NOS Zero. This is an energy drink I've always seen in the stores since like I was like younger and I've always been too scared to try because like it's literally named after nitrous oxide, um, which is kind of scary. <laughs> um, I went to Love's for the first time, which is a truck stop because uh, we were like over near one this week. And so I went this time, and uh, when I was in there, I was looking at their energy drink selection, and they didn't have a lot of cool ones, but I did see these in zero, and I was like, fuck it, let's let's try it. Let's give it a shot. So, 
Um, I don't know if it's going to taste just like Monster or Rockstar or whatever, but, you know, it's got to be better than Red Bull. That's the bar standard, you know? Nas is my favorite back in high school. Really? Interesting. Is that the same Loves that has the Hardys? Yep, that's the one. Bears suit versus Bears jersey. I would rather wear... Dude, I said this on the YouTube thing, too. Hello from YouTube. Hello from YouTube. Hello, YouTube. Hello, YouTube chatters. We are live on both YouTube and Twitch today, guys, just so you guys know. Um, Yeah, I would rather wear a Bears jersey than a Packers jersey. Yeah, for sure. 100%. 100%. In the NFC North, obviously it's Lions on top, then Bears, then Vikings, then Packers. Okay, that's 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 my that's my NFC North um tier list in terms of how much I like slash dislike the team. Yeah. I live right in between Chicago and Detroit. I like it's fine. It's fine. You know, Bears win, whatever. They better not beat the Lions though. Uh, whippets and energy drinks. Uh, can you please put on a red shirt and no pants to match the little guy behind you? Yeah, dude, I should, I should get a red shirt and put it on over it. That's a good one. That's such a good one, Sean. Thank you for getting a tier one sub. Um, just so you guys know, we're not doing wheel spins. I know we just filled up the bar. We're not doing wheel spins today, just so we can focus on Manor Lords. Okay. I know we're like kind of like delaying and stalling right now, and we got to do the energy drink tier list. But um, yeah, those are all. Those are all tomorrow. We're doing those, or not tomorrow, Monday. We'll 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 do the wheel spins on Monday or whenever the next stream is. So the neutral zone, yeah. Grand Rapids is uh great place i like it here um thanks for choosing the bears over the packers absolutely any day any day friend <laughs> take that sip yeah let's uh let's let's figure out how much caffeine's in this puppy shall we let's figure it out hold on it's always in different spots on the can Two hundred milligrams. God, that's like hidden in there. Two hundred milligrams per can, so it's the same as an Alani. Um, Two hundred milligrams of cafe. Oh, it says right there in big bold letters. I'm a fucking idiot. Um, taurine inostol. I've never seen inostol before. I don't know what that is. Um, two hundred fifty percent of B three, two hundred and forty percent of B six, and five hundred percent of B twelve, um, and four hundred percent of B five. So zero sugar. Um. Not that much sodium. I'm actually kind of surprised by how little sodium is in this. Usually, at, like, they have pretty high sodium amounts. I'm genuinely surprised by how little sodium is in this can. Uh, they do use sucralose, though, which is the best artificial sweetener. Um, let's see how this goes. No love for Stevia? No, I hate Stevia. It's not as bad as, like, some of the more other natural sweeteners, but no. This is a very strange smell. Not in a bad way. <laughs> I can't do it. He's so fucking gross. I love him doing that. Dude, it has the strangest smell. I can't place it. I lived in Toledo. Oh, you mean that place that we like fought a war over and they gave us the UP to stop fighting a war over? It's got the strangest smell. I can't place it. Matias, welcome in. That outfit is unbearable. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. This is the strangest shit. This is not at all what I expected this thing to taste like. It's like citrusy. In like the best way. This is way better than like generic Red Bull or generic Monster. What? This actually tastes good. I didn't expect that. I'm going to be honest with you. I expected to be putting this in like C tier somewhere. This is actually really solid. Holy shit. It's like got 
Grapefruit. It's grapefruit. I think it's a grapefruit flavor. I think it's grapefruit. I can't place the actual flavor, but I think it's grapefruit. I did keto for a while, couldn't uh, do sucralose because it gets turned into sugar in your body. Oh, got it. So like, while it doesn't have like caloric um, value, it like your body will process it like shit. Got it. So like, then you won't go into ketosis. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, so if you're my coffee, the other non-sugar sweeteners mess with me. Uh, okay, word. Yeah, that's fine. That's how I get with like actual sugar. Like if I drink, like when we did the rip it. Um, energy drink the other day, like, I, my stomach hurt, dude. I can't drink that much sugar. It hurts my tummy. Juice, like, fruit juice does the same thing. If I drink too much sugar, it's like, mm -mm, no go. Um, like, if it's a really sweet fruit juice. Then it's just, like, the sugar version. Uh, kind of orange citrusy. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, maybe grapefruit. I can't, I think it's grapefruit. I've never ate a lot of grapefruit in life, so, like, maybe it's not grapefruit flavor, but it smells like... And tastes like a lot of the grapefruit stuff. This is actually really good. For Christmas, I got my six foot one 16 year old daughter a giraffe onesie. Let's go. Yeah, this is really good, guys. I actually really like that. I didn't expect to like that. I didn't expect to like that. Okay, let's figure out where we're placing it. Um, spoiler alert, on the left-hand side here is all, except for this monster, which is right here. Um, all of these energy drinks on the left here are energy drinks that I have in the house. So, um, these are energy drinks that you'll see get cycled through here at some point. I'm not going to name what they are. You'll have to guess. Um, but I already added them to the, the sheet, so I don't have to worry about it later. Um, where do I put this NOS? Uh, straight up. I think this goes above monsters ruby the the ultra fantasy i think it goes above ultra fantasy that's not the rosa where did the rosa go i don't know what happened to that one i think it goes below the peach one though in a tier which group, which did, did I put the, those in a group? No, I did not. They need to be in one. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it right here in terms of flavor. Yeah, these need to go into a group. We got to organize this shit. I think this is where it goes. It is very good. I really like it. Actually. No. I take it back. I think this is a bottom S. I think this is like directly below White Monster for me. Because I think it's got like kind of a similar flavor profile. And I think I liked the White Monster better. But it's good, dude. Where is it at? There it is. Yeah. I'm going to throw it nest here. I think that's really good, dude. I'm very happy with this. I'm blown away by a lot of these. That A lot of these I like judged a lot. Not knowing what they were going to taste like or thinking that they were just going to taste like another generic monster, rock star, Red Bull. And this is actually way better. Would purchase again. Yeah, I would definitely purchase that again. I could see myself going. I have a craving for this energy drink now. And, like, get it at a gas station or something. Yeah, for sure, Zs. For sure, Zs. Um, you try Prime Icy Pop Energy Drink yet? No, I'm kind of, like, avoiding buying Prime. I'm going to be honest with you guys. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I'm trying to dodge it. <laughs> Yeah, these are really good. I'm very impressed with the way these taste. 
I'm allergic to coconut water. Oh, really? Well, you're not going to like that new Dr. Pepper then. There's a new um, coconut Dr. Pepper. I don't know if it's actually made with coconut water or not, but it's creamy coconut. I don't know that it's out yet or not, but coming soon, TM. All right. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. Let's dive into this game. Let's heckin' dive into this game, okay? That's what we're all here for. It's what we want. Okay. Um, You're met with this every single... I'm met with this every single time I boot up the game. This game is still in development. Manor Lords is an indie passion project, and even though it's been seven years, the game still needs more time to be fully complete. Certain game or platform features might not work as expected, and you might probably encounter bugs or crashes. Feel free to drop feedback in the Discord server. Yada, yada, yada. That's relevant only to me. Thank you for understanding as I continue to work on the game. Uh, Greg Manor Lord Dev. This game's made by, like, one dude, <laughs> by the way. He's contracted out for certain stuff, but it's one guy. <laughs> this is one dude's passion project for the past seven years, okay? And there's going to be things that you're going to see in this game that are only going to be possible by a, a passion project developer, right? Like, little things that, like, normal developers would be like, this is not worth the cost-benefit analysis. Like, this is not going to provide value to the players, that's worth the time that this guy just went and did anyways, right? <laughs> like the development time to make some of the things that are in this that were just so unnecessary, but just provide you that extra ounce of little joy when you first play the game. So it's, it's so good. It's so good. Um, yeah. Uh, anyways, I turned the audio off when I was last playing. Let me turn that back up. Google Creamy Coconut Dr. Pepper 429 National Rollout. Ooh. Okay. Um, Juvies, apparently, which is an energy drink owned by um, Nadeshot, um, who is the CEO of um, 100 Thieves, is supposed to be in Target now. Um, but I went, and I didn't see it. So I don't know what the fuck that's about, but I'm pissed. Not sure how I feel about that flavor. I'm interested to try it. For sure. Generally speaking, I'm not a super big coconut enjoyer, but if it's blended right, like it's overshadowed by all this unyielding ray. <laughs> <gasps> I'm looking forward to the release of Manor Lords. Wish I could have gotten in on the early access. I'm blown away by how early of access they gave us. I think this is like crazy, because like I think people are gonna be like, give it to me by like the end of the two weeks. Um, but <laughs> yeah, let me, um, let me really quickly pull up my information sheet sheet they sent us. So that way I can answer some of the questions, um, easier. Woo! Armchair. How the fuck are you, dude? How's Chicago? Wait, what the heck happened to my cheat sheet? Oh, it's in here. No, that's the trailer. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to watch the trailer. I'm tired. Chicago is good. Well, that's good at least. Hey, guys! Thank you for being lurker tech supporting social services and poor chatters. Creamies will help cut down on the bitterness of Dr Pepper. 
I don't know that I think Dr. Pepper's bitter. I mean, maybe it is. It's got 23 unique flavors. Um, fact, fact sheet. Here we go. Yeah, April 26th is the release. It comes out on GOG, Microsoft Store, and Steam. It will also be available day one via Game Pass on PC. And Xbox console and Xbox Game Pass versions will come at a later date. So there we go. 23 and 18 are bitter. <laughs> yeah, those very specific. <coughs> um, What is this? What is this? Been living under a rock, dude. This is one of the most wish listed games on Steam. This is a medieval city builder called Manor Lords. No PS5? Yeah, no, as far as I know, there's not a plan for a PS5 version right now. It's called a PhD. <laughs> Um, am I one of the odd ones that thought the Pib Extra is better than Dr. Pepper? No, I've heard that from a lot of people. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, I want to show you guys the settings first off. So just so you guys know, there is autosave settings. The autosaves chug. They are chuggy, chuggy. But the day-night cycle is purely cosmetic, and that's why I kind of wanted to dive into the settings. So we can turn it on or off. We're going to have it on while we play today. I'm going to show you guys my two cities that, or towns that I've built. I'm just saying cities. Well, I'm going to show you my, guys my two towns that I have built, and then we're going to start a new game. So I've kind of messed around with a lot with the city building and management mechanics so far. So I, I kind of fully understand how all of those systems work. But there is a war mechanic in this game. So you can have barbarian kids. You can play with them out or without them. But um, there is like a war mechanic where you can get raided um, and you can go like war against other places. I haven't done any of that yet. I watched Slay do a little bit of it. We were sitting in a Discord call talking because we both got early access. Um... And uh, I watched him do a little bit of it. I haven't done any, and I wanted to save something to, like, kind of learn new on stream. So we're going to save, like, the war stuff for today. So we're going to get into that today. I'm a fucking idiot. Peanut, did you think I was going live at noon today? Oh, nice, dude. I just got paid from either YouTube or Twitch. <laughs> um, I forgot the earlier time. Yes, nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so anyways, yeah, we're going to worry about the war stuff today. Um, and so I haven't messed around with Here any of that yet. Money. Here we go. Money, money talks. talks. Here, Here comes the money. Money, 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 money. Um, so that's pretty sick. Yeah. Anyways, so we can go into graphics here. There is DLSS. Um, I've been playing with DLSS on. I've been able to. I have to r limit my FPS because if I go to unlimited, I'm getting 500 FPS in the menu. Like it doesn't like properly cap and my GPU starts to nuke itself. So I've been locking it at different FPS ranges. I've decided on 60 just for the sake of making sure, because as you guys know, when my computer hits like top load, it like freaks out and crashes, right? So for the sake of like keeping my computer safe, I've been locking it at 60, but it's been very easy, especially with DLSS on, to get relatively high frame rates in this game. So performance has been very good. Um, it's using Unreal 4 as well, which is super sick. Um, so visually it looks really nice. Um, there is no plans to move it to Unreal 5. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it in the settings. I just wanted to go over that before we go in. Let's, let's load some of our games here. So this was the first town I built. I'm blown away they don't have an FPS limiter or, like, anything like that built into Cities 2 still. Like, that's still cra crazy to me. Um, also, I don't know if you guys saw from TDW, but TDW is working on a tool right now for Find It. 
Um, this was announced in the Cities 2 Discord that will basically make it so all of the stuff in Find It will have unique icons. So, like, you'll actually be able to look at the building and be like, I know what this building looks like, and then put it in instead of it just being the green residential building. So, um, detailing's about to go bonkers nutty mode. Sully's working on it, too. Right. Sully, you're also working on it, too, yeah? I think you're also working on it. I think that was announced. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so they're both working on that. So give big props to them. Um, gonna be very cool. There's lots of cool things coming to find it. Sully is the executive director. <laughs> so, um, background music in this game also slaps. Yeah, it also slaps. So, this was the first one I made right here. Um, this was my first village. I started building over here and I, I expanded out from there. Um, this game's beautiful guys like I, I don't know I don't know how how much more I can sell you guys on the visual fidelity of this game but it is absolutely gorgeous um yeah so um I'm gonna dive in and like talk about a lot of this stuff chief wizard oh no Sully Sully no we can't do that no 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 we can't we can't do we can't do anything with like wizards especially not grand wizard Okay, I know you're not an American, but that's not, we don't do that. <laughs> we don't do <laughs> I don't think they would accept TDW anyways, but. <laughs> J15 knows. <laughs> oh no. Oh uh, dear. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, good timing stream elements. Good timing. Yes, friendly reminder. <laughs> That's stream elements for you. Thanks, stream elements. Anyways. <laughs> um anyways, this is uh yeah, this is my like first little village. Uh the the main thing I want to sell to you guys is how good this game looks and like how well it runs too. Um, look at her. She's just look at this sassy woman. She's just like yeah. I'm sitting here waiting. <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Anyways, the game looks great. I'm just I'm still like just blown away by um how good the game looks. But uh, so we have my church here in the center of town. We have tons of little houses. They're called Burridges, I think is the name. I don't know if that's pronounced. Will this game be moddable? Yes, but not at launch. So, well, I mean, like, you know, if you, if you can make a mod if you want to, that like kind of does stuff. Um, there is plans for modding support after 1.0 release. The game will launch in early access though, so it'll be a little while, but there is plans for modding support. Um, that comes from the actual Manor Lords Discord, that information. Um, there will also, there's no current plans to add multiplayer because there is like a combat thing. So there's no current plans for multiplayer, but um, the dev, I believe said that there is a potential that they're, they could they could revisit it if people want it after the 1.0 release. They basically just want to finish the game first. So, um, which is fair, but yeah, there is, uh, let's just like, let these guys go, but you can see them do their little walkie thing around. They have like little market stalls. So the way that your, um, village kind of runs is they need resources, right? And when they fill all of their resources, they can level up. Um, if they don't refill all the resources, the approval goes down. And if the approval is below, what is it, 50%, um, there's gonna there's this help button down here at the bottom. A lot of people missed this. Uh, also, really cool thing, you have access to your settings down here, and it tells you your FPS right here. So you can make adjustments in-game and adjust your FPS how you want them, which is so cool. Like, this is such a cool, yeah. This game is bad. Okay, all right. Bye-bye. I don't... <laughs> okay. You haven't played it. The fuck do you know? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. 
Um, are you waiting for the Lord of Rings mod? Definitely will be. Yeah, I can imagine. I'm very excited for modding support to eventually come for this game. Like, it's going to be crazy. I already think of some detailing mods that I want for this game because I think this game is going to really excel in a... Um, like how it excels in cities, right? Like there's there's really two big communities in cities. There's the detailers and then there's the manage the traffic managers. I think this game's going to excel um excel excessively for the detailers from a visual perspective. Not that the management side is bad. Um there's a lot that needs to be fleshed out still. So for example, um the policies in here which we'll go over in a little while. Um there's still stuff that's like locked due to early access and the same for the skill tree, right? Where it says the work in progress, locked in early access, work in progress, stuff like that. So um as far as that goes, um this game is banned. Yeah, dude. I mean, when that's your first message, <laughs> you're, I think you you're just you just have to be you just have to be mad that you don't have access, which is fair. Um, you know, I want to provide you guys as much value. So if you guys have questions, I'm very open to sharing and detouring from whatever the fuck we're doing today to like show you guys any of those questions. If you guys provide me with the platform to get early access, I want to make it feel like you also have the early access. So if you guys like have something you want to see, I'll try my best to show it. Or if I already showed it off, I want to let you guys know that it's in, like, the VOD. You get detail in this game? So you can't, and that's the problem. <laughs> like, I think if you could, it would be crazy. There is some cosmetic stuff, right? So, like, you have, like, a shrine you can build, and you can erase shrubbery. So, like, if I wanted to, I could delete this bush, right? But, like, you can't build shrubbery. But if you could it would be crazy, right? Also, like, the grass on the ground is, like, stellar. The L the way the LOD works in this game is fucking awesome. Like, you'll see stuff slowly appear in the background. Some of the buildings will, like, be more, like, aggressive. But, like, the ground especially, if we go over here and, like, just kind of zoom through the fields, you'll watch stuff slowly pop up in the grass. Pay don't pay attention to the buildings. But, like, in the grass in the field, you'll slowly watch the trees change. Like, it is such a gradual LOD that makes it feel so much more immersive. Um, can we tax the fuck out of the pe pe <laughs> peasants and hold a giga feast for the lords? Um, the giga feast? No, but we can, in fact, tax the shit out of the peasants. I'm already giving them a 30% land tax, so... Uh, we, well, actually, your tithe is food-based, so you know, <coughs> want this game to have references to Monty Python and the Holy Grail? I have not found an Easter egg yet, uh, referencing anything. Make a village in this game and then take the city layout to cities and make a transformation from village to modern town. Fuck, that would be great crossover content. Holy shit. Show me their teeth. Yeah, um, I, I, I haven't seen their teeth. <laughs> um, I haven't seen their teeth yet. So, sadly, I cannot. But yeah, anyways, the way that's that's how the, the houses work. You can level them up then. So like I can upgrade to level three if I have more money and I fill up all of these dots. So like, for example, I have all of the needs met for this home so I can upgrade it to level two using four lumber, right? My one good idea for the month. <laughs> Can I run this game on my 1999 Power Mac? It has 16 megabytes of RAM. Yeah, just like in City Skylines 2, I'm sure there will be people asking if they can run this game on their potato and then be very frustrated that they can't run this city builder on their potato. Um, But honestly, this game's performance is pretty good. Uh, there's a lot less calculations, I think, going on on the back end compared to cities. So, like, um, lower end CPUs would probably be able to run this game. A little bit better than cities zoom into the inside of their heads then yeah so the camera like kind of locks you here there is a bug with the um so there is this cinematic camera i can't figure out how to get it to go any lower um also it is like very ground dependent but yeah lady you're gonna walk over those logs oh okay well 
<laughs> but yeah, the cinematic camera is pretty sick. I don't know how to get into the side of their teeth. One thing we can do though is visit mode. I don't know if you guys saw this from before, but you can like actually walk around as your lord. Hello, madam. And like you can walk through them. I can't, I still can't see their teeth or anything like that. I don't know if there's a way to shift into first person. Haven't figured that one out yet, but um Nice. It was Twitch that paid me. Let's go. But yeah, you can like walk around and like kind of explore your village from the ground level, which is super sick. Look at this guy. Look at this guy and his walking stick. Hell yeah. Now she has her lord's baby. Yeah, but that's how you impregnate people in this game. You walk through them. You phase warp through them. That's how you impregnate them. That sounds like a good plot to a sci-fi movie. Wait a minute. <laughs> Aliens that like impregnate you by phase warping through you. Oh, you can't go into your manor? Oh, I've never tried to walk in. So this is that's my manor right there. The white building. You tell me that this, uh, this fellow's like the mayor and he has to walk around? Yeah. Yeah, I guess he can't walk in, huh? I think if I like, if I go inside and do it, I can walk around inside? No. Huh. I don't know. Maybe you can't. I was looking over there though, so let me, let me look straight. Oh, I'm, I'm at the church. Hold on. Yeah, let's try it here. Let's see, can I walk around inside now? Yes. Okay. Something with the doorways then that you can't. But this is the manor. These are these are the servants. They're servants that work at the manor. When you build the manor, two of the families have to become servants. So the way that like jobs work in this game is they're based on the family. So like the family all works together to do a job. So you assign families to things. So like loggers are the whole family. So like the guy goes and cuts the wood. Maybe the woman does too. I actually don't know. I haven't watched around. But then usually like one of the members of the family goes and runs a market stall for them people to grab whatever they need if it's like a resource that households need. So for example, if you're a firewood cutter, like that's your family, then you'll go and like the wife will go and start um, a, a firewood stall and then the husband will go and cut, uh, like chop the firewood. Where are your parking lots? Soon TM. Yeah, I need the parking lot mod. Try anarchy. <laughs> I don't see them serving, I just see them going home. <laughs> Yeah, they're slacking off. This is like a guard tower that like... So this is like... This entire lot is supposed to be like part of a castle builder system. Which I'll show off later. This is the tax office. Um, I think this is actually supposed to be connected to the road somehow. But I think it bugged out and it didn't. And so like it's this empty hollow shell of a building. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, this is all supposed to be part of, like, a castle builder system. But it's still a work in progress, the castle builder. So this is just, like, what we get. Um, but this expands the area, this building, this big tower, expands the area in which you can build a castle. And you can only build one per village, so. Can you go into buildings? No. No, you cannot go into buildings. Nope. They all have physics. I mean, maybe we can go, no. Yeah, I was going to say, if we can't, if we can't go through these gates, I doubt we can go inside that building. No. No. Will the castle builder be done on launch? I don't know. So, like, it works in, like, some capacity, right? Oh, let me go back. That's, like, the world map. Um, so, if we open the castle planner, right, you can see these bubbles. Ah, oh, yeah, there is something messed up with the, ta uh, the tax office. Road access is obstructed. What? 
yeah, again, this game's in early access. I don't know what I just did. I think I just, like, rebuilt the whole castle. Anyways, um, I'll let them do their thing. So this is 12 times speed, so the speeds go normal speed, 4x, and 12 times. So we'll let them go at 12 times, just so you guys can see how building works. So they'll come over here. They're bringing planks. And then in order to haul timber, you need to use an ox. So the ox then drags the timber over to the lot. But you can see them, then they drop the wood. Oh, God. The animations are sick. Like, their pathing's a little funky sometimes just because of, like, how it is. But, like, just the actual animation of them, like, going and picking up the lumber. So the way it works is you have families, right? And they all, like, will have jobs, basically. So, like, each family has, like, a job. So, for example, if we go and click on this house, these this family is all woodcutters, right? So, um, the son and the husband are debranching a tree, and the wife is going home, I guess. Um, so, if we go over to this household, they have chickens, right? So, this family is waiting. So, I don't... They're farmers, right? So, they're... It's summer. They don't have to do anything right now for their job. Um, I have, like, five families assigned to being farmers. I have one family assigned to be, um, a sheep shearer. <clears throat> is kind of there, but not really there. Yeah, like, you basically... Once it's constructed, I'll show you guys a better view of it, but... How many dogs do they have? Absolutely zero. It's actually one of the main criticisms I have of the game is that there's no dogs. Yeah. Um, so. This family's a warehouse worker. I'm trying to find, like, a, a more unique family to show you guys. Baker. All right. So here's an interesting family, right? So um, we have the husband who's waiting. He's probably waiting to bake bread. The son is transporting something, I'm assuming bread to the stall, and then the wife is peddling. And so when they're peddling, they're over here at the market stalls, peddling their stuff for people to come and buy. Because as we saw before, in here they have resources, so they need to come get the resources from the market. And these are all zonable tiles, and we'll get into like zoning in a minute because it's really cool. It's all procedurally generated, um, which is sick. <coughs> So, um, but they need all that stuff in order to upgrade. Um, let's see. So, yeah, you can click on these buildings and you can see a lot of different requirements here. So, like, these are the requirements to level up, obviously. When you build buildings, they can have two different um, options to their lot. So, the first thing they can have is a backyard. And when you click on the backyard, you can construct extensions to the backyard so you can do uh for if you have a level one house you can do a vegetable garden a chicken coop a goat shed or an apple orchard the apple orchard is something i unlocked through a tech tree and then if you get to level two you can do anything on this side so that would be a bakery in the in the back a blacksmith workshop a brewery as far as i know that's the only way you can actually make beer um is through a backyard lot um a tailor workshop um a cobbler's workshop um, and then some military equipment as well. Um, so that's one of the options. The other option is actually building a secondary housing unit, like right here. So you can actually build two homes on the same lot. The second home would be much smaller. I don't know if I have a lot that I can do that on right now to show you. I might have upgraded them all to have it. That could have it. Yeah, they might all already have it, the ones that can have it. Yeah, they do. Okay, so I can't show you guys that. but um, So some of the lots you'll see, like, this is, like, a second house, basically, on the lot for, like, a second family to live in. So if we go to people, there's two families here that live on this lot. What you're saying is you can be an HOA president and determine what people can do building their own backyards, yes. Yes, I am both a Yimby and an Yimby in this scenario. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We haven't even really gotten to buildings. I'm just kind of explaining to you guys the management perspective of this game. Um, you have armies down here. You have your road building tools. So let's start diving into the actual construction side of this game. So as you guys can see, you can see the roads that are all over the map. So we have different regions if we back out. So I'm playing on the peaceful difficulty. This is like the baby easy difficulty right now. Um, 
But what should I get for lunch? Give me options and I'll pick one. Um, but if we zoom out, you'll see like all of the different regions that you can get and all the resources. So I can go and claim one of these if I wanted to. So I can claim it with a thousand influence or I can claim it with a king's favor. And then later, I think you can... Like if you were playing on a melee one or like a combat one, I think you could like take it over. Again, I haven't messed around with the, the combat system at all. So I don't know. But yeah, you can claim it with influence or with the king's favor, and then you can build another village over there. I'm pretty sure is how it works. So you can build like villages in every region, and then they can interwork together. So you can have one region just do all of your food, and then you can have another region do um, like your mining. You can have another region do like a bunch of hunting if they have more wild animals. So I think this uh, northwest region up here has 40 wild animals, while this one only has a maximum of 20. So. <coughs> Top K-pop, thank you for gifting us up to Shame Turner 12. Let's go. Thank you so much. Salty bread is good. What's up? Welcome in. So that's kind of like the point of all the regions. They all have different stuff. And this is also a pre-made map. So like my other village is actually in this region. And I have it. Um, It's on a different save. But um, I have it being built. Um, Where do I have it being built? I'm trying to remember where I actually built it in this area. It's interesting. I think the resource layout is different. Oh, interesting. Okay. I think I have it built like up here somewhere. The resource layout is actually different. That's so fascinating. Yeah, I have my village being built right here in uh, my other save. So, But we can go in with the road builder. And the road builder is actually really interesting it takes a minute to get used to but once you get used to it it makes a ton of sense randomized every time you start a new game i believe is it okay enjoying the game so far yes <laughs> i we will be playing this did i almost just spill my energy drink yes did i no um we will be playing this game quite a bit for a while um it's very good uh, especially coming from City Skylines, where, like, I just kind of, like, want to make a nice-looking thing. This game excels at that very, very well. Um, here's the Road Builder. So the way the Road Builder works is you have, like, multiple... It's like a multiple point system, right? So you can just draw a straight line if you want to. And boom. There's our straight line road. It just goes straight through everything. Um, the game doesn't, like, knock down trees when you build, like, roads or anything like that. So it will just look, look like brush um, coming through here. So you'd, like, want to, like, try to plan to clear that out if you wanted to like aesthetically remove that stuff um i don't know think the brush like thing to like delete the shrubs um works for trees so you'd have to like figure out how to chop those down if you actually wanted that or or snake it past the trees um so that's one way you can handle roads another way you can handle roads is and this took me a minute to like figure out is if you click waypoints, the road will like auto curve. And if you hold control, you can adjust how much of a curve you get, right? And so it can get like really crazy if you go too high. But I found that like right around like the one third mark has been like kind of my sweet spot. And I just place like a ton of nodes down whenever I like want it. And it will auto smooth the curb, which is so sick. Right, and we are following the topography lines here. So it doesn't like, that's as long of a road I guess you can build, but yeah. And then it follows the terrain, which is super sick. So this is actually like a flat level road. <laughs> um, Here's the options, wings, Chinese, subs, uh, or anything. I did actually spill some of my energy drink. Um. Let's do, let's do, uh, wings sound good, dude. I've been craving wing stop IRL. So like do, do wings, do wings for me. I'm going to eat through you. Um, you can delete roads by holding alt and clicking the road and then it deletes it too. Um, another way you can do road building is just like point to point, like really far away from one another. And it will make like a more, I don't know, like aggressive curve road. But it will, like, auto-smooth it in a way, too, right? So, like, while it doesn't follow it as precisely, it does, like, still feel, like, windy and natural. So, like, I found, like, different ways to, like, make it. Moose! I thought it was a deer. 
now it's really clear. Got a major problem here. Moose, moose. Moose, how's the doctor, buddy? Wingstop by me sucks ass. Yeah, there's two by me. The one's awful and the other one's really good. Finally, my meeting is done and can listen. Let's go, Christabel. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much how this works. It's not food that I'm having an issue with. It's the firewood. I cannot get them to produce enough. I'm wondering if it's bugged because I have, like, two woodcutters and they're constantly producing firewood and I... I don't have that much, and, like, I have multiple people at them. I think the game's just, like, freaking out. Um, <clears throat> not sure. It's only on this. My other village isn't having, like, any issues with it, so, like, I don't know. Um, I hate it here. I just want to be home and playing Manor Lords. Ayo. Um. So that's pretty much how the the road builder works. Next, I want to show you guys how the actual like um house builder works, right? So these are your houses. They're called Burg Burgesses, Burg Burg Burgesses. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um. So essentially, all you do is you create a like section that was like, I want this to be homes, right? So essentially, it's like zoning in city skylines. That's all I can kind of compare it to, right? So like, let's say I want to make this square um, houses, right? I don't, but let's say I did. Um, so all I'd have to do is draw lines, and it will auto snap to the edge of the roads too, which is really nice. So I can only go up to here if I want to and go over. But let's say we want to go up to the corner here, and then I place the last one. So now I've zoned this entire section as being houses, right? And as you guys can see here, this is the backyard, and this is the home lot. So you can also rotate them. This took me a while to realize that I could do this. But you can rotate them so it's on different roads. And it's really important that you... Um, click the nodes you want to click in order for the game to recognize where the like sections are because it goes based on in between the nodes that you selected so for example i've ran into this hold on where i let's say i place it here and then i go up here now when i rotate it it's like off centered on this house and they don't actually have a road connection or like for example if you're like actually trying to place this in something that doesn't have four sides and maybe has five sides let's say so like you're placing it inside of a hexagon or an octagon it'll auto snap to all five of those roads um but it doesn't um understand where to put the front of the homes when you rotate it right it'll always default to the first side that you created so that was the bottom side here so like this should be the default side but um when you rotate it it might like not understand where you actually want the home so like you have to be mindful of that too why doesn't city skylines 2 do plots because it is a lot more work to probably code in a good procedural generation system whereas like a medieval city builder i think is like allowed to get away with like making something that looks sloppy because sloppy looks natural and normal whereas like i think in a city builder like cities they want structure because a um yeah also custom asset yeah that's true too um i think it just i think it, it is just like genuinely like a lot more work to do that um not think i know especially with something that like requires like a lot more prop then they do that with props in a way in cities too by having like the lots like this be like any variation of an umbrella can go right here right so it's like you do have like some level of like that but it's it's way more structured it's the same thing with the grid system right modern cities are very structured and cities rewards you for building inside of that structure right cities rewards you a lot for planning and building something very structured this game a medieval village builder right medieval villages old 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 historic like european cities they're very messy they're very organic and this game rewards the shit out of you for building organically and we'll go over that today but this game rewards the shit out of you for building organically so um let's say we want to build homes in this plot right 
So we can rotate, pick whatever side we want. If you guys notice that this side's smaller, you get a bigger backyard, which means more resources from things like the farm. So like if you build an apple orchard, you'll get more trees, which means more apples being grown, right? Because you have a bigger backyard. But as we rotate, okay, nurse is coming and back to lurk. All right, have a good lurk, Moose. Hope all goes well. All coded, I'm a big coder, yeah. Wings do sound yummy. Dude, wings sound really good. Um, but anyways, here is the uh like lots like that. So you can see the house, you can see the backyard. If we we can also reduce the number of plot divisions. So it defaults by having the maximum number of plot divisions. So right now, the maximum number of plots that you can fit in here, and it will actually work is four. Right? So we, if we can reduce it down to three, and now what you'll see is those extra home plots will appear on all of these lots. So <clears throat> there is some like cost benefit analysis that you have to do. It's like, okay, do I want these long skinny lots that each have their own home or do I want wider lots in exchange for being able to upgrade them to have more families? Because in reality, you can fit four families in the most plot divisions, but if you go down to three plot divisions, each plot will have an extra house, which means six families can actually fit here. But then you'll only have three backyards, but the backyards will be really big. So, like, you have to, like, make those decisions. And you could just make this one house, too, if you want to. You can go kind of crazy with it. <laughs> and then if you don't make it big enough, let's say, too, you won't have backyards, right? Um, now, earlier I said this game rewards you for building organically. So what I mean by that is if we go in here now. So this is, like, one of those five-sided lots that I was talking about right so notice how there's a point here and there's a point here if i rotate you'll see this line and that's where the homes are going to connect right and so it doesn't understand what to do here so like sometimes it'll snap to this road sometimes it'll it won't and it's like well maybe i actually want this curve part to also be on a front side with this part so if i wanted it to do that i would want to put the, the node here and now all of the homes are facing this direction instead of this direction does that make sense so like this road works with this side instead of this side so if we go back again i select it here now it works with this side not this side um that's i found that to be very helpful in like creating proper plot sizes so when i was talking before about this game rewards you for building organically what I meant by that was, you know, we we built in this interesting organic layout here, right? So um, it's got five sides. I built it with a lot of the train heights. I built it with how they, I think people will path and walk and stuff like that. And it rewarded me, I think I call this a reward, by giving me a lot here that's slightly bigger, but has an extra housing unit that I can attach onto it and a bigger yard. So this house would become more valuable in terms of what I actually put here. Right. So I actually want it to go like this. Yeah. Yeah. So you get more like plot variety in that sense. And we can shrink it down and you can figure out how you want to do it yourself. I actually don't know if there's like a punishment for doing the extra buildings on lots. Like, I don't know if the families that live in the extra building are less happy because it is smaller than the main house. Um, but not too sure. There's like a little bit of a bug where like the errors of the building sh like stay there until you like reopen the housing tool. But I love the parcel subdivision system. That's what I was hoping we'd get in City Skylines 2 for zoning. Yeah. <clears throat> I think again, that's like something that's like it's a lot harder to do and um yeah procedural generation just takes a lot more work than just like plopping down a pre-built square so it, that's like one of those things that like when i bring up earlier in the stream i brought up the whole cost benefit analysis that i think games like this that are passion projects from developers they have the luxury to just kind of go, no, this is the way I want to do it. I don't have to do it this way. And like, it might not, not all of the features are as wow as that one 
it, in like that sense like there's like little animations that the characters make that it's like okay wow you did not have to do that like i'll never notice them doing that and like you did not have to spend the time to make them do that but you did it anyways and that's something that like a single developer working on this as a passion project for seven years and just making the game that they love can do that a bigger game developer will never do because they will always see that as even if they're a good bigger game developer they will always see that as not as valuable and like a waste of their time and if you you start to stack a ton of little stuff like that all into a game it becomes something magical like this right if you just do that as like a one-off thing it's like oh okay that's cool but then you like notice all the other stuff like this game has so much of that so much of that little like they did not need to do that but they did it anyways and like yeah it, he he put the work in i mean like this game's great dude it's so good uh yeah and welcome in <clears throat> one hour lurker tax cooldown. one hour what one hour how's manor lord so far yet yeah, it's great it's very good i cannot <laughs> there is like a we have like a um yeah we're not allowed to do any official reviews so nothing with review in the title or name so this, none of this is a review but i like the game a lot <laughs> let's say that yeah, you must stay in the stream. You must engage. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why it's an hour for you, Unswani. I guess I cannot lurk. No, you must stay. You cannot leave. No leaving. Um. So anyways, yeah, that's how zoning works. And you can like, there's like, as far as I can tell, I haven't found a restriction. <laughs> I haven't found a restriction in terms of lot size. Look, look how big these backyards are. There's like clearly a maximum for house, like lot depth, and then it turns into backyard, obviously. Um, but yeah. And what's really cool is like if you if you zone like this, that gives you even more resources in the backyard. So like if we wanted to turn these into apple orchards, imagine how many trees we would have back here, right? Or imagine how much carrots we'd be growing back here, or whatever else we wanted to do, right? Um, so yeah, these are uh, it's very cool. I do like the procedural generation building system. I think it's something that a lot of people are going to talk about. I think it's something that a lot of people, much like you guys, are going to compare to City Skylines too and be like, ah, why does it not have this? Um, I kind of get why that's wasn't the decision that was made for cities too. I think a lot of people probably wanted that, but, um, it is just a lot easier to do a grid system. So that makes the most sense. I got to start rolling on my street or sleeves here, guys. This bear suit is killing me. HD shark mascot costumes. Welcome in. <gasps> yeah, this bear suit's kind of hot. I'm gonna be honest. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do a little zip tease, you know. Um, my lurker stock tax is out of stock. I guess I'm stuck here. Yeah, you can only do it three times a stream. So, uh, otherwise, you have to stay here. This is triggering me. All the lots in Perth used to be like this: the house of the giant backyard, and now the back. Uh, now they're. The backwards, wait, the backyards are getting subdivided into smaller lot costs the same as the larger one did. Oh, yeah. I, um, what's the fucking guy's name? Oh, what is his name? Is he from Melbourne? Hold on. Um, I don't remember this guy's name. Did you see the guy who's like doing the hold on? I'll just DM it to you. I don't want to discuss this on stream. Yep, that's the one. Yep, yep, that's the one. I don't want to, I don't want to start any conversation arguments about that because I'm sure some people 
probably don't agree with what he's doing, but, um, <laughs> yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. And so when you brought that up, I was like, oh yeah, aren't you guys like having a housing crisis? <laughs> That makes sense why um, those tiny lots are so expensive. Oh, one of the cool things too, like look at this procedural generated lot, right? Like look at this yard. So I made it so their backyard literally snaked along the backside of the tavern here. So like this is the, or I'm sorry, the trading post. So you have the trading post. We have a communal oven right here. And then you have a, like a lot and then they have like a backyard. And so it's like their lots, like this tiny little triangle. And so you can imagine like how customizable these lots actually are at the end of the day, which is so cool. Um, yeah. Again, we're not, it's not as like, Hmm. Here's the thing, right? I, obviously my forte is coming from cities, right? That's this community. We come from city skylines. Many of us. We like our, I'm comparing it a lot to city skylines. Um, I think that this system is genuinely perfect for a medieval builder. Like, I think if you took the city's framework of grid system and put it into this game, I think it would be not good because I don't think this game, like the, the village, the layouts, like or I guess maybe not not good, but it's like you then run into like the whole banished concept, right? Where it's like everything's a grid um, and it doesn't feel like a real organic village. It looks like it, but it doesn't feel like it. And this game does both. It looks like it and it feels like it because it really does reward you for building organically or it doesn't punish you maybe for building organically is maybe a better way to look at it. Whereas like cities, it's not as easy to do that. They really reward you for building structured, right? Play Cities? Did you hear there's a sequel? No. No, I heard it sucks, dude. I heard every single person said it's terrible, actually. Um, it, I heard it has negative reviews on Steam, so. <laughs> um, how do you know you never played? Yeah. Excuse me, only 98% of people said that. Yeah, it's true worst game ever zero out of ten not a fan would never make content for city skylines are you kidding me <sighs> ever um so yeah and like you can build in this entire area too so like for example i have um a mining pit here where we're mining clay so i think this is one of the bigger clay deposits on the entire map in this region um so like as we stated earlier, each region has like different amounts of different resources. So I think my region has like one of the higher amounts of clay. So like I'm constantly mining clay. I had an iron deposit here, but I already went through it very quickly because I didn't have a lot. Um, and so like you can actually put all this stuff out here. So we have a hunting camp out here as well. And the hunting camp is working at um, going through the wild animals. Where are they? Yeah, so there is like a little weird bug with the animals where sometimes they're frozen and sometimes they're not. So they're frozen today. Are there bears? I haven't seen any if there are. I've only seen deer. I've only seen the deer. So, um, but what's really cool about the wild animals is you can hunt them down to a limit. So like you can say if they get below 10, don't hunt them anymore. So that way the uh, actual amount of animals stays good so they can like continually breed. It's kind of like um, if you've ever hunted in real life, they like have like a limit to the number of like hunting licenses that they can sell, right? And like you don't need to build them like super close to town. They'll transport the resources. The th the One of the more interesting things about this game is the whole market system. So the way markets work is you zone out a market and you can see all these little plus signs, right? Speaking of no bears, hi. Q, no, I, proof, no, I definitely didn't take off a suit. No, no, look at Q, look it, I am a bear. See, I told you I'd have proof today. Look at my fur. Proof. Am actually a bear. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, but you guys can see all these little plus symbols. Each plus symbol is a different spot for a market stall. So, like, that's how many market stalls you can have there. You need to... Your house needs to be within range of those markets so like the homes in order to collect the resources from it so for example on the end here is a food stall for eggs right i think there's like other food that can go there as well let's see firewood stall there's no firewood in there um this one's got bread this one's got clothing right so like you need to be able to like get to there to get your clothing need filled for your home um and if you're far away it takes you longer to get that resource and then that means less time you're working too so you need to be like efficient in your village management as well so like if we were to put a home over here it would take them a really long time to get their resources in order to like level them up um so the ones that are closer to the marketplace will be able to level up faster and easier like a squirrel wearing a bear onesie a squirrel Would you contemplate wearing a Winnie the Pooh cost bear costume next? Well, I could just get a red shirt and then this becomes a Winnie the Pooh. Now, obviously, I'm not, like, the right, like, fur color for it, but I think it would be close enough. Close enough. Um. So, yeah, that's, like, one of the more interesting things so if we go up to the top here dude i keep getting notifications oh my goodness huh. um if we go up to the top here you can see all of the resource information and when you hover over it you get more information about it right so like for example if we hover over this this is the number of months before the village's supplies run out so i have seven months of food stockpile but only one month of fuel i cannot get them to keep up enough on fuel I don't know. I don't know how to. I I, I I assign more people to cut the firewood. They don't cut the firewood fast enough. Still, it doesn't add anything. I don't know. So I'm kind of giving up on the fuel. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> they're supplying it just fine. So um, they have plenty of food. We're good. Um, fuel consumption doubles in the winter. Otherwise, they consume one per month. Some buildings consume fuel as well. Um, so every month they need to come and grab firewood for their home. Do they have religion in this or I guess even a form of death care? Yeah, actually the church is the death care. So that's what the so the small stone church allows you to collect tithe, which is um, they will donate some of the food to you in exchange for influence every month and use the influence to then buy different regions. Um, then you can assign people to the church they become the grave diggers essentially so then you can go in and build the corpse pit <laughs> um which then allows uh not all deserves to be buried on consecrated grounds use this building to get rid of any raider corpses quickly so um yeah basically that's what that does so the workers at the church become grave diggers and they'll like, they'll basically take care of the villagers who die. And then the, the pit, um, the workers from the small stone church will go and dump the bodies of people they don't like in the pit. So, so no cemetery. The church has a built in cemetery. I haven't had anybody who died yet. So the cemetery is built into the church. Are you playing with armies and raiders? This city is not. So I'm kind of going... This is just the first village I built. Uh, we're going to go into the second village I built where I, like, went over stuff. And then after that, we'll actually start a new game with armies on. I wanted to save something to be new, if that makes sense. Um, So I wanted something to be, like, kind of new and fresh for you guys so that way like we can discover it together and so i saved combat completely so i have no input on combat other than i watched slay do his first battle um because slay also has early access to this um i think he's live also right now and um he uh did battle he got raided he had 20 versus 18 he won the battle he could put them in like formations it looked like and then when they they basically like a bunch of them died and then they decided to retreat. But instead of like, imagine they came from this way, 
right? Imagine they came from this way. They fought the battle right here, right? So, like, your army's here. Their army's here. They're fighting. And then when they go to retreat, they actually just ran straight through the town. And I'm like, wait, are they, like, pillaging in your town? Did your, did your fighters give up? And no, they were just, like, retreating this way. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> but that was, like, pretty much all I saw about the combat so far. I don't know anything else about the combat. I'm mostly just focused on the city building and management aspects of it um, in terms of, like, before today. Uh, I didn't have, like, an absolute ton of time to play this game um, since I've gotten early access. So, like, I've just tried to learn as much as I could about the actual building mechanics of the game. Um, I still have some stuff locked, so we can build a firewood and a food cart, um, which are basically, like, permanent market stalls. Um, I think, yeah, which would provide a passive income of bread and firewood as long as the region has enough regional wealth. Um, and then if you guys, whenever you get access to this game, are ever confused about something, you can go into the help subjects in here. And it's like, let's say you want to learn how to make flour. Well, then you need grain, right? So then you click on the grain and it's like, okay, you get grain from uh required crafting uh required for, uh, blah, 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 blah. required for crafting wheat and then if we go over here to the building the farmhouse we go to the description for the farmhouse the crops transported to the farmhouse and wheat is then threshed into grain so ballin welcome in ballin so um farming is pretty cool we can dive into farming next so farming's pretty sick so when you build out plots um their their size is called morgans i think that's like a some kind of medieval sizing option um so you can build them in they suggest doing like one morgan size fields um i think this one's a little bigger but the rest of them are like close or less than that um you can do crop rotations which is how i have them set so like every season they like rotate um my region that i started in was not very fertile so like none of the stuff grows very well right so the fertility for flax is really fucking bad um you can uh follow the fields follow the fields after like a, a year so like you let it just sit and like grow basically like anything and it will replenish the fertility of the ground um, but it only goes back up to the original fertility, which is not high. So, uh, in my region. So, keep that in mind. I think you can burn the fields, too, and they'll, like, add extra fertility. But I don't know enough about that system yet. Or, like, I don't know if that gets rid of disease or what. Um, so, haven't really done that. You can also force uh, harvest. But, yeah, so you can basically rotate crops. Uh, right now, I have wheat, barley, and flax. You can also get rye, um, which replaces wheat and grows in less fertile ground so oh i like that you can burn it yeah <clears throat> yep you can burn it um you can also add an upgrade that makes your fields a pasture i think it's this one right here fertilization hi how are you hi, how are you? <laughs> hi i'm normal oh bradley <laughs> uh yeah, give you a basket of hat and call it hat and call you yogi hey there boo boo how about some picnic baskets um, yeah, so fertilization allows you to turn, instead of using the, the follow feature or fallow feature, it turns those fields into pastures for that year. So instead of just allowing crops to grow, it also allows animals to like go and graze on it and then they'll poop and then that creates more resource, obviously. And then, um, so then when you go and plow until the fields later, it provides more fertilization, which is nice. So then I wouldn't need this pasture plot that I have to store my sheep. Um, so you can also have livestock. I think sheep is the only one right now. So you have sheep farm and then there's wool and then you assign somebody to work the sheep farm. So this is the family. Uh, Conrad. <laughs> um, connected to a road network. And then, uh, yeah, there's no option for livestock because I actually don't have any livestock in the sheep farm. They're all in the pasture, um, which is fine. Um, but they just kind of like chill in the field. I have the upgrade so they'll actually breed and produce more. Um, I needed to use the livestock trading post in order to buy them straight off. So I had to do that. But um, yeah. So that's pretty much how farming works. And so the main point of one of the main points of farming is to obviously get wheat because wheat is one of the best resources for food. So you take the wheat, they thresh it at the farmhouse to produce grain you then take the grain to the windmill which the windmill needs to be 
like in a field like away from structures um so like right here it's it's fine but if i like put it too close to the buildings they would like it would not like that or close to trees it would freak out so um and it wouldn't function properly because not as much wind's able to blow on it uh, but the windmill then takes the grain and produces it into flour, and then the flour gets taken over to the communal oven, and then they bake bread. And then that family takes it over to the market stalls, and then the families in the town go and grab the food from the market stalls. Right? So that's the production chain for bread. Um, there's other things you can grow too, like barley. So barley gets converted into malt, and then malt can get converted into ale if we go to... Notice how it says brewery here. So what happens is when you upgrade some of these buildings on the back, so when we switch over, like, so if we want to do a brewery extension on the back of these lots, so instead of doing the apple orchard like we have here or the chicken coop like we have here, we can do actual, like, production things on the back side of houses. So instead of there being a building that you can build that's a brewery, the brewery is part of somebody's home so they live there and like that's their job and they also work at home right so it's like that's their brewery and they brew the ale and then they take the ale to the tavern and then the tavern gets distributed to people who go there right and then that becomes their tavern supply of ale in order to upgrade to level three so um that's another production chain system so like we could also do clothes because citizens need clothes and stuff too. Your military also builds weapons and stuff. So like the homes are like Fletchers and stuff like that. Um, do the buildings in the backyard have to be related to the job that the family and the lot have? Yes. So yes, yes, that is exactly it. So when you upgrade right here, it'll say it. So if we were to upgrade to brewery extension, produces ale and malt, converts all inhabitants to artisans, locking them from being assigned to other jobs. So that becomes their job. They become brewers. That makes sense, yeah. And there's nothing like, there's no like unique citizens either. So like, it, it wouldn't make sense to like, remove a family from a lot and move them over. Like the individual citizens do not matter at the end of the day. They're kind of all generic, right? So like if their home upgrades, there's no reason to upgrade one person's home over another based on the people who live there. It's all based on the plot. That's another point as well. So, like, the the guy, like, the, the husband and wife, like, don't have any special skills or traits or anything like that. At least that far, that is what I've seen. I know that they said there won't ever be, like, uh, hero units in combat or anything like that. They said that in a fact. So, <clears throat> an FAQ. So, over here, I have my lumber camp. I just kind of put it out of town. It was in town before. It was, like, right here. That's why this, like, line's square right here. Um, this is where the lumber camp used to be, and I just kind of, like, ripped it out, and I moved it over here in the woods. So we have a lumber camp. So they're they're here. They're chopping down timber. They then uh, can take it to the woodcutter's lodge to make fire uh, firewood, and then they also have a saw pit so we can make um, planks. And then there's also the forester's hut, which will then go through and replant all of the stuff that they're chopping down. This, this um, region also has, like, a destroyed windmill and a destroyed granary, which I guess you can, like, repair. Not all the regions have that. I just found that was kind of interesting. So, like, you already kind of, like, start with something that you could just fix up rather than build new. I didn't know that when I first started building on this. So, um, another thing, too, is that, like, the berry deposits are, it says, specifically says seasonal. This is a rich deposit, which means, I think that's what the crown means. So, the crown means that that's, like, um more valuable than other regions so like this bottom left region has more stone than other regions right so like this is a rich berry deposit and this map is um not procedurally generated this is the same map you play on every time but you can start in a different region every single time so like the my other one i'm, I'm up here it's random but do they have rivers and bridges wait i think heroes would be good like in civ yeah they said that they didn't want to add that but um yes there is like this creek here there is like a whole water system but we'll have to explore that in my next city when we move over to that one because i have it turned off for this village um but my other village has it on so we, we can go over it for that but um yeah there is a there is a river right here so is that the map max or max map size this is the only map 
This is a pre-made map. It's the only one currently available. Armchair. So I have no idea. I can't answer. I can't answer that question because this is the only one that exists. What's really cool is the landscape does have some like natural features. So like I don't know if this is like a path or if this is like water runoff, but like you know that's pretty sick that it like creates that path. Look at this game, dude. This game is gorgeous. Apparently, there's a dude on the run from police not too far from me, so I'm going to get the police scanner on. Hell yeah, police chase. Be gay, do crime, let's go. <laughs> the grass is, is nutty. They did a really good job with the... Um, the trees, too. Like, they did such a good job with the LOD and, like, the actual, like, environment in general like the lighting the clouds the uh the the characters like i feel very immersed when i'm playing it i know we're kind of like explaining things um like i'm trying to go over each thing before we actually like dive into something but um yeah i cannot get over like the visual fidelity of this game um and like this is just summer like autumn's beautiful the winter is really cool when we get into that uh we'll simulate through this and like we'll get to the winter but um Shoot out at the Joanne fabric? What the fuck? Bro is like, nah, you you didn't cut my fabric right. <laughs> About HD Witcher. Yes, no, it is. Yeah, yeah. Very, very that vibe, yeah. This is Unreal 4. This is Unreal 4. How are you streaming today? I will be live for a while. I'll be live for quite a while, Peanut. Definitely at least a full stream length, potentially longer. So. I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll be live till at least 6 p.m. my time. Bowling, thank you for the fucking five gifted. Let's go, dude. Oh, Jones got one. Let's go. Hold, please. So. Yeah, look at the look at the clouds. Look at the clouds. Like kind of like in cities, you know how they like, you know, actually cast shadows. Ooh, shit's so good. Yeah, this is Unreal Four. They have no plans to move it to Unreal Five. Um, they've said there is a cosmetic day night cycle. It's not functional. Oh, look at the birds. Yeah, dude, the birds are actually kind of sick, cause they're like actually there up in the sky. The thing is, is like the bird models, they don't they don't need to be like good or anything like that. And they're like, you can see the wings are like see through, but like they're relative, they're like pretty good. Like the LOD takes over really quickly, but you can kind of see the bird right here. Like it's a pretty solid bird model, you know? Yeah, but you can you can very quickly see how like the LOD takes over really rapidly, you know? Um, but like when you're on the ground and you're just kind of like trolling around, it's very gradual. It looks so nice. Like, the, especially the fade. Like, when we like go through here and you go through like the actual fade of the, like, oh God, that it's just so good. There is a cinematic camera. One of my cr like complaints right now is I wish that there, it was, there was more features to it. Um, personally. So you can pause in the cinematic camera, which is good. Right. Um, I wish there was more options, right? Like I wish there was a way to like change the season. Um, I wish that there was a way to change the time of day, um, in the cinematic camera. I wish there was maybe like a way to set like a time lapse or something. Now you could just set the camera and then set the game to like four times speed or 12 times speed or whatever. Um, the cinematic camera is very smooth. It is definitely different controls than the normal camera. Um, but yeah, I just wish there was like some settings for it, but it's in early access. There's like clear framework and intent to like add more to it. So, um, I'm not like complaining 
at all really i just like hope that we get those features um why are we at 60 fps uh well because first off the stream can only be at 60 fps second off um i don't i don't want to push my computer farther than it needs to go really right now in a city builder especially the game does have like a weird performance issue especially when it's pushing your graphics card to maximum like when you alt tab like if i were to alt tab while the game was at unrestricted fps my whole computer just like has like a fucking meltdown um so like i actually would definitely suggest locking the game to 60 or 120 um when you guys get it i uh, there might be a performance patch before launch uh, where that might not be relevant anymore um but that's been my experience with it so far um alt tabbing is like wild yeah look at that bird hell yeah Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, let's go. I wish there, there was like more like sensitivity options, I think. There eventually will be controller support for this game. So like I think cinematic shots with the controller will be probably really good. Um, Yeah. So anyways, that's the road tool. That's the procedural houses. There is a water system, but I do not, um, I'm not playing with it on this save. This was the first city. So I just like wanted to play like kind of chill. Um, so it was a tavern. Let's see. So you have a logistics. So you have your storehouse and your granary. So like you store your food in the granary and then you store your resources in the storehouse. You can assign people to work in the storehouse and so their entire job is to grab resources from the other buildings and bring it to the storehouse um and the granary which is what i i do have that and then they open market stalls so like this family has a market stall that sells food probably and maybe herbs or something like that they need herbs for medicine also um you get herbs by upgrading the foragers hut to grow herbs um so uh, you can also have like the stable. So that's where the oxes are. If you guys saw the wood being hauled, they'll haul other things too. Um, and uh, the ox can also be used to plow fields if you get the upgrade for that, which I do have. Um, and then you can assign somebody to just work at the um, stable. And then so their entire job is to just haul stuff with the ox all day for other families. We got horses. The horses are just there as far as I understand it to assist in trade so like if you have like a trader and you want them to go to one of the outside tiles trade points um they could either walk or take a horse and the horse will go faster i've yet to see the horse though um so i don't really know how that works because this servant is transporting stone bart holmes okay um yeah let me see. Yeah. So he's in the house and the son's in the house too. Um, so yeah, I, I've yet to like really like fully see that happen, but that's how you basically get regional wealth too, is like by selling goods. So like if we go into the trade screen then, um, let's see. So I have like an assigned permanent livestock. So Another thing you can do is like set one of your ox to be permanently assigned to a, a thing. So like, for example, I have one ox permanently assigned to the farmhouse. So that is the ox that's meant for plowing the fields, right? That it'll always be reserved just for plowing the fields. So for the trading post, I have one just assigned. So it's a horse right here. Here it is. Here's the horse. Their entire job, they're stored at this um, livestock trading post, I guess. Um, their entire job is just to transport goods for trade. We're going through the day-night cycle, so you guys are going to start seeing, like, the sunsets and stuff. Ooh! The transition from day to night is really nice, too. It's not, like, abrupt at all. Hello, V. Um, so, yeah, we do have horses. I haven't really seen them function, but I know they're working because I, I'm doing trades. So, um, no, there's no streetlights. 
I would definitely like more cosmetic options for sure. I think that cosmetic options would be really sick because I think that this game excels at the immersion and the actual village building mechanics. I'm sure it's got great like management mechanics and I haven't messed around with the warring stuff, but um, you know, I think that one, it, it has the, like what it probably has is probably pretty good based on all the other stuff that it's got going on for it. Um, I think that it's really going to be like a detailer's dream game. So will it be free on Steam? No, absolutely not. I don't think that there's a price that's been announced. If there has, I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it'll be on Game Pass. Play during the night. Uh, well, well, I'm I'm gonna let the city. I'm gonna let the game simulate because I want to show you guys winter. Um, I don't know if the other saves in winter or not, so I want to show you guys that. Um, but this is night, so you guys are seeing nighttime now. And some of the stuff does have light, right? Like, the insides of these, like, homes do actually have, like, lights inside. It's not, like, the most exciting light. Uh, but if we go over here to, like, the... Yeah, like, look at the... The lighting's really nice. I do like the lighting. And day-night is, is all cosmetic. So, like, it's not a functional day-night. They're still gonna work, do their normal stuff. Um, and then each day night cycle is a season. It's just like city skylines. So like the only difference is that it is broken up into months. So each day night cycle is broken up into three months, um, which is a full season. Seems to be a big holdup for getting there is modding support will come after the 1.0 release. This is releasing in early access. So there's not going to be any modding support at launch. Potato, thank you for being a lurker tech support and social services support chatters. So, um, yeah, this is the dark. I definitely just prefer to play in the day because I think the lighting is really nice during the day. I think if we maybe had like street lights everywhere or like torches throughout the town that you could place maybe or something like that, um, just more lights coming from the buildings maybe to like make some kind of visual depth. I think nighttime would be a lot. Oh God, dude, the auto saves are kind of kind of crunchy um i think that would severely help um the nighttime otherwise I, I don't i'm not a super big fan of playing in the night i do like having the like sunrises and sunsets it's just like you know the rest of it is kind of like ugh. now i have to sit through the dark you know so um but we'll let the we'll let my um people people go for a while i think Just kind of let it vibe for a bit. Maybe street lights in medieval European village. Yeah. So here we go. Here's the sunrise. It's already gotten kind of away from me. Otherwise, I would have caught it going over the ridge. There's a really nice, like, purple and orange hue that happens as it, like, pops over. But, um... Yeah, night's not too long in the summer, obviously. So it's telling me I have policies available. So there's... Um, let's go through the skill tree next. So this is the skill tree. So you have a bunch of different options. I've been finding that the top tree is, like, the best when you're playing um, generically. So, like, if you're playing without um, combat on, like I am in this village specifically uh you definitely would probably prefer the top tree i think because you can get the heavy plow which makes the farming easier and then if you do fertilization you can not have to do pastures and then your sheep will just graze and like help refertilize fields which is really nice um and then i really liked i wouldn't have picked the orchard one i don't think but i think i'm still going to continue down the path because rye seems great for my region since it's not very fertile 
Um, also, there's droughts. Haven't ran into a drought yet. Don't know what that system's going to be like, but I'm sure that's going to fucking suck when I do. Um, yeah, sheep breeding, sheep grazing on the pastures slowly multiply, which is nice. So you just need, like, a couple sheep, and then they can, like, just kind of go from there. And then you can, like, get your livestock trading set up, and then when they reach a certain threshold, you can sell excess sheep, which is great. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But uh, anyways, there's like trapping, there's forest management, which doubles capacity of all berry deposits, which is great. There's beekeeping, there's trade logistics, which is establishing new trade routes always costs the maximum of 25 regional wealth, um, which is good. That reduces the um, cost of a, of a trade route. Um, or maybe it increases it. I don't actually know. I haven't messed around too much with trade. I've just gotten it to work. I understand that it works and how it works, but that's pretty much it. And then... Um, Yo, Team Mac, what's up? Uh, Twitch isn't working for me. I don't know if you answered. Will this be free on Steam? It will not be free on Steam. It will not be free. No. I don't know how much it'll cost, but it'll be out on April 26th, and it's on Game Pass. Uh, oh, yeah. The foreign supplies is the firewood carts. That's what it is. Um, so those are the ones where you place the carts, and then they'll just gradually increase resources. But then you can also go to, like, charcoal burning and, like, get a deep mine upgrade. So, like, I could use that on my iron mine that I currently have because I've already kind of depleted the deposit, which enables the building to extract resources indefinitely. So, like, otherwise you run out of resources. So, like, I could run out of iron resource if I don't go down this tech tree, right? Um, so then you can go through a bunch of different other stuff, but the way you earn more points, uh, a lot of people did not realize this. So I had to like tell other content creators about this is you have to hover over the center icon in this in order to see what your next, um, scale point requires. So in my current settlement level is a large village. So in order to get to a small town, I need, uh, one more level two house and three more level three houses which i don't have any level three homes yet because i don't really have a good ale system built so um yeah then we can go over to policies i don't know how to get more policy points um at all i don't know if that's just based on your town level or what but i have one um doesn't say anywhere how to get that i haven't figured that out at least yet um, so those are your development points, but this is your, uh, policies tree and these, I don't really care for these very much. So like these are locked in early access. We can't get to level two, but they only have access to two. So you have hunting grounds, wild animals on rich deposits breed twice as fast at the cost of 50% reduced yield from crops. So if you're on an, if you're on one of the regions that doesn't really do well in terms of plots or, um, farming and you have multiple regions under your control, you can just like communicate between your two villages. This village is going to do, um, like hunting and this village is going to do farming and they will work together to create the resources that your villagers need essentially um and then there's strict fasting where citizens skip the fifth meal of uh skip every fifth meal reduces food consumption but decreases approval so um and you do need approval in order to affect your population growth so this is something i kind of struggled with on my second city um, if we go into here and go to population growth, it explains how population growth works. New families, which is everyone who occupies the home, may join the settlement only if there is enough living space. So there has to be an open home for them and approval is high enough. If approval is at 75% or higher, the growth rate is two families per month. If it's 50% or higher, it's one family per month. So you need to be at 50% in order to have new families move in which is kind of hard in the early game um if you don't plan properly if approval drops below 25 percent, it will cause immigration immigration i don't actually pronounce that um which is just basically the opposite of immigration um families may also turn to banditry if public order is low so um and then you can click on public order and install that stuff i don't have that enabled though but um i thought you could click on it maybe you can't there might not be like descriptions for all of these keywords yet. I don't think there is. I don't see public order or banditry anywhere. Cause it's not a resource. Yeah, I don't think they have the stuff for that yet. So. Emigration. That just sounds like immigration. 
Those words are too close together in pronunciation. I don't like it. Um, anyways, so yeah, I got my lumber camp right here. They got a little plot in the middle of the forest. Uh, we are 80%, so like if we had more room for more families, which we don't right now, we could, um, which we probably should. We probably should build some more houses. Let's actually, well, the problem is that we do have this supply right here. So an issue I found is that if you move a building, which some buildings you can move, so I moved all my logging stuff. You can do that up here with relocate. Not all buildings can do that. So like I can't relocate the church, for example. When you relocate them, all of their resources just get left here and there's no way to prioritize moving them from the area. And while they're there, you can't build over top of them. So it's been very frustrating trying to move buildings so far because those resources get in the way, right? So this is in the way, so it won't let me build here until they move it. But I have no way to force them to move it. So it's like a dead lot until they they move it, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, so they got hit with taxation. They don't like that. Um... I'm going to remove the family from the windmill and let them be the builders for the time being. Yeah, we need move it mod. Sean, thank you for paying your lurker tax support, your social services support chatters. Yeah, I did. Where's Cuboid? Get him back in here. He was here a minute ago. Is he still lurking? <laughs> yeah, gra there's logs right here, dude. Grab them from right here. Please? Please, can you grab him from right here? I hate this. <laughs> they never want to. Grab it. Grab this one. Yes. Ah! The rain looks nice. It is nice when you um when you pause it, they're like little droplets, which is kind of cool. You can see them drift around. Potato thing being lurker tax, also known as TM Mac. Um, but yeah, the rain does look nice. This is at, at one time speed. This is at four times speed and this is 12 times speed. You can see it like creating like the like wind waves of the rain in the distance sometimes, which is sick. The visually, again, the visual fidelity of this game is absolutely gnarly. This game is a video game. That is very true, Wild Woody. That is very true. Yeah, I like the deep mining thing because it does allow us to like continually build on a plot. I just I wish it was like a little bit earlier in the development tree because you do need to like prioritize it. Um, but you know, I'm not playing with combat on, so like I'm like chilling on this save. But I want to get to winter so like through the seasons. I'm gonna go through four or twelve times speed and just kind of like let the game simulate for a minute. So that way we can get to the other seasons and move on to my other village so I can like better explain some of the systems and stuff like that. So storage is full at the woodcutter's lodge. I get a lot of this like storage is full at places. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's just because it's too far away. So they can't like bring it over here. That's like one of the issues why it's like giving me a red number up here. And it says number of months before supplies run out. I, I don't actually have um, any issues right now with supplies. It's just I constantly get gate kept by that. We started in town yet? No, we're still on the old one. I'm still explaining all this. Is, there's a lot. There's a lot to this game. There's also like different like menu options. So like you can show your infos differently, right? So like this is all resources up here. So I have 318, 19 food, 78. This is excess. So you can switch between all and the excess resource up here. As you use the wood to forest shrink, yes. And so you can do a forester's hut like I have right here, and then they'll replant. Come on, grab the supplies from here, dude. <sighs>
Uh, work area is empty. Okay, all right. Let's back off on that then. I kind of like how the 12 times speed feels kind of like stop motiony in a way. Just so you guys know, when you get your hands on the game, the um, the timing buttons are not one through three like I would expect them to be. They're actually X and Z. So you do X to speed up and then Z to slow down. Is this the kind of game where you need to buy new areas or the kind where you can just wait, uh, where you just get land and must use it? Um, I don't think it's either. It's, you can use your land that you have if you want, or you can expand out if you want to. You never, like, get regions. So, like, when you start a new game, which we'll dive into, you have three different victory conditions that you're you're going towards, right? And each one can end in an endless mode, I think. At least the peaceful one, you can just play endlessly, even after you reach your victory condition. Um, but like you're 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 constantly going for like a very specific victory condition So like the victory condition for this one is reach the largest settlement size Like so the whole point of um, the, the the peaceful game mode is to just build big right the second one is to I think there's like a uh, An enemy region and you're supposed to take them over and then the third one is you need to defeat like the king or something like it's all very warlord one um is the last um like game mode i guess they all play the same you just have different goals okay we should be able to finally refinish the castle again yeah dude i don't know i feel like this is like bugged out because then i hit it again something's bugged out with the tax office i think that's kind of what's going on i know it says cosmetic only but so i think something's wrong with it i i know when i placed it it felt weird like i felt like i broke something when i placed it i don't think it's i don't think that's like a normal bug either i don't think that happens every time you place the tax office but i felt like i fucked it up because i tried to like move it and like move all the roads after i built it and i think i i think i broke it um but this is my manor, so this is the castle planner. I was trying to show this off earlier, and then I broke it. Um, you can place roads in here, but essentially all the yellow area is considered your area for your castle. So that's all the areas that you can build in. You can build walls. So I could build walls through here, too, if I wanted, and sub like section off different sections or whatever. It auto-generates a gate at every single time it crosses a path, which is really cool. You can build an outer tower, which I don't have any, but that's... Um, the whole point of it is to um, essentially, like, create, like, garrisons, right? It says road access obstructed. I don't really know what the point of that is. Um, again, something, something's messed up with it. But um, you can create, like, garrison points. So, like, um, what is the actual description? Provides 10 garrison space and garrison units and villagers shoot projectiles at approaching enemies. So, like, as they try to assault you, they'll, like, defend your village, right? Um, and then you have your garrison tower, which is the big one that I have. Increases the maximum uh, writ new size by 12, limited to one per region. I don't know what that is, but... Um, and then the tax offices. You need, you're supposed to be at build that in order to collect taxes, but because it's cosmetic, it really doesn't do too much right now. Um, and then you can build roads. So that's kind of it for right now. There's no other real ways to upgrade this. Um, it's still a work in progress. You can click on the manor and you can go into your people. So these are the residing families. These are essentially my servants. <laughs> um, and then you have taxes, and this is how you tax your uh, citizens. So you have like a war tax, banality, citizen tax, mercenary tax, trade tax, tithe, and land tax. So I only have access to land tax right now. <clears throat> so it's warning me that the work area is empty it's because the berry deposit's been depleted it's a seasonal deposit so i've already harvested everything that's grown from it i still want to keep um people assigned here though because they grow herbs which are used for medicine
So, uh, we're almost out of summer, and we'll be moving into fall. Ooh, I haven't seen lightning yet. I know you can have fires. I think I'm playing on, like, the most peaceful difficulty on this village, so. Um, nice. That's sick. I know you can get droughts and stuff, too. Yeah, here's the sunrise. Oh, that was sick, dude. <laughs> you lightning, rain, and sun. Hell yeah. Oh, another one. I wonder if they're like preset spots on the map that'll get lightning because it seems to be striking in the same spot. Oh, that was different though. Oh, I could hear the thunder. It's the end times? Yeah, dude, the eclipse happened. It's the end times now. It feels like it's moving to the right. Like it was moving with the storm or something. But you can see as it rains, it like you actually get like water collecting on the pat on the um on the road as well. And like different spots on the road start to get puddles. You guys can see those right there. There's one like right uh below this shed right here. I don't know if I can The cinematic camera is like very interesting. Yeah, there's the puddle. So you can see it's like reflective. It's supposed to be like water. So, and different buildings have, like, puddle lots and stuff like that, too. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. I Again, the game's, like, visually very, 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 very good, very nice. Yeah, so we're going to start to get the sun rising. Well, the sun's not going to rise, so we're not going to really get too much in terms of, like, sunny lighting. But because we are getting rain, the rain's going to go away here. August is going to come to pass. We're in year five summer. Now we're in autumn. So now we're going to start to see the leaves change. It'll hopefully stop raining here. Um, so in the, in the fall, if you actually like hover over this, it tells you what happens in each season. So seasons are deeply connected to the people's lives and affect different jobs. So spring, which is March through May, frequent raining, seasonal deposits regrow. Summer, crops grow, possible droughts. This is June to August. And then September to November is harvesting, which is autumn, plowing, and sowing crops. Sowing crops. And then winter, um, seasonal resources are gone. This is December to February. Firewood consumption is doubled. And lack of firewood might cause freezing. Uh, sheep shearing is also forbidden during this season. So, you can build a bandit village uh, that survived by preying on its neighbors. Yeah, you can totally do that. Yep. There's also like bandits that spawn too. So as you can see, like they're um, they're they're technically harvesting the uh, flax that grew here. The problem is, is that there was not a lot of, uh, usually flax is like blue. Like you'll see the whole field b fill up. Actually, as a matter of fact, I have a picture of what it looks like when the flax is growing. Hold on a second. Um, un momento por favor. So this is what it looks like. This is my village, so that's my church, right? This is the farm. This is what flax is supposed to look like if it's rich, if the ground is rich. The problem was I was growing it in a field that doesn't have like a lot of um, fertility for flax. So it didn't really look like much was growing there, I think, is how that works. So this is what it's supposed to look like, that you're supposed to see like the blue pretty flowers. And we obviously didn't see that. So they're, they're actually harvesting it. There's just like, visually, there's just nothing there. <laughs> um... But then after they harvest, they will take the ox and they will start plowing the fields. So, like, you'll start to see the ox come through here and it'll start to plow in a minute. I think they use the cow to, like, transport, the ox to transport resources. Let's see. I don't know that it's going to... Well, let me click on them. Yeah, well, let me click on them. I don't know. I think you're supposed to be able to click on them, and it'll tell you, like, how many resources it's carrying or whatever. But they're using it to, like, so they transported 21 wheat. Yeah. And then eventually we'll take the, they'll take the ox, and they'll start plowing the fields, too. But you'll start to see now the uh, forest is starting to change color, too. 
which is nice. And then autumn will kind of like just be right around the corner. So we'll just let this speed through. <sighs> and I can build anywhere on this map I want to. I just like they need to be within range of like a marketplace basically. And then in order to like have a supplied marketplace, you need to have access to the resources, which requires lots of traveling. So it doesn't make sense to make like pocket communities all the time unless there's like a very specific resource they need to access so like over here is hunting so like i just try to keep all the hunting stuff over here so it's all like in its own little space you know like the lumber stuff is all over here at least that's what i found hi molly you guys haven't seen molly yet she's over on this side um she's kind of bald now she had a little she had a little hot spot on her head she got a little allergen stuck under under her fur, she had a little hot spot. So she's bald now. They had to shave her head, and we got to put ointment on it. <sighs> Trying to give her nice scratches. It feels weird. I feel like I have been... Well, I obviously have been live for more than an hour, but it's only one. <laughs> it feels like I should only have been live for the first hour. I feel like it should be just starting the game now. But now you guys can see, like, the the um, the um fall colors are finally here. They're fully in. She's kind of drugged up and tired all the time. So when she has energy, I want to, like, give her attention. Because otherwise she just is, like, <sighs> conked out, you know? Uh, oh, you can hit T, too, and it'll take you back to your town center, which is pretty nice. So if you, like, kind of get, like, lost on the map and you're like, I don't know where I am, you can hit T and it just takes you right back to your town. So, anyways, that's the fall. Um, I think I might be in winter. Am I in winter? I am in winter on the other game. So we'll uh we'll worry about winter in the next save. So did we end up removing those logs? No, but they're about to because they removed the other pile of logs. So I'm gonna let them kind of just like vibe for a minute here and see if they remove that log so I can zone some new homes here so you guys can see how that works. I need them to get rid of this though, because I cannot. I can't I can't zone. I can't zone the homes without it. Yeah, the fuel's getting a little crazy. Um Yeah, the problem is is like we have too much sort. You know what we should do? I should build another woodcutter's lodge, maybe. Let's try that. Let's try building a second woodcutter's lodge. One of the issues I do have with this game is the fact that... No, I have a second woodcutter's... Oh, I don't have anybody assigned to it. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Um, one of the issues I do have with this game is the idea that you can't see how many of each building you've built. Like, you just have to remember, right? So, like, if I would have forgot that I had built this woodcutter's lodge here, I would have just, like, forgotten that it existed kind of deal. And I, I don't like that. I wish it, like, told... Like, I wish there was, like, a way to tell. Um, You can hit tab, and it will, like show like a more info view so you can like track all your stuff right so like there's a trader moving through here uh, there's a trader moving through here you can see all your resources you can see the homes you can see the levels and stuff like that which is nice um, that's by pressing tab yeah i wish there's a way to just like force delete stuff maybe there's a developer mode that i don't know about but Data views weren't invented until the Renaissance. Yeah, that's it. Oh, hello. You guys want to see little Baldy? I don't think you can see the top of her head very well. But the top of her head is shaved. Yeah. Oh, wait. Gotta go this way. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it there. Yeah, she Baldy. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Molly, I can't. I can't play right now. I don't. If you need to go outside, I'll text. I'll text your mom because she's home.
Um, I don't think they're gonna move these supplies. This is like again, like this is the the major gameplay issue I have so far is these like spillover resources if you move buildings. Like I I want to be able to like prioritize force move these, and it is it is literally hindering me in like developing my village because like I don't I don't want to build anywhere else right now. I want to build here. Um. And so it's like I can just sit here and wait and hope they take this. Um. But again, you know, like I'm operating off the idea that they I hope that they take it. What if it's bugged? I think that there's just not a system to prioritize resource movement like that. Um, that's my guess. I think we might see this ox. Oh. Oh. I was hoping to see, like, the ox plow the field. I, I wasn't looking when they were doing it. The ox, like, goes up and down the field and plows it and turns it into this dark color. Uh, otherwise, they do it by hand, so. Come on. There's, like, a log right here, dude. Just take it someplace. Bruh. Yeah, I don't know. Well, anyways, winter's coming. You guys can see the ground starting to get a little white. Once it starts to, like, actually snow, you'll see it, like, actually, like, start to turn white. Yeah, here it is. So now you start to see the snow generate. I don't think... Yeah, so, like, we're starting to see snow actually fall. Yeah, look at that. Uh, it's beautiful, too. So, like, not only do the trees lose their leaves, like instantly kind of but then they also like get they get that snow look at that ah she was begging me for a treat she just got she just went outside uh NAS, thank you for following. Welcome in. Did they move it? They haven't moved it yet. But anyways, that's how the snow generates in. It's pretty nice. I like it. I think it, like, aesthetically is, like, real fucking nice. I think it just goes to show again, like, the whole winter aesthetic is really cool. It even looks like it's got a bit of depth to it, which is sick. No storage space left for production? Saw pit? Oh, yeah, that's just generic. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm going to assign another family to the storehouse so that way they, like, move more resources around. That'll help. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, we'll move over to the other village. We'll just do it on that one. I'll drop a save on this one. This is the first city that I made, so this is going to get saved under number two because I did, like, two saves for it. Um, okay, let's load into my second save. So this one I'm playing with more difficulty settings. We're in the first winter still on this save. So I just started this one last night. Um, If the previous village um, is in this center tile, so the previous village is right here. Okay, the resource layout is, like, random, I guess, every single time. So, like, um, but the, the map itself is the same. So, the last village was in this area. This one is up over here in the top left. So, this is a completely different save. It's not, like, in another village in the same save. I just did a fully different save. I zoned it completely different. I, like, learned from the mistakes of my last one and, like, tried to, like, plan stuff out really cool. I put the windmill in the center of the farm fields, which I think looks super sick. I built, like, a ring road around it. I think it looks really cool. Um, yeah. You have two villages on the same map? Yes, yes, you can. 
Um, I don't know how to do it yet. I haven't done it yet, but I know you can uh, because you can conquer other regions. So um, I also used a custom. I don't know if you guys saw up here in the top right. You actually can have like crests and we'll make one. Um, and then I'm also I also have like a new custom one to use today, which is really cool. Courtesy of Peanut might contain Kodiak Lord. Um, but I just like I just like threw one. I uh, threw the Kodiak Raid emote into um co-pilot and was like please generate me a, a a coat of arms and i just like threw it in as a test um and it worked pretty good i think um yeah so anyways you can make custom coat of arms and you can upload them so we'll take a look at that in a little while So anyways, this is my village. I just started it. I kind of just got it stable above approval. So like I should start getting new villagers here soon. Um, so I say plus four. So they should be adding four more new families over the next few months because it's above 50%, which means I should get one new family a month. Um, so we just need to wait for them to kind of move in uh, right now. But I have a different layout, obviously. So I have some homes being built over here. I have homes right here. I have a tavern right here, which needs to be constructed. The marketplace is here. So I want to build out and around it. <clears throat> um, we have a woodcutter's lodge right here. The for the logging camp is right here. We have a forester's hut. So they'll replant this area all the time. And it's kind of like on the edge of town. So that'll be pretty nice. The saw pits right here. The storehouse is kind of over here on the side of town. Um, and so is the stone cutter, but the stone deposit depletes itself. That's the interesting thing about the stone is that you will just like run out. There's no way to like, at least that I've found to like, it's the one truly limited resource that I've found so far. So, um, yeah, I don't know that you need stone that much though. So, um, yeah, church is over here. I have the farmhouse over here with the farm fields. And so like this whole area I plan on kind of doing as farm fields. This region is very high in farming yields. So this is the emmer or the grain fertility. Uh, this is the flax fertility and this is the barley fertility. And then this is rye. Rye is going to be probably the same as emmer if not uh, always. If not, it should be just like a little better in most spots. So um, yeah. Um, there's also a smell and fire hazard system, but that's apparently a work in progress. So will we be able to build on the space outside of the map? I don't think so. No. Cause that's like a different region. Like that's how you send people to trade, right? So it's a trade point. So that's kind of like the edge of your buildable area. So no 81 tiles. I mean, I we have no idea. I have no idea because we don't know what mod support's going to look like. But based on the way that it treats paths as it hits the edge and it just turns into like a straight line, I doubt it. It'll all, it'll probably be just like more like a fixed border. Who knows? Who knows what modding support will provide? We don't know. As of right now, you can't. So, mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, I'm playing out on like a stepped up difficulty. So I have a hunting camp over here and my berry uh, deposit is up over here. So I'm having like a little bit more of a hard time getting started because I don't have as much berries to rely on. We have a lot of wild animals though and a lot of good ground resources as well. So like I can rely a lot on hunting thankfully um but i can't really do this say the same for um for berries on this map so uh a little unfortunate in that regard but uh there's a ton of animals and you can see these ones aren't like or these ones are also bugged i guess i don't know they weren't bugged last time i was playing on this map they were moving around so i don't know i don't know what causes the animals to sometimes stop animating but they do actually animate and walk around Uh, I'm trying very hard on this one to uh, follow terrain lines. So, like, I'm trying to, like, build around the actual, like, topography. And build roads so, like, they're flatter, basically. And then, like, only build cutaways through it. 
Um, but the the main roads are like following the the main framework is supposed to follow the the topography. That's kind of the game plan, at least. So, um, we got nine months worth of supplies, though, so we're sitting pretty good. Yes. Okay. So we got our first new family. Let's go. That's what I wanted to see. Okay, I'm going to assign them to the saw pit. We got um, families assigned all the way over here. We're going to need to start doing the forester here soon, probably. And we'll probably need to upgrade to the storehouse at some point as well. Um, for the rest of the time today, I think I'm going to, just for visibility sake for everyone, I'm going to turn off the day-night cycle. So it'll always be like a fixed sun angle like this, and I think it looks sick. Also, do love the way that the snow slowly fades away in spring. Like, just like looking at it like this is sick. Like, this feels, feels right, you know? Feels like when snow melts here. <laughs> So, um, this is this city though. This is kind of how I'm building it out. Um, this is on the peaceful difficulty potato. So like, we're not going to have raids on this city. We're going to start a new one in a minute after I kind of like, think I've touched every base of gameplay mechanics. Um, that isn't army related. Um... We haven't gone into trade at all yet. We should go back to the other um, city for that. I forgot to go over trade. Um, the trade screen's interesting. Is there anything else that's like really worth taking a look at? Granary, your storehouse, your pack station. I haven't built a pack station yet, but, like, you basically use it as part of the trading system. There is, like, a really complex trade system, like, for bartering and stuff, but I haven't worked too much into it yet because I've been playing so, like, I've been playing, like, on the peaceful difficulty, so, like, I haven't had, like, any need to, like, fight for it. So, and this area is like kind of on top of the hill here. So if we open up like the topography thing using the paths, um, I built like the town on top of the hill looking down. And then the goal was to put farm fields over here, but then I decided to put them over here centered around the windmill. And I think it looks super sick. Oh, you can actually see the, the ox plowing. So I have the ox plow upgrade for this uh, one. So it just goes through in lines and like plows the field basically. And then they go back to the start and then they go again. Um, I'm going to assign one of the families to another family to work the farms because we need to get all these fields processed. I'm actually going to unassign, I think, maybe the logging camp for the time being and put them to work at the farm as well because we do need food. The angled field part is really like fucking up the whole ox. <laughs> it's not working too good. <laughs> I think it's based on the actual grain connection. So I think if I redrew this field, it would probably work better. Like this one would work really well. So. Yeah. All right. I'm going to load. I'm going to save this one. Which is one's three. Yeah, it's overwrite three. And then let's load back into two one last time and we'll just take a look at the trade screen and then we'll actually start a new game with with combat on and we'll take a look at all those mechanics as well so
the trading post is right here. So if we go into the trade screen right here, we can go through the different categories and we can see how many of each resource we have. So for example, planks, right? And what you can do is I have planks set to export at 100. So if I ever have more than 100, it will trigger that as an exported good and it will try to sell it for two gold, right? Oh, he's talking. Um, and he'll go to, or and they'll go to regional wealth, and they'll they'll uh, it'll go to the regional wealth, which is coin. Um, so I have uh, 105, but I want to get down to 100, so it'll try to sell that extra five. You can also set up a trade route. After paying to establish a trade route, a dedicated traveling merchant will regularly visit your region to trade only this specific type of good. Um, so. Yeah, you can do that as well. So that way the people who work at your trading post don't have to be the ones doing the trading. If that makes sense. That's at least how I've understood it. So for example, I have berries set to sell because we always have like more than enough berries. I think I'm going to turn it off though. Yeah, it says we don't have enough fuel, but we have like a lot of it. It's just all over here. So, I'm going to set that to be double, so then maybe it will have more people, like, transporting stuff. Yeah. So, that's basically how trade works. All right, let's drop a save and start a new one. Okay. All right, everything's super fast in this game, too. Like, I don't have to, like, wait through menus for really anything. It just fucking loads. Um, so, this is the new game screen right here. Hold on a second. Oop. Okay. This is the new game screen. And you can pick between one of these portraits to be your lord basically so that each one of these is is your lord character um i think for this one let's go with this guy or no, wait we'll make well i don't know which one we did from one of the other ones let's go with this guy though we'll go with this one so this is our guy this is uh and then we can pick uh basically the name of our person so we're gonna call him kodiak there we go there's our guy and you can customize your coat of arms. And there is a lot of customization options in this. So, like, you can pick the background and then the colors through the lists here. So, like, if you want green and yellow or whatever, stick with that for the time being. You can go in pretty in-depth. So, for example, now we have different... We'll just do the split one, for example. So, the split one, you can each side, field A and field B, can have totally different, like, customization options. So, like, let's say we want checkered pattern for this one and then the star pattern for this one. And we can have completely different colors. So, like, we want green and yellow on this side, but let's say we want blue and red, right? So, we want, let's say we want dark blue and bright red on the other side, right? You can then also set symbols, so, like, you can pick between any of the pre-made symbols here, and the symbols all have different color patterns. So, let's say we want this one to be, I don't know, like, um, yellow. No, we'll make it, like, cyan and, like, um, white, right? So, there we go. And then if we want to go to this field B, we could set this. And so, let's say we want it to be the bear um, one. Where's the bear one? right here and we can set the bear to be like black and white there we go um so you can do that or you can do dimidation which combines them right so in theory then we could go back to field a and set that to be the bear and then it's like one big bear right and you can say number of instances so you can say how many bears so like you can see it's creating more bears so I have two bears. That's one bear. And then you can also scale them as well. So you can scale it up and down. If we go back to the, like, the big one, you can see this a little bit better. Right? You can also do ununiform scales. So, like, for example, if we set this back to one instance, you can, like, squish it or flip it or do whatever you want to it, right? So, like, let's say if you just wanted to invert it, you would set it to be negative. And, like, once, I think it's, 
yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that flips it upside down, and then if you do the ununiform scale, you can set it to be inverted like this. Yeah, there we go. Which is pretty nice. You can also adjust how the tiling works on the back, so you can scale it up and down if you want to, like that. Which is pretty cool, and then you can also like rotate it as well. So like for example, if we wanted to do like a more unique pattern, like these little arrows, you could like put them at an angle if you wanted to. So like they default by shooting up, but if you wanted it to look like it's shooting down at an angle, you could do it like that. All that's really cool and you can go through like a bunch of different layouts, right? And so, like, look at all these. Look at, I got a bear going this way, bear going this way, bear going this way. I got the flower thing down here. There's a bunch of really cool ways you can customize this, obviously. Um, let's, so we can do a load, a custom texture. Um, you can make a custom texture. You have to save it as custom underscore coat dot PNG and put it in the app data folder for this under the save games in the app data. It says how to do it in this description right here. Um, I already made one using the emote right here. I think it looks pretty sick. You can't customize it once you load it in. So it just takes the image and throws it in game. Uh, but there's our there's our little custom coat of arms for today. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks sick too. So shout out to Peanut for making that one. Uh, you can also save it. So like if you make a coat of arms using their editor that you really like, you can then hit save coat of arms and it'll save it. Um, so that's pretty cool. And then you can like upload it and use it in different saves or whatever. So there we go. So we'll continue. And now this is the new gameplay setup screen that wasn't available in the demo. I like the black and gold. It is my favorite color combo. I do like black and gold. Black and gold and then gold and blue. Like, um... Kind of like a Ukraine color pattern, but like not as bright of yellow. Like I don't really like the super bright yellow, but more of like the golden yellow. Like that's more like starting to tear on orange. That color combo or potato thing you paint another tax support and social service support chatters as well as black and yellow, like black in that color. Ooh, yeah, this is my favorite color right here. This like orangey yellow, love that color. Love it. Um. Yeah, that's the color combo I like the best. But anyways, we'll load back in with the one we have. Um, blown away by how easily all this stuff works. Very minimal bugs in this game. I haven't noticed too many. Um, so these are some scenario templates. Again, they're called templates because you can fully customize everything down here right but what this does do is set victory conditions and i don't know that you can do victory conditions down here so um these will basically set your victory condition and then you can do more coming soon ai city building is still under a rework so my home gym is black and yellow like army yellow oh nice So um, these are the different scenario templates. So the other first two cities I was playing on were on Rise to Prosperity. The premise is fulfill the requirements of your citizens, plan and rule your medieval town as you see fit without worrying about combat. So the victory conditions is reach large town settlement level. After that, you may choose to continue in endless mode. Well, today, we're pro I'm going to try to play on restoring the peace, I think. Um, two territories in the north are claimed by an illegitimate baron whose castle is located off the map bandit camps reside in the other unclaimed regions build and expand at your own pace when ready challenge the baron in the northern territories uh, victor conditions conquer every region and then there's on the edge grow your city and raise forces quickly as you can the lands are pestered by raiders and undefined settlements will quickly quickly perish victory conditions survive all the attacks and reach large town settlement level so it's basically um the first one is to get to large town the last one is to get to large town while also f being like attacked a lot and then the center one is there's an off land like i think of this one as like the default one maybe um like this entire premise is like build at your own pace control all the regions if you want to and then go and attack the person outside of the map So I like this one because I think it combines the two very well. 
Like it takes like the combat premise and the peaceful premise and puts it all at your own pace. So I think we're going to go with that one today because we'll be able to do everything. Um, there's different difficulties. So there's relax, default, and challenging. Um, we don't want to play on relaxing because we'll never get raiders. Um, I don't want to play on challenging either. Yeah, and you can't, like, there's only, there's only medium and then frequent, yeah. So, um, we're gonna play on... Huh. Balanced. A lords may press claims towards other players' regions after they run out of neutral regions to claim. I might, I might set that one on reactive. Because I'll, I'll let the raiders be the ones that attack us, and then we'll, we'll be the ones that attack the other regions. So, um, I think that's the way I kind of want to do it. Off-map advisor, or adversary, yeah, so that's the one. Adds an AI opponent located off the map. He controls two regions and brings in his soldiers to the main game when, or main game map when challenged. So that's, that's what I kind of want um, right there. Um, so end goal is domination eliminate all the other lords by claiming the territory so there's different ones there's conquest which is claim all the regions and there's n endless play and growth so I want to do the domination we're going to try to like do the thing Rand bandit a raider free year so the first two years of the game we will not be raided there'll be one initial bandit camp and then random band bandit camp spawn limit will be three so they can get up to three um, bandit camps starting season spring yes standard supplies um Armament delivery, free weapon delivery militia as soon as the player builds a storehouse and five residential plots. So we'll get some free like weapons to protect ourselves. That's fine. Residential requirements balanced. Uh, it's fine as well. Um, I want to like step up the difficulty just a little bit. Um, and then we can start to see the underground water system, which I did not show off. Domination. Wicked. All right. So let's build. So you can see the early access map right there. And you can see that there was like a list to select them from a bunch of different maps. So I think that there is a plan to have a lot more maps down the road. But right now there isn't any. All right. Let's see what region we're in. So we're in the bottom right. So I have done, uh, I have a village in Nusolo, uh, Nos Nusolo, um, Waldenbrand. And now we're in Zu. Zv, div, ziv, I'm assuming this is in Polish, but so zv, I don't know how to pronounce that. I know the W is a V. Um, yeah. So, uh, this view shows which regions are under whose control. Uh, that's because I zoomed out. So this is the tutorial for this. So these are the outlaws, and then Hildenbolt von Berenut. I don't know how to pronounce his name, but um, we also have a new message. This is going to explain the um premise of the game. So victory condition dominance. Build your up your town, your manor. When ready, press claims towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. I'll unite these lands under my rule. So I'm accepting that that's the game um, rules today. So we're going to pause. Uh, in manor lords, families need food, fuel, and roof over their heads to survive. Supplies, yada, yada, yada. Okay, I already know how to do all that. Um, so yeah, so you can see up here that these are the two regions that the guy owns, like that the those people own. Um, there is raiders, but I don't know where they're at. Oh, I think they're down over here to the right. They must be down over here to the right. Yeah, there's the there's the raiders. So they're over here in this region. So uh, we're going to need to claim all of these regions at some point. Um, this is where my homeless people's tent is. We have our hitching posts. We have our supplies here. They're out and uncovered, so we're going to need to get uh, a granary built. So first off, we need to take a look at the map for resources. So this area is very plentiful in wild animals. So we're definitely going to want to set up a hunting lodge for sure. Um, seems like we have a pretty normal iron deposit. Clay deposit's pretty low. Stone deposit right there. Um, I'm not sure that we'll be like rapidly expanding in any direction off the get go. Um, because I don't really know how to do that yet. <laughs> Hold on a second. I have a lot of discord pings. That I need to clear out. There we go. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at the road. So this is the road. To, this is the road tutorial. So we'll take a look at this for your guys' sake. Oh my God, who's calling? Chat. 
I knew it wasn't on. Like, I knew it was probably Tangia at first, but I was genuinely curious if Moose was calling me for a second. I thought it was me. <laughs> um, some workplaces <laughs> allow villagers to use handcarts to transport up to 10 goods at once. However, pulling a handcart off-road is extremely slow, so make sure to connect your buildings to roads. Yeah, so roads are uh, mostly used for handcarts. Oh. <laughs> um also like I f I wish that the um terrain height view was a bit more uh visible. It's kind of hard to see it sometimes. I don't know if there's a way to make it more visible, but like I do struggle to see it sometimes. Like you guys can probably tell that like I can't really it's hard to see this. Um and so I wish I could see it a bit better. Right, this whole thing's just on like a gradual slope, so it's not that bad, but um yeah. Like there's nothing too steep going on here, but like it starts to get a little aggressive further up you go, so we might just have to build our our settlement on a slope based on the region that we're in. Um yeah, it looks like we're definitely going to have to build our settlement on a slope. So I think it'll probably just be centered in this area. I like the area that it's already kind of um that's already kind of here. So uh, let's, let's just send a straight road down to here. No curve. That's the road into the town. Okay. And then we'll have it go up to here and then we'll have it hook and go this way. Ooh, wait, actually, you know what? I'm going to right click that off. Yeah. Yeah. I found that placing more nodes of the road makes it a more natural curve. If you want to build like more natural. Um, so I'm going to build the road like that for now. Yeah. Uh, which is going to be good because we're going to need to build, I want to build a hunting camp straight off. Okay. Every region of Manor Lord has a strength and weaknesses. Be sure to check all the research deposits as well as investigate the soil fertility before deciding to build the direction of your town. Right. We do need to do fertility because we need to figure out where we're building stuff. Um, I do need to build a hunting cabin though, because this is like right here. So I want to put that down right there. So that definitely needs to be built. Um, underground water. So this is how you determine where you can build wells. I don't know how underground water... Um, if there's, like, some areas that, like, don't have as much underground water. It seems like this region doesn't have as much. But you can see, like, where different spots on the map don't have as much underground water. Um, so, like, over here, we can't really build a well over here, and they need water to drink. So, yeah. You're about to run out of timber and block yourself. Go build a logging camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. We got to build a logging camp. Um, I'll probably build it right here, I think. Let's, let's get that taken care of. They did yell at us, after all. So, I'm going to build that right there. Timber transport. They're going to talk about the oxen, that you need the ox in order to do the timber transport. So there we go. Now we need to go into fertility. So it seems like this region is super fertile. So we have great emmer fertility. The flax is over there. It seems like this area right here um, seems to be like the best area for farming. So what I'm going to do is take a road and try to weasel it through here on this tree line. Yep, connect it up right there. I think that kind of follows the um the terrain heights as well. And then we already have this road right here. So now we've already created like kind of the structure that I want for the farm fields over here. Um which is good. So I'm gonna take a road, put it up there like that, and I'm immediately gonna go to work at building the windmill. I'm going to put it low on the priority list so that way other buildings will get built before it. Um, so it's not as important. But I want to build the structure of the windmill. Oh, shit. Right. We have to go like this. Yes. Like that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we'll just build it right there. Okay. There we go.
Okay. There we go. So that's where the windmill is going to be at. We need to set that construction priority to be low so it doesn't like try to build it right away. And then these are going to be the farm fields in here. I'm going to put the farm fields over here. I might put the farmhouse right here. So let's get that. Okay, that's the pasture. Yeah, we don't need to worry about that. Um, let's do the farmhouse. Not enough trees. Oh, yeah, it won't even let you build it unless you have the resources for it, which is kind of silly. Um... Are you familiar with Gamers Outreach and Gamers Forgiving? I am familiar with them. Um, we need stone, so I'll build that right there. That's going to be for the stone right there. Do we have berries anywhere? Yes, it's right here. Not a lot though. Not enough goods, right? Because we need we need them to um yeah, so this needs to be like the highest priority is the logging camp, yeah. Why is I why do I have a ping in this folder? What's going on here? Um, okay, cool. Okay. When they're Fall Guys tournament? Oh, really? Yeah, they do. There's another one that happens in, um, at Eastern. I don't know which, which group does that one, but there's another land that happens at Eastern too. Or maybe they moved from Eastern to Ann Arbor, and that's the same one. I don't actually know. That's the one? Oh, okay. Okay, then that's the one that they, they must have moved then, I'm guessing, yeah. Okay. Uh, so there's that framework set up. Uh, we don't need to worry about the woodcutters for right now. I'm going to build the... Uh, Saw pit, I guess. Let's build that right there. We'll we'll build the uh we'll build the saw pit. Not enough goods, right? I can't. Okay. All right. Well, we're starting to build the frameworks, anyways. Um, is there anything else we can really zone? I mean, we could start zoning some fields. Yeah. Uh, fields of manor lords are very large, uh, need to be very large to be effective, but they also take long to plow by hand. For a starting village, try a field side of one Morgan. Which is, yeah. Um, later, if you want the region to focus on farming, you can consider spending development points to unlock the heavy plow upgrade, which allows plowing much bigger fields uh, more efficiently utilizing oxen. Also remember to check the field's ground fertility for different crop types before picking uh, on the soil and ground to grow on. Right. Um, so, yeah. Oh, God, that autosave, dude. So, like, this entire area, if we wanted to, um, okay, it does not really like to do that. It really does sometimes struggle in, like, trying to build the fields the way you want them. <laughs> yeah. So, like, this would be 3.7 Morgan just for this one field. If we did this entire section as one field, which we're not going to do. Um, I'm going to set a lot of these to be fallow. Um, I just want to get rid of the trees. So when we eventually use the windmill, it's good. Um, this is actually really, this is a cheat code I found to, to clear trees is to just build a field and it'll just cut the trees down. Um, so um, yeah, we can basically just go like that. Boom. All the trees are gone. Now we need a farmhouse, right? But that's fine. And then I can just go in and delete the tree, delete the field. Boom. Trees are gone.
Easy peasy. Yeah, it wants to. Yep, there we go. Uh, it doesn't like that. Maybe it's too big. I don't know. Maybe it's like clip it on something. Let's see. Let's see if I can force it somehow. Sometimes I've, I I did this on the last one and I went down to here. It just doesn't like this. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't like that. Interesting. Something must be up with the nodes there. Smitty Werben Jagerman Jensen. What? Schmitty! Smitty Werben Jagerman Jensen. He, he was, was number, number one. one. Schmitty, welcome in. Wow, nice bear. Thanks, dude. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, so that's going to be one field, and then I'm going to do another field on this side, I think. I don't know what's going on here with this road. we got to fix this. While the road building tool is really cool, it doesn't, like, work exactly how I want it to a lot of times. Like, it'll do, like, random, like, loop-de-loos, kind of like how City Skylines 1 used to do. I've found. Which I don't love. Oh, wait, really? Okay, wait. Yeah, then here, then here, then here. There we go. All right, cool. So there's the two fields that are going to go right there. I have a final tomorrow at 8.30 a.m. I'm scared. Oof. That does not sound great. I wish you the best of luck. So then we can select through and it'll tell us the percent like yield for each like crop type. So like this is 58% fertility for that one. Um, this is 57 for wheat, you know, um, so you can like kind of decide how you want to do this stuff. I'm going to probably put the farmhouse right here on the corner. Once we get it, I'll put it here. Um, yeah. Pause this building. Yes. Okay, good. Yeah. Don't build that. Yeah, we have this at the high. Okay, all right. I think that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. We need to build a farmhouse. I know, I know, I know. We don't have the ability to make a farmhouse because the game won't let me build, like, Q stuff. All right. I think, we can, I think we just press play for now. They're going to start getting to work on things. And then I need to put the granary over here as well. So it'll probably be granary next to the farmhouse. And then the storehouse is probably going to go down here. Are we up at that time officiating three soccer games back to back? Oh, boy. Um, the hunting camp finish. Select it. Wait, uh, it's, wait. Oh yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. So let's get, let's get somebody starting to go hunting. Yep. All right, cool. So now we'll have a family just assigned to hunting now. There we go. Yep, exposed goods. That's fine. We need people to... We need this to get built first, so... There we go. Alright, go start chopping down trees. And then... I'm gonna buy another ox. 
I never get excited about new games, but this is the exception. I um would definitely say that you should not set your expectations too high for this game. Um and for just your own mental sake because I am a little concerned that people's expectations are like way up here and in reality the game is very comfortably high up but it's it's not like empire state building high you know what i mean it's a good game but it, it has it's still under construction i think that's a good way to like think about it um I am really enjoying it. I love the game so far. But that being said, I do think it's important that people have like reasonable expectations for this game. It's a new game of the year, right? I mean, that is my YouTube title. Uh, <laughs> is this a game of the year? <laughs> I just, I'm a little concerned that, you know, um, people might have too high of expectations for it, you know? And, like, I don't, um, I don't think that's fair to this developer either. Because it is a great game. Interesting, what the heck? Wow, that's so weird. It's so weird how it like rotates the plot differently depending on how you do this stuff. Okay, all right. Let's do it like that. Boom, there's our market. <clears throat> how efficient is the grid infrastructure and how viable are highways in this game? Yeah, there's no highways. Um, but uh, grids are actually pretty efficient. <laughs> it, the game does reward you for building organically though in terms of like visually, like it's very good. <laughs> And cool and realistic looking when you build, like, a more organic village. Um, so, don't be afraid to not go grid. Um, you will, you will find a way. Like, I think I'm even gonna... I think I'm gonna... Go up to here. Yeah. And then... No, I think I'm going to go to here? Yeah. I just now noticed the bear suit. What am I blind? bear suit what do you mean i am a bear i've just trapped this person inside of me um yeah <laughs> actual bear man yeah i've become what hacked always wanted me to be ballin <laughs> I wish this region had more um, terrain. There we go. I'm gonna try. To I'm trying to follow some of the terrain lines when I build out these uh, roads. There we go. Not enough goods. Okay, fuck, dude. Can we, like, get enough goods? Lazies? Two families. Go clear-cut this forest. 
A new message? I have heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and honor against those who wrong me. I should hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slander uh, and slanders that some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal, Hildenbolt Van. Okay, that's the guy. That's the guy I have to dominate. Well, I guess we can write back. <gasps> oh. <gasps> oh, shit. Well... Uh Oh shit. Oh, so this is how negotiations and shit work. Oh, so I can either say you have no rightful claim to Selbitz and Hofstetten. Um I can negotiate and say I need silver <laughs> or I can do a declaration of war. Okay, this could be really worked out like oh my god. I know that, like, the base game's probably going to have a lot of cool stuff, but I'm just thinking of modding support and, like, how crazy this shit's going to get. All right. I have to, I have to do the thing. You have no rightful claim. Send. Letter sent. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, something I didn't tell you guys before, but when you zoom out, this, like, auto-generates the areas that you've been building. So when you build homes and roads, it, like, builds them in the map like this. Like, this is all. Like, if I built a new road, it would, like, appear here. I wonder how big and dense and gross you can make cities into the into the game, late into the game. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know what's going on at my company. They just fired two people and canceled the Among Us game today. <gasps> what? No Among Company Among Us Friday? Uh oh. Yeah, we need the T. <laughs> um, where do I need to swap it? Yeah, there we go. Oh, this is really cool. Okay. So something I noticed when I first started playing the game and I was in a call with Slay, I was fucking freaking out. They'll actually climb down into the saw pit when they're building it. Hold on, we'll see. We'll see as they do it. They might start building- Yes, yeah, so you see he just went down in there? Heck yeah. Oh, okay, that guy teleported in there. He wasn't supposed to do that. They actually walked down the slope, though, to get in. Yeah, like that. Look at that. I thought that was so cool. I thought it was such a, like, a nice, cool little detail. Um, My CEO sent a company-wide meeting for Monday, and I noticed two people were not in there. <laughs> And then the two people that were not in the meeting got fired a bit later. Oh, no. Last time this happened to me, my company was shut down. That's not... Um, I complaint with HR, yeah. Net 9 got a company-wide meeting at 10. Company shut down by 11. And that was after they fired two pe three people a week prior. Jesus. You know, now that I rolled up my sleeves, um, I'm not as hot. In this. I'm sorry, but this is horrible flashbacks to my startup experience. <laughs> Another, beam coming up. Another beam coming up. Nice.
All right, we need to build a forager's hut now that we can afford it. Have this be just like a straight road. Just give us like a grid of some kind to start with here. He's already getting clogged with ox traffic. Dude, the road gets bit. It auto upgrades. It's fine. It goes from a two lane to a four lane real quick. <laughs> I plan for it. It's okay. <laughs> All right, we need to start getting the uh, buildings built here. So, um, logistics. So, storehouse. We're going to put the storehouse right here on the corner. And then the granary is going to go over here. Um, can we build the farmhouse right now? Yes. Okay, farmhouse is going to go right there. Granary is going to go next to it right here. Not enough goods. Okay, right. Um, we don't need as much lumber anymore. Yeah, we can unassign two families and put one in the stone cutters camp. I got a bit more context. We're fine. <laughs> Company's not shutting down. We're fine. Everything's fine. Two people fired were necessary for long-term cash flow just in case we don't get as many clients as initially forecasted. Oh, so it was like a layoff. I need 14. <laughs> I can't afford to build two. <laughs> this lot will never have one. Oh, fuck me. Well, I might make this bigger then. Fuck it, grid. <laughs> Are there different road sizes? No, it automatically makes the roads like spill over. Like they're not bigger. It just like visually makes them bigger when they're around buildings and structures that would generally have more foot traffic. So, like, the market will have a lot of foot traffic, so it makes the roads bigger around it like that. The homes will do it, too. Uh, we need 12 lumber, so we got to wait for that to kind of pop up. But, yeah.
Can you guys hurry up this? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I want them to like <laughs> kind of get started. Like see if they can like do a field or something. Okay, they finished the Grand right now too. That's good. Grant and Berries collected now as well. All right, we need to get them into homes now. Do we have 12 timber? No, we only have nine timber. All right, we got to wait for the 12 timber. We almost have enough. We're getting there. Says we have 12. Hold up. Hold the phone. Says we have 11. Oh, for fuck's sake. Stocks were damaged by weather. No! Get them. Store them. Take them to the storage. Damn it. Okay, so this is six. That becomes eight. I think that's the size we do it. Yeah. There we go. Wait, did that have... That had backyards too, yeah? That had backyards, yeah? Uh-oh. Yeah, 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 I had to. All right, we're getting people moved in. I don't think they're going to get this field done this year. I think we just got to take the L on the farm field for the year. Yeah, go build the homes. Go build the homes, guys. Yep, extra living space. So remember when I talked about it earlier, this is how you expand it. So it's this little person right here. You click that and then boom. Now now they'll build an extra living quarters on this lot, which I do want because we want, we want five households at least for all the families. That'll get them out of these homeless people tents as well, and it'll make them happy and it'll allow people to move in. Uh, we need to upgrade that as well. Can we prioritize? Let's prioritize the hitching post real quick. Oh. Oh, I guess they all moved into houses. I don't know. I don't know how they've done this already. We have three p families. Oh, wow. So they all just like just are cramming into these houses. Holy shit. Okay. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> um, where's the generic storage full? Okay. There. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Happens. These warnings are like kind of annoying. I'll be honest. Because a lot of them are, like, irrelevant.
How the fuck did they steal my resources? Yo, I'd like diplomatic. I'd like to be diplomatic with these guys. I've sent them a letter. Please stop stealing from me, thank you. Um... Please and thanks. Dude, yes, there is. There is enough stable space. We only have two ox. And I upgraded it. Do we need to, like, connect it to the back side? Is that the problem? Do you guys just need to be reminded that it's there and upgraded? I'm confused. I don't really understand. Okay, where's the woodcutter? I don't really like how this is like not at the right angles. I think I just took out a huge section of road. I did. There we go. Go from there. Lovely. That's going to be the road up to that. And then this is going to... across from here over to it as well. We're going to try to follow that grid line, I think. Um, okay. All right, what do you guys... You guys need the church still. Okay, so let's build them a church. That'll start getting new residents to move in because it'll get our approval up high enough. Um, what do we need? What are we missing? Are we missing the planks? Is that it? Yeah, we're missing the planks. Okay, so we got to turn the saw pit back on. Okay. Saw pit's back, baby. I don't know why it still says not enough stable space. Let's see if we can save. I don't know if that's a bug or not. And then let's load save game number four. See if that fixes it. Yep. Got rid of all of our warnings. Good to know.
It's going to start raining here. What? Why did they migrate? Did we were we just building too close to them maybe? That could be it. That's okay. That's not that far from the hunter's camp. We could put the hunter's camp back into the woods. Maybe they just naturally migrate and I didn't know that. They're not far enough away. We're okay. The original NIMBY. <laughs> also, a buyback for 15 minutes between meetings. I feel like... And Swanee, is there a day where 90% of it isn't meetings? No. <laughs> He's a product manager, so no. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Fair enough. I'm in meetings all day long telling people no. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Fair enough. Oh, but nicely, yeah. I feel like I need to stand and stretch. Oh, you guys want to see the tail? Boop. Look at that! Look at that little bear tail. Yeah. No, I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not judging you, but oh, I'm okay. just saying. All right, Philip. Every everybody else is gonna. Nobody's judging me. No, you guys aren't judging me, right? Would you judge this face? Would you? I don't think you would. Phil was gonna Phil was gonna stream and raid me, guys, and then he decided that he hates me, so he didn't. How's the day today, Phil? How's the weather? <laughs> Wait, no! Oh, it didn't work properly. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I made something. And it didn't work. It didn't work. Can I do it like this? Phil, you want to try using those emotes again real quick? It's not working. Oh, why isn't it working? Oh, wait. It's not working. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. I'm trying, try. Fix it, fix it, fix it. It worked the first two times, but it worked wrong. But then in the third time, it just didn't even, it didn't even do it.
You know, I could just do it like this. Okay, I, gar I, I, I almost guarantee it'll work this time. I almost guarantee it'll work this time. Maybe I'm wrong. No, actually, you know what? It might not. No, no, it does work. No, it works. There it goes. Yep, there it goes. Yep, there it goes. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to set it up too so it plays the sound bite. Go Lions? Every single time it happens too. Yeah. Never doubt my ability to stick to a bit. <laughs> He can still spam the emotes. <laughs> they still show up in Capogen. <laughs> no, resource stolen by nearby ban. Okay, I don't know how. I don't know how this ban, like this this resource stealing works. How are they stealing my resources? How are they doing that? What? Time to lurk as I have been for the past two hours. Okay, have a good lurk. In the, it's, the way it's supposed to work is it's supposed to like trick. It's supposed to like grab the username of the user who sent the message and then time them out. And it was it's not it does it wasn't doing it. So I don't know I don't know what the variable or how to set the variable properly in stream elements to work like that. So, I don't know. I tried percent sign user percent sign, which is what I thought it was, and then it just didn't trigger anything. Unlucky. Um. Anyways, Phil, have a good lurk. Thank you for paying lurker tax and supporting social services support chatters. I hope you are enjoying this game. Uh huh. I like how it goes out of order <laughs> on that second one. <laughs> I'm going to go play it. <laughs> TR, yeah, it's timeout roulette. Um, okay. Guys are getting lucky. You're getting lucky. One of these times, it's gonna happen. And don't come crying to me when it does. <laughs> Dude, I, I swear to God, this gun's not loaded. <laughs> the road snapping is insane. It's really cool when it goes around buildings. Like that it, it like it fully pads the corners. Like that's sick. Like you don't even need you can just like wrap it around, you know? Love that. Love it. Oh, you have to, like, hire them? Well, I want a militia. Oh, okay. You've created your first militia. Male villagers will evenly distribute between all militia units. 
They will try to find required equipment. The weapon shield depends on the unit type. Uh, while the maximum quality of body armor and heads depend on the villagers um, residential level. Okay, so level threes can get better equipment. Um, after bringing all necessary equipment home, the unit recruits are marked as ready to rally. Once, uh, Only then will you be able to rally your units. Okay, so they need it in their houses. Got it. Okay, all right. It does a pathfinding to point, uh, to the point. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, the the I really like how it works with like curved stuff too, because like there's a curved system to TDW. So like it like auto curves the road, and then you use like control and scroll to adjust how curved you want it. So like I found like one third is like the most like smooth curve so far. And then you can set multiple points as well. So, like, let's say I want it to go from, like, here to here to here to here to here, right? And then you can, like, adjust the whole road's curvature by, like, scrolling it. Yeah, like that. Maybe they'll stop people from stealing from you. I hope so. Once I I have to build a fifth house. Once I build the fifth house, it like um I get stuff for militia. So um let's build let's build some more homes. Let's see, I want to do this plot as a home plot. All right, let's see. How do I want to lay this out? Do I want it that way? Do I want it this way? I don't think I want them facing the backyards of those people. I think I want the going this way, but I don't like how it's on the... Well, we could just do it on the curve. That's fine. Um, we'll do it like this. I think this maximizes homes per lot. Boom. Get to building, folks! We got a 52%. We're going to start getting new villagers. Oh my god, we don't have a water. Oh, we don't have water supply. We don't have well. We don't have well. We don't have well. I built well. <laughs> oh no. Uh, well, right here. Perfect. High priority. Build it. Now. Do it. Then church. Church next. We must be godly. Um. I was actually going to put it where I put the well, but, you know, that kind of... Screwed that over a little bit. Um, let's put it right there. That's a fine spot for it. We can make our roads kind of wrap around. Have we I finished? You to Jesus. <laughs> um, is there a Salem yet in witch trials? <laughs> uh, have we finished the energy drink tier list, dude. I don't think we'll ever finish it. Ugh. We did it for the day, though. Nas Zero. Actually really good. It's a like grapefruit flavored. I didn't expect it to be good. I expected it to kind of be, like, gross. The branding is not did not work well for that product, I don't think. Personal opinion. All right, let the road go to there. Uh, let's prioritize building the church over the houses. A bandit camp was sighted? Did they... Oh, no, they moved to this area now, too. Okay, so now we have a bandit camp here and here. Um, 
Okay. Bang mango? No. I have not tried... I've only tried the cotton candy bang so far. Back to lurking and still committing tax fraud? I hate you. <laughs> How are we supposed to support the social services of chatters? Put a family to the Woodcutter's Lodge. We have a new family that moved in. Let's go. Running out of fuel? No, we're not. I just started the Woodcutter. We're getting there. Chad, I have 1,666 followers on Twitch right now. Let's go. 166. Six. Forgot the last one. <laughs> we tried the cotton candy. I liked the cotton candy a lot. I love artificial cotton candy. Uh, Rambler Sparkling Energy, Peach Rockstar, Exdurance, um, Mango Bango, Jocko Go? Black Cherry Vanilla? I've never heard of that last one. I just kind of buy... I just, like, go to the store, and if I, there's one I haven't tried before, I, like, buy it. Like, I just, like, I look at all of them, and I just grab one. It's usually my go-to <laughs> on how I get them. Okay, so we got the church. Settlement level increase because we got the last house. Let's go. Okay. Specialize your region. After you reach the next settlement level, you'll be granted a development point to spend. Unlock development branches and policies. Blah, 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 blah. There's going to be a production tree too, but I don't know how to do that yet. Um, okay. So here we are. In order to get to the next one, we need two level two buildings. Uh, I think I'm going to commit to the heavy plow potentially. Um, we could also do basic armoring. But um, I'm kind of looking to skirt by in terms of combat for a little while. Um, I think building our settlement, like, it, rather than going on the assault, is going to be a little bit better for us. Um... That was the amount of meat harvested by hunters and butchers. Oh my god. Wait, we have goats? I didn't know that. Um, okay. Yeah, I really want to go with heavy plow. Oh, J15 loves her goats. New message. Oh, dear. A strong militia is paramount to the survival of the settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived, and you'll now be able to create your first militia banners. However, we will need more weapons to equip all the people the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. All right. I don't, I don't know where the shipment is, but... Hopefully somebody will go and grab those.
Thermo Neon Blast. Do these names sound like they're just cancer cans? Crazy wind. I saw we're under a wind advisory until like, I think it's supposed to go until five and then kind of slow down. Let me look. Oh, wow. That's actually crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, around, around six, it'll start calming down, but it'll still be pretty strong. Gusts of 30 tonight. Tomorrow around 8 p.m. will be really calm. Wow. Monday's going to be like no wind. That's crazy. Tuesday back up again. Yeah. Um, we have two years before they'll actually, like, attack us, attack us. So, we have, like, a little bit of time. I think I'm going to put the tavern right here. Okay. What else do we like? Okay. I need to like sit back and think for a second. I think we should start to do some of the fields, maybe start planning more of those out. Um, see, it does not like this. It does not want to put a field here at all. I don't get it. I don't know why. What um? What's freaking out with it? What part of this is? Yeah, it doesn't like that either. Is it that road then? So if we go up to here and we go to here into here, that's fine. So it's this road right here that's causing some issue. Zoa white peach. I've had Zoa before, but I can't remember what it tastes like for the life of me. All right, let's just see if the pathing was just like bugged on this. Nope, it's still like fucky wucky. What part of this is the problem? Is it just too big, maybe? Is two Morgans just too big? I mean, if that's the case, that's the case. You know, that's not that bad. That's not that big a deal.
Need more F tiers? Yeah. We do, actually. <laughs> Unironically, we do. No, it does not like this corner. I think it's this corner right here. I don't want it to... I don't want it to do that. Yeah, that's the problem. Is it's going to try to, like, snap to roads. And I, I don't know how to get it to stop snapping to this corner. Um, We could delete the road. Or something. Maybe if it goes up like this... It won't be as bad. Nope. It's still, it just doesn't, there's something, there's something going on here. It's kind of fishy. What? <sighs> okay, I just can't have it go to that road, I guess. That's fine, I guess. We just won't have it, like, border this. This is one of the pre-built roads. Maybe it has something to do with that. I don't know. I just want to clarify here. So we have this one, second season, this one, first season, this one, third season. No, I'm out of lurk. Yeah, you only get three lurks. There's a limit to your taxes. All right, so we got flax here. Flax two, flax. Okay, this this needs to be flax one. That or wait, which one's got better flax stats? This one does. Okay, so this is. Flax one. Third year wheat. Yeah, then follow. And then this one's going to be a barley then. Or wait, should we switch some of these around? No, definitely not. This has got to be a barley field. So then barley year one. Okay, let's see. So we got wheat two, wheat one, wheat three, wheat three. So this can be wheat two or wheat three. Okay. What do we have? Barley one. So this needs to be barley two, probably then. Follow one, barley two, wheat three, or wheat two. Sorry. Do barley three. All right, let me just see. So I'm trying to like make it so it's balanced. So like every season we have two wheat fields growing is kind of like the idea. So um, this is wheat two. So wheat one, wheat two, wheat three. And then this is wheat three, wheat two. This has to, we have to do a wheat one here. Then. Yeah, see, I don't want you doing that. Oh, dear. Well, you know what? Fuck it. Maybe this will actually, like, work well. Nope. I think it's too big. I think they just, like, the game doesn't want you building farm fields that big. I think that's all it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, buddy, I wish, yeah. <laughs> Alright. So this needs to be a wheat one. Which is fine. And then this has to be a barley feed. Well, what the hell? What years do we have barley? Barley one. Okay, so then this is... Fallow barley two. And then... Let me go back to flax. So what do we got? Flax two. So this needs to be flax one. Fallow two. Now I'm a little confused. I'm, I might have done this wrong. I'm going to start. I'm going to start over. I'm going to start over. I don't think my brain's working properly today. We're just going to, we're going to set everything to be fallow. Except for wheat. Yep, we're just going to start over. Okay, all right. Wheat, season one. Wheat, season two. Wheat, season three. Okay. Wheat, season one. Wheat, season two. Wheat, season three. Okay. All right. Um, now we have to figure out which fields have the, the best ratio for stuff. So that's, this is a flax field for sure. One of these has to be a barley field though. This is the barley field then. Okay. I think maybe this side should just be barley and this side should just be flax maybe. That would make things easy. So barley. Barley three and barley two. And then this needs to be flax one, one, flax one. Okay. So we should have two threes, two, that's one, one, and then one, and then, yep. Perfect. Okay. That's perfect. Yep. There's our crop fields. Okay. Good. We're all done. <laughs> Everything's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh. That was mentally draining. I'm gonna need another energy drink after that one. All right, I'm gonna do the stone cutters so that way they can like get rid of all the stone deposit here. Dude, how does it? Like, I, do, I, do, I don't understand how they're doing it. God, dude, this game's so pretty. Look at our little village. Look how easy it built itself. Look how good everyone looks. Look at this guy. He's like hauling rocks. He's a stone cutter. He's hauling rocks.
Winter is approaching. Winter is coming. We're good. We'll make it through winter. We have plenty of wood. A new family's moved in. Family members have joined one of the settlers. Let's go. Um, I need the storehouse to have a permanent worker. Is there any other buildings I want to build, like, in town directly? I don't know that there is. Um, Because right here, that makes me feel like I should just build houses here. We got the tavern. We got the church. Grave pit goes outside of town. All the other buildings I feel like should go elsewhere. The industrial buildings will all get placed where they need to go. Maybe the malt house? No, no, because that'll go somewhere. Yeah, no, that'll go over by the granary. Uh, yeah, the no. No, that's all going to go over there. Yeah, no, I feel like this should just be like town shit. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this fucked up lot. <laughs> See, this is like pretty normal, but then if you go this way, it's like Oh no, it's that's actually pretty normal. I could do it like that. That would make probably the most sense. I really wanted to do it this way. Maybe maybe we should do it like this. Yeah, it's gonna do two then. Yeah, it doesn't know how to zone that properly. Hmm. What is this? The saw pit? What if we moved the saw pit? What if we moved it? What if? I think we move it. Why won't it? S oh, because I don't have snap to roads on. I'm going to put it right there. We're going to move it. Yep. And then I'm going to get rid of the roads. That way it's just like a block and it's easier to build homes in. Yeah, it's good with me. There is, like, still a grid. I don't think, like, I. Th it's obviously, like, there is, like, some procedural generation, but, like, you can't just, like, freely place it wherever you want on the roads. Like, the road is still broken up into a grid. Like, there's still nodes on the road, right? So I can only place this in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fixed spots. So it still does have, like, zoning, but the zoning is, like, a lot more shapeable. Maybe that's, like, the best way to, like, look and think about it. Is that, like, it? it's it's more shapeable grids. It's not fully modular. But it's really close. Oh, here's winter. Winter's coming.
God damn it, dude. Yeah, they stole the meat from the granary. I don't get how to get them to like exist in the militia because we have See, we have spears and shields. Maybe... Oh, wait, we have spears and shields. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, okay, we have spear militia. Got it. Okay, and then... Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. All right, now we actually have a functioning militia. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes more sense then. Hey guys, it's Kodiak, your lord here. Yeah, um, listen, uh, you guys are gonna, like, need to fucking move these supplies that are chilling here real fast, because I'm, uh, I don't want them there, and I, I need them gone. Fuck it, let's upgrade them. Hey guys, it's me, Lord Kodiak. How's it going? Yep. Well, that's the that's that's the name of the the emote. Sean is Kodiak Lord. <laughs> I'm out of lurker taxes. Yeah, dude, you guys gotta be conservative on those. Listen, I only had to put a limit on there because of TDW, so you can blame him for that. Dude, I love just, like, walking around. Look at our little village. It's coming together, huh? It's coming together, isn't it? Isn't it Bartholomew? <laughs> isn't it? Burn the house. That'll warm me. Oh, back bay. Uh, we do need a livestock trading building. I like putting that over by the granary and stuff, so I just need to find a good spot for it. Um, where is that going to be under trade? Livestock trade. I still haven't mined all that shit. Okay, all right, let's put it right there then.
Actually, I'm going to put that back down on the medium. And then I'm going to put that and that down to low. Oh, good. They're actually grabbing those planks. Good, okay, they grabbed all the planks. Grab the grab these, dude. Just grab this timber. <laughs> Why? Never mind, don't cut down trees anymore. You have to use up these supplies. I'm sick of it. I'm going to start just throwing families at this farmhouse so we can get these fields plowed up. Okay, the storehouse is built. Granary's next. God damn it. They stole all my fuel! Oh, these sons of bitches, dude. Do we have plenty of supplies? Oh no, they stole it all. <sighs> A new bandit camp? Oh boy. It's in the center area. Okay. Oh boy, we got a new message. We received reports of a band of raiders roaming nearby lands. Should we track their steps? Um... Track their movements. Prepare for the attack. Ooh, raiders are near. Prepare for the attack. Okay. In one year from today, another ruler's army was sighted. Uh-oh. But they they can't... They won't come in and attack me. I don't think. I don't think that's how that works. I think I turned that off. I turned off that setting, so they shouldn't... They shouldn't attack us. I, only I can attack the, the Lord. I'm gonna put the tannery in town. Put it next to the put it next to the tavern. Let's we'll reply on the fields, folks.
I think a lot of our issue is surrounded by the... Yeah, okay, there we go. What? Oh, shit, they're attacking the uh, bandits. They cleared out the bandits. They might take this central area then. I know that they can, um, they can take up to three of the areas. Um, do we have a trading post yet? We don't have a trading post. We need to build a trading post as well. I also want to move the stable location. I don't really like where it's at. I think I want to put it on the corner here. Yeah. I don't know if that's going to do anything, but I kind of want it there instead. There we go. Let's try that. I've been thinking this for a while. What if Manor Lords was the successor to CS Skylines 2? Like CS1 was to The Sims or something? Anyways, great stream. <laughs> that definitely is not the case. Because you'll never get like modern stuff. Like it'll, it'll take so long for um, like a modder to create such detailed nice assets that are like more modern so it'll never be a true six like it'll never truly take it you know what i mean like the theme like the theme in the era will always be like um a fixed focal point of this game that it'll never be able to like compete with at the same level of of cities with if that makes sense Um, also, hi, Chair. How are you? Uh, what should I spend slash save for the Kodiak coins? Do you mean, like, the, uh, the ones where you type exclamation point points or the ones below the stream that you pay for your lurker tax? Because they're, they're are, they are different. Will they go buy me the the oxes? How many? How do I see how much livestock I have? Where is that option at? Yeah, it says I only have one. I definitely bought a second one. At one point, we spent the 20 gold on one. So where is it? Hmm. Okay, we need a regular trading post. I'm going to put it right here next to the well. Yeah. Oh, no, that didn't work. Um. Okay, demolish. Yes, demolish. Okay. There we go.
Make a Minecraft tree pack. Old growth redwoods. Like a Minecraft mod. Lurker tax points. Um, I, you can spend those on anything. Like, there's the green screen alerts in there, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Those ones aren't like worth saving, <laughs> unless there's something you see that seems worth it. It's they're not. They're not that. They're not that. Those ones aren't that valuable. It's trees people can use in mods. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, they took their armies back. I guess. It's like they own these territories, but they're not building in them. They also cleared out this bandit camp. Oh my god, are they killing all the bandits? Oh my god, wait, they their 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 armies have names. This is the Brotherhood of the Forest. This is the Ravenous Vultures. Oh my god. You can see their range that they can arrow from. So what are they are they trying are they gonna go try to take out the bandits? Did they already do it, maybe? Interesting. I don't know. Now I'm scared. Yep, that's the one. That's the army. What are they doing? Are they just leaving the area? Maybe they're just, like, walking in a straight line. Well, I just yawned and it was the cutest thing ever. Um, how do I start raids? Raid for stream? What? I don't know what you mean by that. I think it's a good spot. I think it's a good spot for it. I don't want to force those deer to like migrate. Um, okay. Yeah, let's get that trading post built. That way I can start, like, selling stuff. Let's also get the tannery built. Alright, two families doing construction. Okay. I'm gonna assign one family to just work the ox. 
So I have one family doing construction. I think that's okay. Um, yeah, I have room for three more families right now, so that's fine. And then once we build these, we'll have more too. Oh, right. I actually want to put these at a higher priority. Yeah. Build those first, please. Good. Yes, yes. Use these supplies. Yes, yes. Good, good, good. Participate in a wait. Uh, it says, "How do you earn Kodiak coins?" Participate in a raid. Oh, so when I when I raid at the end of my stream and I ra send you guys to someone else, if you guys like actively are in chat when that happens, you get channel points. Probably want to go outside here in a minute, don't you? All right, we got the trading post set. Let's go in here. We want to assign one family to work on trading, and we need to start selling stuff. Um, I think the best thing for us to sell is probably what's a re like a reusable resource that we're getting a lot of um probably are do we have anybody set to work at the saw pit we do okay all right yeah okay we cleared that whole area let's make sure somebody's assigned to that unassign them from the saw pit and then Oh my god, I just realized we don't have anybody assigned to Forager's Hut at all. And we haven't for a while. <laughs> Whoops. I was like, why don't we have any herbs? Okay. All right. We got it. We're getting in a new family. It's June now. Okay. We should get a new family that moves in here in a minute. I think. Maybe they already moved in. We have to wait another little while. Oh, wait, we can we can do level 2 homes over here. Yes, okay. Give us the two level 2 homes here. Perfect. Okay, so once we get the level 2, we can start like doing the like advanced production stuff. New family moved in. Perfect. I'm going to export berries just so we can make some money. I only want to hold on to 100 berries at one time. Let's do that.
And let's see, what else do we want? Let's let's also sell planks. So I want to export planks. And I only want to hold on to 20 planks at any given time. Um, and then once we have another household, we'll add them to the saw pit. Yeah. Are you in the finals discord? Yeah, I am. Why do you ask? Okay, Molly needs to go outside. She's begging me. All right, let's overwrite save four here. We can rename it? Oh, okay. Let's do, um, we'll call this one the Twitch one. Um, and then I'm going to rename this one, uh, first, and then this is second and then old. There we go. Nice. Cool. Okay. I'm going to give you guys words on stream. I will be uh, back. I did look up Thermo, Thermo Neon and I've seen this in store. This one's the one that's got like crazy amounts of like nutrients in it, right? I think that's what that one is. Um, Let me go back. I'm going to try to play the soundtrack again for the game. And then it'll fall into master plan music after that. So hold on, let me add to Q, add to Q, add to Q. All right, cool. I'll be back. Thank you. 
am back sorry i had to take my like i have to take this off to use the bathroom so <laughs> 
took takes a minute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, let's dive back in, shall we? We got to prepare for war. <laughs> War is coming. I have to figure out why the stable's bugged, too, because I definitely bought an ox at some point. It never gave me it. I could do like two homes here. Oh my god. Why was that so loud? Spider, thank you for paying alert tax points to search their support chatters. Oh my god, I don't know why that scared the shit out of me. Yeah, we could do. Oh, settlement level increase because we upgraded those homes. Let's go. Woo! Just won't let me log in. Unlucky. GG, go next. Pot's too small. Okay. Well, can we go like this then? What is it? Is it really too small if we go from here to like here? And we rotate it? No. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you don't get a yard though. Mm. If we go, if we go from here to here though, do we get a yard? We don't get a yard that way either. So I feel like we have to go like this. Yeah, and then that whole back part's gonna have to be a yard. Well, this is the back side of the tavern. We could do an orchard once we unlock that there. Yeah, that'll be kind of cool. I think that'll be nice. Or that could be the orchard. I feel like that's too much space in the front. We get an extra house, but we get less backyard space. I want the big backyard. Yeah, let's do it. Mm -mm 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 <sighs> Alright, we're starting to make money too at the trading post. Let's go. We need more people to move in. And then we're gonna I'm gonna start buying um weapons to get our army up to 36. Oh my god, I just realized I left my phone in my pocket. Unzip. Ugh! There we go. Woo!
Yeah, this will be a cool lot, actually. I'm really excited for that one. I'm gonna upgrade that one. This is gonna be like, this might be the first tier three home that we upgrade. Cause this is like a cool, unique size. Yeah, I know, I can hire mercenaries. I don't think I need them. Do we, do we clear the stone? Yes, and okay, all right, we can destroy this then. Perfect. We do still have these two logs, but we'll get rid of them at some point. Ah, oh, no, we have to get rid of them before we build the road. No, I wanted to connect up here. Then we can like fully build in here. All right, did we unassign anybody from stuff? Yeah, the logging camp was unassigned, but we got that we got that set back again. Forester's hut, the woodcutters. Saw pit needs another person. Storehouse has somebody assigned. The tannery has someone assigned. Um, Tavern doesn't have anybody yet. We need like an excess of people so we can start um, doing the like upgrades in the backyard. Okay, so we assigned that one. That one, we got that there. See, this is what the uh, flax was supposed to look like before, chat. When it was just that brown, dirty field, it's, it's supposed to have these blue flowers. But it was because it was so low in like fertility, it was not it was not growing at all. Yeah, it's at twenty six percent grown. Yeah, that's beautiful. Love that. So we got two fields of wheat every season, and then we have one wheat field of barley and one field of flax. So we do have public order. Interesting. Okay. We have a lack of administration buildings. That's okay. We're okay for that for right now. Um, we could start getting iron out of the ground, but I I, I don't really want to start doing that yet. Um, let's do our skill point. We can do fertilization, um, which allows us to now use these fallow fields as um, pastures. Which is good. Yeah, fence it up. So we just we just have to add fences to every single one of these fields, and then each one of the fields becomes a pasture. Yeah, when they're not being utilized. Which is perfect. Um 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay, so we need to make sure we have at least 30 planks. At all times, not 20. Yeah, let's set that to be 30. There we go. Cool, there's our cool new lot. Yeah, I kind of want this one to be an apple orchard because it's big. Like, you could say that, like, they're growing the apples to make, like, meat or something. Or some hard cider. All right, how do we get to the next level? We have to get to... Oh, we just need three lots? Okay. One. We'll do this row. Two. Three. 
to... Ooh, requirements not met. What do you still need? Food supply? Interesting. There is definitely two types of food in the marketplace, so I don't know why you guys didn't grab two types of food yet. You guys are literally the berry gatherers, too. What the heck? I guess we could do this one. There we go. Get those upgraded. I like how they cut through here. I wish we could put a path through there. Let's look at the five. We won't do the extension on these ones. Requirements not met. What? The bridge plot caused causes a loss of approval. Check the building's panel for details. Is it because you guys don't have fuel right now? We'll go get it. Why is that my problem? Can I buy another cow now? Can't import cheap yet. We need to like start. Imp we need to start um fencing up these farm fields. Who are you? Who is this guy? What are you? You're oh, you're a traitor. Oh, okay, all right, cool. All right. Add one family to work there. All right. Do we need anything else? Do, does somebody need to be assigned anywhere? Or do we have someone assigned to like almost everything at this point? I think we have somebody assigned to almost everything at this point. Um, and we can afford to do those now as well, which is good. Um, hold on. I want to look at that. Yeah, the help screen really quickly. So buildings. So the backyards. <sighs> oh, 
Okay, upgrades. Mm -hmm. Chicken coop. I wanted to see what the game explicitly says about backyards. Expand living space? Maybe this is it. No. Um. I don't see anything about the yard. Yeah, I just don't see anything about the yards, which kind of sucks. Is it called garden instead of yard? That's a that's a great that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Let me look. I don't think so. I didn't see anything related to that. Oh, we'll start from the bottom and go up. Uh, done. No, no, no. no, no, no. Destroyed for no. It's not any of these. I know what all of these are. I want to see like explicitly what it says about it because I, I actually don't know if every resource in the game benefits from being in larger backyards. What are you what are you talking about, potato? We did an energy drink review at the start of the stream. I don't see anything. These are all resources. It's not going to be in here. A dead body. <laughs> so unless it's an upgrade. So let's look. Extensions? Oh, you know what? They're probably called extensions. But I don't, I don't see extension anywhere either. Like, I see the name, like, bakery extension. And, like, chicken coop. But, like, it doesn't... It doesn't give me the description I'm looking for. Yeah, you can. No, you totally can. Yep, that's exactly how that works. But I'm trying... What I'm trying to figure out is that... Um, so, right here. Um... When you go into here, oh, it doesn't explain it the way I thought it did. 
I could have swore there's a different way that this is explained. So you can unlock apple orchards, for example, and like then they'll grow apples in the backyards. Um, when they grow apples in the backyards, depending on the size of the yard means the amount of trees they have, which means more apples that are grown, right? Um, I don't know if increasing the size of the backyard makes them have more chickens, thus having more eggs. The energy drink you bought midstream? I didn't buy an energy drink midstream. What are you talking about? I got you. Great question. Yeah, I, that's what I'm curious about. I don't know if every single upgrade provides more resources because, like, let's say you have this huge backyard and you put the brewery extension. I don't think that necessarily means that you're brewing at a better capacity or faster or more than if you were brewing in a smaller backyard. I don't I don't think that's how that works. Um, maybe I'm wrong. I don't, I, there's no way to, there's no way to tell, um, right now. So, okay, wait, 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 maybe it doesn't. You know what? I don't think it does. I don't think it does because the vegetable garden explicitly states yields depend on plot size. None of the other ones do. Didn't you leave stream for a bit when we played the word game? Yeah, that was to let my dog outside. Oh, wait, shit. I have to buy something for my wife. She needs something for her um, surgery prep stuff that we can only get on Amazon. So I need to like purchase it. Hold on. Um. So I am buying something right now, but it's not. <laughs> No, I just went upstairs and used the bathroom and let my dog outside. That's why I got up. No, Amazon, I don't want to buy an Intel processor. <laughs> yes, I would like I would like free delivery tomorrow, please just to be on the safe side because she needs that before her surgery. Well, actually, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do it tomorrow. It's free. doesn't matter. Order place, no worries. We'll get that tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I just Googled it. I just looked it up because I was like, what is that? That sounds familiar. Okay. Um... So I'm thinking about doing chickens in the backyards of some of the homes, like maybe on this row right here. I'm trying no credit taken. Yeah. 
There's another rock star that's on my list. There's two. There's there's that one because we I saw that one before and I was somebody suggested that one before. It might have been you. Um, somebody suggested it before. And then there's a a green apple one that Christabel recommended at one point that we need to try as well. That I've actually been on. I've been on the hunt for that green apple one. I want to try that. Or pear. Was it pear or green apple? I think it was pear. I don't remember. It was one of the two. Yeah, I think part of me wants... No, oh, wait, we need to save money for a sheep, right? Wait, what? we're buying something. Hold on. I know we need to buy weapons. Let's let's get the weapons bought. Let's let's worry about that first, maybe. Well, actually, you know what? Let's do the hold on. I have a better idea. We're gonna import. No, we can't import the sheep yet because we haven't built all the fences. Never mind. That's right. Okay. We're back on track, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, weapons. Um Yeah, spears and shields. Okay, that's what we need. Trade. Weapons. Route required. Oh. Never mind. I'm going to try to make it myself then. Fuck that. Okay. Start cranking out some planks. They have a new bandit camp? Oh, it's north. Okay, that's that's way too far away from us. That's their problem. <laughs> I could save up and buy another ox in three days. I kind of want to do that. Another ruler's army was sighted. Did they bring in more soldiers? Yeah. It seems like they bring in soldiers whenever there's a second camp of raiders, just to clear it. Mm. All right, let's get another ox. Okay, now we have three ox. Perfect. Nice. Okay. Potato, why are we yelling? Oops, caps. Okay, all right. Uh, I did when it came out. I really like the vibe of the finals. I wish that they would maybe start investing in, like, esports because I feel like I would probably be more invested and, like, more interested in it. Noises! Um, if they had, like, an esports league for it. Um... But, I don't know. I've, like, found myself less interested in playing fast-paced shooters lately. Mostly because I see video games as, like, content now. So, like, if I don't feel like I can make good content from the game, I don't, like, want to play it anymore. Um, like, I have a hard time playing. Oh, my God. That scared the fuck out of me. Holy shit, that's loud at these earbuds. Dear Lord. Oh, God. <laughs> Jesus. Um Yeah, like Overwatch. I uh yeah. What was I saying?
Games is content. Yeah, sorry. Games is content. I, if I can't make content out of the game, I don't want to like really play it. Like I can't really play games out of streaming, really. Like I, I just I feel like I'm wasting my time almost, um, which sucks in a lot of regards because like I can't play the games that I used to like anymore, um, like like stuff like that. A lot of that has to come down with like a lot of that comes down to like I don't feel like I've built a community or that around those games. And it's really hard to mix a community like City Skylines, for example, with like a fast paced shooter like that. That's really chaotic. And I cannot, um, I think we've kind of built a community that is built heavily on community interaction, right? Like a lot of it is based on me interacting with you guys and reading chat. Um, I can't do that when I play games like that. My brain's like fucking, you know, um, So, what do I want to unlock? Oh, hold on. I have a list. I want to I want to do a wish list video for Manor Lords at some point of like things that um um of like things I want added to the game. And I just thought of one. Uh So, yeah, I have, like, a hard time playing the finals. I love the finals, though. I think it's a great first-person shooter. Um, All right, you guys are on the brewery extension. You know, kind of not taking the Lord serious. And I walked over to him and I went, bam! I punched him in the chest as hard as I, I crumpled the kid. I just crumpled. Blue Highway, welcome in. Yo, this guy still streams? Yeah, dude, I do. I missed it. Oh, I'll be back Monday too, but then I'll be gone again. <laughs> well, my wife has surgery. <laughs> Her fucking surgery, like, arrival time is, like, 5.30 in the fucking morning, dude. <sighs> I'm on fucking West Coast time over here, and they want me to get up at 5.30 in the- Well, they want me to be there at 5.30 East Coast time. I had to quit today? What? Why? You don't seem as traumatized as I want you to be. Something is suspicious. Oh, because I already cried for over an hour? Why did you have to quit?
I, I have a feeling we're going to be waiting a while potentially for his response. So we'll see. I have a feeling there's a long story here. This cannot be simple. Okay, let's put that back up to medium now. Few students who, uh, few students I had some trouble with, but thought I was making progress with on made an official complaint about me. I spoke to the union rep and principal and they both agreed it would be better for everyone if I quit instead of going through the process of possibly getting fired and having something in my file. What the fuck? I didn't know you had like issues with any of those students. Them kids, bro. Actually, fuck them, kids. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah, so I'm back to being unemployed. Dude, that sucks, Blue Highway. That sucks so fucking bad, dude. I'm sorry. Principal even said you need to call us back when those kids graduate. I mean, okay, so here's the deal though, right? That was probably your favorite teaching job you've ever had i'm guessing right if that's your favorite and then like the boss like the principal is even saying like i want you back when you can come back that i mean like i think in the short term that's gonna fucking suck but like i mean like obviously but like as long as like that staff is still there to like vouch for you like that's I mean, like, you know, oh, fucked. How long do they have to graduate? You clearly have like an in back in at some point if you like can. Do you know what I mean? So hard. To be a teacher, not yeah, dude. My wife used to work at a school as a therapist, and like it was a <laughs> fucking while. I had to lie to both the D and D groups and make up something up, so uh, I I feel like such a fucking fraud. I mean, like, I'm just drawing paths at this point. <laughs> Making me high school. That's crazy, dude. I didn't, like, it seemed like, uh, I didn't know that, like, any of the kids, like, had, like, problems with you or anything like that. That fucking blows. We'll check in on you, Blue Highway. Don't worry.
Oh, wait, they built the fence on this field. I forgot to pay my lurker tax, dude. Everyone is. It's okay. I think here's here's a bright side. Here's the, I know it's it's like you know shitty short term, right? I don't know what your other like if there's like other issues like obviously surrounding this, but like here's the bright side, right? It seems like that principal really liked you. If they're like, please call us back as soon as those kids are gone. Um, like that a means you have an in back in at some point, right? Um, the staff really liked you. You have lots of kids that really liked you. Okay. And then on top of that, that's a phenomenal reference. If they want you to come back, they're going to give you a good reference. Obviously, if you go somewhere else. I need to upgrade the church at some point. But we don't have... Oh, we need to do clay. Shit. Totally forgot about clay. I should delete this road. I need to stop doing that, replacing it. Um. Change my name in here. I'm potato. Good. Yes, Blue Highway. What everyone else said. Uh, this is your community too. I don't know, just saying stuff. Anyways, uh, there's is there pollution in this game? There, there is like smell, but I don't think it's fully implemented. Um, like I think if I go into here, there's like a smell, but I don't, I don't think there is like smell yet. It does say work in progress. So I don't, I don't think that it's like there yet, basically. Mm, 
I'm trying to figure out, like, if I want to place another well somewhere. There was no such thing as pollution. It literally didn't exist, so smell makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, the most pollution you would get is, like, shit. And, like, bad hygiene. Okay, we finished the windmill. Do we have anything in the granary yet? They're harvesting right now, okay. We replace 200 elementary schools and you get like 10 pupils to join. Oh shit. Wait, so if I leave stuff out in the, like, they're, what? So as I'm harvesting, if it's raining, it'll immediately start going bad. What the heck? That's so fucked. <laughs> This will be here more often for streams. Well, you'll also have more time to work on your master's stuff, too. So you can kind of complete that at your leisure now, which has got to be a little comforting. I guess I'm going to finish Baldur's Gate 3. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's the perfect yes. That's the perfect game to dive into. Okay, we got 150 days. Until war. Okay, we need to make shields. So, joiner's workshop is next. Oh, shit. That was two families worth. Uh-oh. Okay, wait. Back up. We do not need anybody working at the livestock trader right now. I forget that these lots are like two families worth. <laughs> Resident Evil 4 Baldur's Gate 3 might make me think about uh, my players too much. Okay, well, you know. We still have the skill point. Shit, we never spent it. That's what we were doing. Um. Hmm. No, but I really want to. I'm catching up to Alex's total level in RuneScape. <laughs> money into a gaming computer <laughs> yeah dude fuck being fit <laughs> I 
Listen, all you list. Okay, here's straight up, straight up. Cloud gaming in games like this, feasible. GeForce now. It's not bad for games like this. Now, in City's case, you won't be able to download mods, but... You know... I've not, but the reviews seem really good. I have not seen somebody say something negative about it. I think Tam said the new Fallout show was good. Yeah, he did. I'm pretty sure he did. First episode was tremendous. I heard Walter Goggins carries the show. But, like, not in, like, a bad way. But just, like, he is, like, the best character by far. I don't think it's very good for a casual watcher who doesn't know the game, though. It's too much bouncing around, IMO. Oh, okay. My home gym's pretty sick. I'm waiting for the 50 series to come out to redo my entire computer so I can fully run CS2. <laughs> I'm curious to see what the 50 series is, uh, you know, really going to have. Goggins carries any show. True. Baby Billy is like... On Righteous Gemstones is such a fucking good character. He's so good in that show. <laughs> He's so good. <laughs> um, True, the new episodes uh, makes a lot of assumptions about the audience. Oh, does it? So it doesn't, like, provide you, like, enough context? I don't think it'll get as good of a review as The Last of Us or a casual TV watcher. Now, to be fair, though... Fallout, while being like a, a like a drama, it's also like a, um, like it's also kind of like a comedy in a like in a way, right? Like it's it's silly, it's bombastic. You know, it is Fallout, and I don't think that resonates as well with the general audience compared to like a dark, gritty uh, to drama. Be uh, to be fair. To be fair. Great show. Um. Like I think I think it just resonates better with the general audience, just like a generic survival zombie drama. I heard the Fallout show takes place a few centuries after the original Fallout. Yeah, it takes place seven years after Fallout 4, I think. I think is what it, it's supposed to do. So it's seven years after Fallout 4 or something, like pretty close to the Fallout 4 time period. Um, but it's on the West Coast, obviously. Never played a Fallout game except for Fallout Shelter because I worked on the multiplayer mobile version of it. You did? The NA adaptation. If you don't know the game, the show won't make much sense. My partner never played a second of the game and was lost about one episode in. Oh, okay. So it's a show made for people who like have played it, basically, which kind of sucks, I guess. Um, I'm not even sure it's out yet. I worked on documentation. Wait, so is it like an update for Shelter? I only played a little Fallout 3, read all 6,200 or 60. What the fuck? 620,000 words of Fallout Equestria, though? Is that a My Little Pony Fallout fanfic, J15? Of course you did. Oh, my goodness. Of 
course you did. <laughs> Uses a stim pack early on and it's unexplained what it is. Oh, got it. Damn. Dropping balls. Um. Okay, we need to figure out what I want to spend the skill point on, guys. I'm thinking. Getting access to deep mining would be good, but also sheep breeding. Like, I, f I feel like I want to do sheep breeding and deep mining, but I don't know which way to go first. I think sheep breeding. We're going with it. Yeah, doing it. Okay. Now we only need, like, a couple sheep, and we should be fine. Okay, we need to upgrade all of these fields now. How many How many uh planks do we have? Okay, we have enough. Boom. 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 There we go. Okay, all the planks have been allocated. Now we can get now we can get sheep. After those get built. Big punch. I'm kind of okay with that. Scotsman all over will love you. <laughs> Freeform text responses to the NPCs and they respond. There is a game that's like that, but it's like very bare bones. There's also like like AI dungeon, which is like AI text response stuff. So it's like a it's like a the like typing games, you know. Oh shit, it did the thing. That company was hired by Bethesda and Microsoft to do the NA version of the Chinese game Fallout Shelter Online. Yeah, that's what was confusing me because I was like, wait, that's like a different game. Okay, so we got a brewery and then we got a joiner shop. And so they're going to make shields at this place. And then I don't know how to. Oh, we can tell them what to make. Okay. Yeah. I want you guys to make wooden shield. Yeah. I want you guys to make those. Yeah. Please make those. Thank you. Um, We don't need two of you. And then, uh, yeah, so then we need a blacksmith workshop here. Yep. That's totally fine. Um, I don't think we need the, um, well, we do need the trading post person. They're already queued out. Okay. All right. Might've been, might've jumped the gun on that. We'll wait. I still, I played Shelter still to understand the mechanics of the online one. Oh, okay. I liked, I liked Fallout Shelter when it first came out. That was, you know what? Fallout Shelter came out the first time I came to Grand Rapids. I was visiting Taylor's aunt. Um, and, uh, the E3 was going on and I was like watching it on my phone wherever we went. I was like not paying attention to anything we were doing <laughs> the entire time we were down here. <laughs> And, uh, I saw, f like, I, you know, I saw the whole thing with Fallout Shelter, and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna download this game. 
And then I played it like religiously for quite a while. Triton! This game, wait, looks nice. CS2 update is crazy. Dude, yeah, you, know, you, you like this new mod? This puts ELT to shame, right? <laughs> All in one. <laughs> Doesn't work with find it, sadly, though. The visual fidelity of this game is crazy, guys. Like, it's just... It's fucking beautiful. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. You have 69 residents? Nice, dude. Hey, did you guys see that they're doing, like, a Caterpie day? Or no, it's a Bellsprout day. Bellsprout day in Pokemon Go on 420, and Bellsprout's Pokedex number is 69. Yeah, we don't move it. Okay. We need to build, um... Wait, the time... Oh, wait, no, no, the time for the Raiders is still going down. Okay, we need to build a Bloomery and then a Smithy, I think, right? Or wait, what do you... How do they work? So they can make tools or they can make... Si ah, okay, okay, okay. So we need these guys to make spears. Um, Which means we need somebody working at the mining pit and then we need to have a Bloomery... Which is going to have to go... I'm going to place it there. Yeah. Get that shit built. I want to assign a, a livestock to work for this place. Yeah, there we go. So now they can do. Uh, they'll bring a. They'll bring a cow in here, and the cow will um, do the plowing for them when they need it. Um. Wow, you guys are going fucking big gambas over here. Okay, what's going on? Oh my god. Oh my god. It's just losing. Oh wait, it's the 69. Yeah, it's the 69. Yeah, it's the 60. Yep. Yep. Yeah, sorry. That's the cheat code. Yeah. Oh my god, Paul, no. Stocks damaged by weather? Ah, shit. Yeah, I really need to, like, keep... I need to assign more families to work over here. Yes. Triton won. It's only six... Dude, what the fuck? Okay, all right, now it's Gamble 10. Dude. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Wait, 69 is always win? I mean, you won twice with it. Wait, no. Okay. Okay, all right. And then immediately someone lost with it. Okay, all right. Well, we tried. We tried. 
Way to ruin it, guys. Yeah. We need a route. That's so fucking... That's crazy. Oh, because it's considered a major trade? Why is it considered a major trade? Can you do... Interesting. Okay. Since it's a major trade, the trade route is required first. Huh. All right. I didn't know you guys could duel without gambling points. I don't know that we've ever tried that before. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, dude. I. This is like my favorite way to build these windmills. I mean, like, not that there's, like, other ways to do it, but I just, I think it's fucking adorable <laughs> to put the windmill in the center here and make a circle and then have the thing go around it. I love that. That's a great question, Christabel. I don't have an answer. <laughs> I have no idea. I actually don't know tonight because I, I, I wasn't sure how long I'd be streaming um, this game for. So I did not uh, plan ahead. Pork chops, same as every Friday, right? Yeah, I forgot about that. Your, your dad's favorite, if I remember correctly. I did buy, oh, Sam's Club had pupusas. So when I went to Sam's Club yesterday, I had to I had to pick them up. I had to try them. They were good. Those were some good fucking pupusas. McDonald's for free fry Friday? Free fry Friday? For free? What do you elaborate here? Every Friday with the app, you get a medium fry with every dollar with a dollar purchase. Oh, what the heck? Okay, all right. Is my army growing? My army's growing! Let's go! We have to be mindful about the iron resource, though. We need to get the town leveled up. Has, has, has Time at Roulette gotten anyone yet? Large soda for $1.49 along with BOGO McDoubles. Whole meal for six bucks. Nice, dude. I don't like McDonald's burgers. I don't like them. I only get the nugs or a chicken sandwich sometimes. Not a terrible take, me either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, Blue Highway. <laughs> that took me a minute. <laughs> 
Um... My new favorite thing uh, is, with mashed potatoes is to fry up some garlic as a crunchy topping and then use the garlic oil in the potatoes themselves. Tastes incredible. Okay, wait. I'm going to have to actually try that. So, like, what? You just use olive oil and, my like, wife. my wife, the filet fish, though? Okay, all right. It is Friday. It is Friday. Carbon with cheese little once in a while. Ballin'! Well, thank you for gifting a sub to Blue Highway. Blue, did your sub literally fucking run out since your last message? What the fuck? <laughs> That's so funny. Wait, you gave him six months? Oh, god damn. Ayo, Ballin, thanks for that. Just slice up the garlic real thin and fry it in olive oil. I might do like a mince and then an olive oil. I like I like it minced. I don't like biting into like whole chunks of garlic like that. So I always mince in everything. Even if it says slice, I always mince it. I'm not like a, I'm not one of those people who hates cutting garlic. I like it. I think it's kind of therapeutic sometimes. No, Blue definitely had a sub earlier, didn't he? Yeah, it ran out between four four thirty eight and four forty. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't think you can go wrong with fried garlic. No, yeah, I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of that. I'm going to try that next time I make mashed potatoes. I do have potatoes still that I need to cook. I don't think I'm going to cook anything like that tonight, though. We did buy... So we bought those pupusas. Those were good. We also bought um, the Sam's Club Butter Chicken that I love. The, if you guys... Dude, the Sam's Club Butter Chicken. I know most of you guys, if you have bulk memberships, you go to Costco. Most, most I feel like most people do. Um, but the Sam's Club Butter fucking Chicken, dude. Is so goddamn good. It has no business being that good. Um, so might might make that. There was something else that we were thinking about making, but I don't remember what it is now. I also have some bacon, so I could make a bacon pasta. Costco supremacy. You see, I do agree with that, but I bum off my mom's Sam's Club membership. Um, so I don't uh I don't uh you know. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> My dad got four giant rotisserie chicken breasts at Sam's for like four dollars. Yeah, dude. All the bulk stores have fucking crazy. De I mean, like Sam's and Costco both have good prices. Like, it's not like it's the pricing isn't different at the locations at the really in reality it's mostly what products they have at the end of the day right like i think costco might have more options when it comes to things like different types of like cheeses right like if you want like a specific type of bulk brick cheese costco probably has more variety in that regard <sighs> or like you know you got the kirkland brand stuff so it's like because they can do all their own name brand they don't need like three different name brand stuff like Sam's Club has, right? They just have Kirkland, one name brand option. That's it, right? Um, and so they can they can have a larger variety of products in in Costco because of that. <sighs> Even though Walton's our money. Yeah, I always forget that they're owned by Walmart.
I might give him like a little bit more. No, I think we'll just do the narrow lot. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Fuck it. Boom. All right. We just need, we need more like housing. I need to make the communal oven. Keep up with food demand. I'm going to put it over there. I want this to be the highest priority of construction. Um, are the roads made dynamically by the citizens or do you place them? I place them, Triton, but the road building system is different than city skyline. So, for example... Um, if you wanted to, let's say, do a curve, let's say we wanted it to follow, let's find, so let's say we wanted the road to follow this, um, this hill right here, right? So what you would do is you'd place it on each spot on the road and it will dynamically try to add curves to it to make it, like, kind of feel more natural. And then if you want, you can hold control and adjust the road curvature and it will like adjust it better. So like I used a lot of nodes, so it's not going to like do it the way like I really want it to do it. But like, for example, if we wanted to like make it a little bit more jagged, let's say, and then we go in here and we can, you can really start to see how it can manipulate the road. So it's like, it takes a little bit of getting used to, um, to, to like get it to work but once you get it to work it's pretty cool um that's how they are and it's still a grid system i know a lot of people it's something i've kind of just come to the realization on today but like it is still a grid system like when you it's not as procedurally generated as i think people maybe realize it is it is still more customizable than city skylines don't get me wrong but like it, th think of these like surfaces, but they have nodes, right? So think of the surfaces from City Skylines, but with like nodes. So like you can only go in fixed points along this line. So like it, I can only place this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different spots on this road, right? And like it might fill in very procedurally, but like there is still like a fixed length that you can actually zone on each road. So. Um, the roads add some kind of structure to it, but there is like, it is definitely like procedural and like, okay, well you give us this area, we'll spit you out this area, right? Which is cool. I've turned this a city into, or this town into a grid. I was not intending on it becoming a grid. My other cities are not grids, but here we are. Do a city rate? What do you, I don't know what you're talking about, potato. City rate. Yeah, winter is sick too. They it, This guy did like such a good job with the foliage in this game. The foliage is like one of the key parts i think that like really sell the visuals of this game like obviously it's lighting and then like the trees and the grass and the way the game manipulates the lod to make it like feel like when you're moving around it's not it's like really smooth um it doesn't feel like stuff like aside from the buildings like nothing feels like it 
jumps on with the LOD. Everything feels like it slowly and gradually like fades away and fades on. Picks of their cities, then you look at them and rate them. Oh, I don't think I would. I don't know. I feel uncomfortable rank, like rating someone's city like that. Made in Unreal Engine. Yeah, it's Unreal 4. No plans to go to 5, they said. It was too far in development um, when 5 got announced, and they did not want to pivot. <sighs> I was thinking about doing, like, a if, the, if somebody brings back the cinematic render mod... Um, for City Skylines 2, I was thinking about doing, like, a crowd, uh, source, like, intro videos. So, like, you know how the intro of my videos, it's always the same, like, five clips from my city that I took? I was thinking about crowdsourcing that and then, like, having someone's handle at the bottom. So, whatever social media you want me to tag oh, out. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> um... But I was thinking about having that, like, uh, like kind of crowdsource that. So, like, I could give someone a shout-out and then also get better intro clips. Win-win, <clears throat> you know? But I, I, wanna, I want somebody to, like, redo the cinematic render mod before that comes out. Because it's way easier for people to record clips with that mod, so. So no Nanon or Lumen or PCG and all the good stuff. Yeah, exactly, yeah. None of the good lighting stuff, but the lighting still looks fucking amazing, so. But, like, there's, like, things you can notice, right? Like, this tree casts a big shadow, but, you know, obviously the branches. So there's no, like, fancy Lumen lighting off the branches, right? It's just the full mesh of the tree. That's something I noticed, that it's like, okay, that's why I can tell this is Unreal 4, right? Or they're not using nanites and lumen. And it still looks incredible, though. Like, there's no... Like, they, they knocked it out of the park. Absolutely knocked the visual fidelity of this game out of the park. And it's in early access still, too. So, like, I, I think part of this now that it's going to be, like, out and everyone can play it, the developer is, like, very interested, it seems like, in um, like wanting to know what the community wants in the game at this point, right? Like, um, do you like this balance decision? Do you just like this one? Because like, after the demo, they had a lot of questions like that. Oh, dude, I love this river on this ridge line. Oh, my God. They had a lot of questions like that. But, like, I didn't know how to answer them because I couldn't remember what the game felt like. <laughs> so, because uh, it was only available for, like, two days. So, um, I think now that it's, like, out, like, people will actually be able to give, like, good, real feedback to, like, any kind of, like, balancing or um, building stuff. Um, but this is seven years of, like, pure, raw passion. And uh, it shows. It shows in how the game plays. It's incredible. The the vis game's visually incredible. Especially for, like, one guy where, like, in everything was just, like, contracted out if he couldn't do it kind of vibes, you know? Oh, okay. 
Yo, Top K Pop, thank you so much for the five gifted. Let's go. Dude, we have a lot of wheel spins next stream. We're not doing wheel spins today, just so you guys know. So it's all stacking up at the bottom of the stream, and we're going to do them like how we did before, where we space it out once an hour. Every every hour, we'll do a wheel spin on Monday. Um, That's if I'm live on Monday. I should be live on Monday, but it's if I'm live on Monday. Definitely won't be live on Tuesday. So, um, yeah. But anyways, yeah, this game's great, dude. I, I'm I'm loving it. I'm loving it so far. I'm not like we haven't done any combat yet, <laughs> so we're like waiting. We had 70, 70, 70 more days <laughs> for combat. But thanks for the sub. Was not expecting it. <laughs> oh, Plup got a sub. Let's go. Can you walk on fences? No, it's collision. Uh, you can't go inside of buildings. Uh, oh, look at that. Ooh, we got a food stall here. Okay. There is a cinematic camera, but it's like... Um... Ah, shit. There's like a, a couple issues I have with it so far. So, like, one of them is, like, your mouse, like, sometimes loses focus on the game, and you'll start clicking off stream with it. Um... And the other thing is that there's, like, really just, like, no controls or options for it. Like, you just enter cinematic mode, and that's it. So it's just more of, like, camera tools rather, like, camera movement and, like, hidden UI. Um, I would love some controls. You know what I mean? Like, the ability to change time or something like that. Like, more like what City Skylines 2 has for its camera. Cinematic camera. Christabel, thank you for paying alert to export your services and poor chatters. Um... Yeah. How's the army doing? Oh, yes, we're up to 27. Let's go. Oh, we definitely need to make a corpse pit. Yeah. Yeah, no, we need to make a corpse pit. Um, <laughs> I don't want to throw it in the... <laughs> I feel like we should throw it down there. Throw it right at the crossroads so people see it. <laughs> they walk by just so you know. Fuck with us. <laughs> no, we should probably hide it in the woods. Um... Let's, uh, we'll put it, like, right here. Maybe. Yeah, we'll put it, like, right here. No, well, it's, like, too close to the road. So the corpse pit is for enemies. When you kill enemies, you have to bury them somewhere, and you bury them at the corpse pit. I'm gonna put them on the edge of the map. I don't, I don't really want this, like, near my base. Thunder Garden, or Garden, Thunder Guardian. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for paying a lurker tax and supporting the social services of poor chatters. <laughs> Thunder Garden. <laughs> Sounds pretty sick, though. Farming lightning. Are there diseases? Yeah, your citizens can get sick, um, but you can grow herbs at the forager's hut, and then they use the herbs to uh, fix it. My gerbils are doing it right now. What do you mean? Doing what? Like, 
having the uh, babies. Um, great question. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if that's intended to be added or not. I don't think I've played the game long enough to know. Um, I know that there's like droughts that can happen and like you can have fires and stuff break out. <clears throat> Okay, we need to have somebody working at the tavern. We also need to have a level two house do clothing. Yeah, so we need to do this next once we get five planks. One way to find out, uh, find out, place the corpse on the road in the middle of the city. True. Yeah, we'll see how that pit goes. <laughs> Go in the mining pit, all right. Okay, we need to build a clay furnace. I'm going to probably put that next to the clay pit. It's probably the best spot for it. I don't know enough about, like, transporting goods yet. I know you can build different storehouses and, like, only store specific stuff in each one. So, like, we could build a granary over here and only store, like, the hunting camp stuff over here. That way, like, the hunting camp stuff never has to be traveled or, like, taken over to the large granary. But, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so they're down to 10. So they're going to wait on that. Yep, now they're up to 12, so they'll hunt two more. Rotting crops in the field? Shit. I don't know what's going on with these. I don't know if it's because there's like upgrades that need to be done or something or what, but. Yep, but they're making bread. Okay, so we're good on that. What? No, it'll do that. I'm not going to do it. Like, if you guys want to duel me, I'm not going to, like, alt-tab just to duel you guys all the time, but I'll do it this time. Yeah, we need somebody to make shoes. What's going on with the planks? Are they like all going someplace?
Okay, potato, you gotta calm down, dude. You can't just be yelling every single time. Also, if you're gonna act like an asshole, I'm gonna time you out. What is taking? I like. I don't get what's taking so long to upgrade these into fields for the sheep. Let's do six. Okay, so that's gonna buy those sheep. Raiders are near. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Okay, where are they at? How do I find them? Those those aren't the ones that are coming though. That's not the ones. Um I can't collect channel points. So I get them when I do the bonus all because my my things in there but I don't like accrue them over time like everyone else does because I can just give myself like an infinite number of channel points at any point in time. Okay, so where is where's their army at? Wait, they're up here. Wait, they're fighting them? That's not fighting me. Okay, well, we get to watch a little fight, I think. Yeah, I've gotten 1,200 just by bonuses. Yeah, so when I do bonus all and stuff like that, I'll purge myself every once in a while because like, I don't need to be on the leaderboard. Okay, all right. They're squaring off in the field. Oh, shit. Oh! Oh, the whole ground shook. Oh! Oh, they're just like running at each other. Oh, God. There's no strategy to this. I, there is actually strategy in this game, but like this fight specifically is just two AIs running head at each other. Oh, God, there's dead ones! The whole ground's shaking. There's two guys. There's four men in the background just cheering them on. <laughs> They're moshing. Look at them all. They're just cheering each other on. <laughs> oh, my God. The left side's the bandits. The right side's the, ki the, the other king. That's a lot of food. What is this, Rim World, dude? Oh my god. <laughs> now just fall over. I'm speeding it up. Oh my god, I didn't mean to speed up that fast. Why do they go to the back? Are they injured? Are those the injured ones? Oh, one just died! Oh no! I wonder how- I wonder if like each character has like a hit point pool or if it's like... I wonder how this works on the back end. I think that's the time area it's supposed to take place in. 
stopping the battle for a targeting call. They deserve, deserve to die. die. All right, let me make sure I'm not getting attacked at the same time here. Because I, I, I thought I was supposed to be getting attacked, so I don't know what the hell's going on. Did they just, like, accidentally run into the enemy, like, the other lord? I think that's what happened. I think these guys just, like, I was supposed to fight them, and they just accidentally ran into these guys instead. Illegal hands to the face, French army, 15-yard penalty, first down, England. <laughs> European war basically used to be an NFL game running each other head on, and whoever's left standing wins. Yeah, dude. <laughs> dude, they got their they got their armies lumped up. So like the 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 bandits are all like clustered up right here. Okay, and then these guys are spread real wide. So you got these guys doing tall, right? They're all big cluster. They're one. It's like in Civ, right? They got one city, real strong. These guys, lots of cities, real weak though. It's like Red Rover, you know? Like that's the big kid in Red Rover, and then this is the whole line. It's like, well, the big kid's got to break every single spot in the line. This is my bus stops in CS1. <laughs> Simple New England getting the call. <laughs> I just died. Oh. What's the death blow look like? Oh my god. Oh, he died. Oh. Oh, there he goes. Who's going to win this one? What's left here? So they got. They have like roughly the same amount of troops. There's a little bit less in the terms of bandits. The bandits have to have two less troops. Oh no, it's three less now. Oh no. Oh no. So they, I think if that white bar at the top runs out, they retreat. Yeah, they're gonna lose. Bandits are losing. Yeah. Yeah, they're definitely losing. But okay, you know what? But these guys had they they've retreated a little bit and they're flanking. Look at that effectiveness. Oh no, they broke them. Okay, they broke that army. They broke that army. So those guys are gonna go retreat now. Yep, now they're broken as well. Nice. Okay, so now Wallabrand is gonna be claimed. A region is being claimed. So now because because they beat them, they're gonna try to claim the central region. Oh, they had archers too. The archers were just vibing though. I didn't even see any arrows. Were the arrows? No, they were too far back. They were too far back. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah, so they're gonna try to claim the central region now. We're gonna like, they had two starting areas, so we're gonna try to play it slow and then maybe try to snag one of these two areas. I don't know which one's better, but. New England won't be getting any soon. <laughs> Well, team, you support Whispers Raiders. <laughs> what? No, wait, wait, I didn't want to. I didn't want to do this. Uh oh. We're loading from an autosave. I didn't I didn't want to go to I'm not ready to go to war with them. We're not strong enough yet.
Okay, bean clip. Okay, this is what I want. Okay, I need to let them claim it is what's going on. We're not strong enough. We'll get our fucking ass beat and we might lose the game. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait for the bandits to attack me because the bandits were supposed to attack me. But they didn't. Instead, they chose to attack them for whatever reason. I don't know why. So now we're just kind of vibing until they do. Also, Yed, welcome back in. <coughs> he cheated, so we got out of his contract. Wait, he, he had a PED scandal? I didn't know that. The time has come for, for this, this cookie. cookie. Um, um, he sucked um, and was on PEDs. Um, Raiders um, know um, how to pick them. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Raiders were my AFC team. When I cared more about football. Now I only root for the Lions. Gotta go, Ben. Fun. Dude, thanks for the gifted subs again to K-pop. I appreciate it. Have a good rest of your day. Lions and Raiders, you really love misery, I guess? Yeah. You gotta pick the teams at their lowest. They'll rebound eventually. Now the Raiders have gambling odds on them since, like, you know, Vegas is basically run by sports betting at this point, so. They got to be good at some point so people come bet on their games. They got to at least be middle tier so there's, like, some kind of value. The Pats fans who are so spoiled. Oh my fucking god. Sports betting is great. I'm just going to keep betting until I win. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Blue Highway actually had a big gamble. See? Maybe, maybe it's right. <laughs> Let's just look at Enswani, dude. Number one on the leaderboard for a reason. Last Super Bowl was in the 80s for the Raiders. They are due right about Carlson Dole. <laughs> oh, at least your team won a Super Bowl. That must be nice. <laughs> must be nice to have that. At least your team stayed in the city. Yeah, the Lions will never leave. <laughs> Someone who isn't J15 on top... Oh, wait, is on top of the board? Yeah, it's Enswani, dude. <laughs> Enswani did a big fucking gamble all and hit it and then is just like, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm gonna sit on my throne at the top. It's a four-way race for the last wildcard spot. No, I haven't. I kind of ruled them out, honestly. Like, after their big losing streak, I kind of was like, I don't think they got it. I thought I thought they were out already. I haven't been paying attention to hockey, really, this year. I know we had a close game against Pittsburgh last night, but that's it. That's the only thing I've, like, kind of kept up on at all. Fuck the pens. I do miss being in the West because I hate regularly playing against the Leafs and the Pens. Pisses me off. Wait, we close out the year against two, a double header against the Canadians? Aw, oh, fuck me, bud. We play Toronto and then the Canadians twice? 
No, I just I just hate playing against two teams in a row. Enjoy those free wins. Yeah, we'll take them at least. So the real game is going to be the Leafs game, I guess, for us. That's the real decision maker is if we can beat the Leafs. Jeez, the Metropolitan Division fucking sucks ass. Holy shit. <laughs> god damn. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, hey now, the Canadians do have... 30 wins so I mean like it's not you know and a lot of them are overtime losses you know yeah continue yeah depends if they sit their best for the playoffs hopefully they don't sit Matthews he's two away from hitting the 70 goal oh shit Hopefully the Blackhawks get better again, dude. Yeah, they're they're the worst team in the um West, right? Or is it the Sharks? No, it's the Sharks. Okay, thank God. Yeah, it's the Sharks and the Blue Jackets. Yeah, yeah, those guys. <laughs> fuck, dude. <laughs> They're both. <laughs> yeah, dude. The Sharks have 19 wins. That's awful. That makes me happy, though. There was a kid in college who I absolutely could not stand who was like a big Sharks fan. He's a big Sharks and oil, uh, Orioles fan. And I could not stand him, so... Ah, oh, they're doing the plowing. Okay, so this is how this is what happens when you get the plow upgrade. So then the the they'll use the ox to plow the field, and it goes much faster. It's a rough. It, it's rough in Chicago sports right now. Okay, listen. Okay, Bears looked okay at the end of last year. They, towards the end of that, sure they didn't, sure they didn't have a playoff berth, but they looked, they looked like the Lions did at the end of the previous year. So like, I wouldn't be too down on the Bears right now. I wouldn't. I'm saying, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be too down on the Bears right now. Um. And then, like, I don't know. What's the difference between, like, I don't know how the White Sox or the um, Cubs are doing. Tigers were doing pretty good, right? Seven four. They were doing better. <laughs> I don't give a shit about baseball, though. No, the socks are shit. Okay, all right. <laughs> Noted. Yeah, how are the Cubs doing? Cubs are 7-5. They're all right. They're doing fine. Not great, but, you know, early. It's early in the year. Baseball is so fun now that they added the pitch clock. Is it, though? Because I've... Games don't take five hours now? Okay, right. But, like, so here's here's what I've heard about baseball. You guys tell me, because I don't fucking know shit about baseball. Um, I played baseball, but that was it. I never really watched it. I was never really a fan. Um, you guys tell me. I've heard that there is pitching injuries out the fucking ass right now. I've heard that there's pitching injuries out the ass right now. I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what's the deal with that? They changed the pitch clock, and now we have all these fucking injuries. Is it because they're rushing the pitchers, and they're injuring themselves because of it? 
Because they can't take their time? It's, I think it's also the limiting of pitching changes. What does that mean? Elaborate that. I don't know what that is. Unaware face. Okay, essay incoming. Okay, I'm going to grab a granola bar while you're typing that essay. I hungy. Mm, I also did hear about the tar stuff. Yeah, I did hear about that. Before relief pitchers could just face one batter. So if a starter is in there and at the end of his start, teams could bring in a righty or a lefty to face the batter. They have a higher chance of getting out and then bringing in another pitcher to do the same. Now they have to plan the relief fit pitchers because they have to face three batters. Um, Maybe one batter they would face, they could get an out at a high percentage, but the other two batters might have less percent. starters longer because of that i hope that makes sense in my head it does yeah i don't know i don't necessarily i don't necessarily think oh j15 started evga precision engine nice um i don't necessarily think that i as like someone who doesn't watch the sport would see that as a big issue because I think it makes sense from, like, a visual standpoint to, like, not have pitchers rotating every single fucking person, I guess. If that makes sense. Is that how that's working? So, like, you could, like, literally just, like, oh, okay, we'll throw this guy in because we know he can't bat against lefties or whatever. Like, I think that's, like, a little ridiculous. <laughs> um... How do we go from cool sports like hockey and football to lame sports like baseball? That You know what? Fair. That's a good point, Blue Highway. I agree. I agree with Blue. I'll say it. I don't like baseball. I don't like watching it. Unless I'm at the game. And I'm eating a hot dog. You know? Or a burgie. Or some fries. Some nacho sauce, you know? Home run. <laughs> Baseball's fun to play, though. I joined a beer league, and it's been fun. Oh, did you? Nice. Fries? Somebody called me? <laughs> the French? Hello? <laughs> Did I hear baseball slander? No, never. I would never do that, Ballin. I would absolutely never do that. 
Mm -mm. No, I would never do that in front of you. Okay, how we need to get up to level three. What do we what more do we need? So we need the tavern. But we need these guys to produce ale, and I don't think that we have any rye or malt for them to produce ale. Is that correct? Because we need a malt house. I actually don't know if we grew any grain this past year either. So we need a malt house. Because I don't think I built one. There we go. Then we can get ale produce. Okay, so they took the central region. That's fine. I don't give a shit about the central region right now. We'll take it later. Belgian fries are Belgian. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're right. You're totally right. All the same to Americans? Yeah, dude. Americans can't decide if Belgian is French, German, or uh, Dutch, and I don't think Belgian can either, or Belgium can either. So, um... I miss playing. Can't believe it's been 12 years since I last played college. Damn. Local wood bat league for adults. What about Flemish? <laughs> Bon's too busy sitting in his tr work truck. <laughs> playing RuneScape. Cool, so we have the sheep. Yes, they're actually using them as pastures. Let's go. Hell yeah. All right, so which fields are growing uh, barley this year? So it's this one is growing barley. They're getting that set up. Cool. Including myself. <laughs> Wallen French, so it's like a different kind of French. I did not know this. Deforestation killed berry bush? <gasps> guys, 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 guys. Limit your work area. Oh my goodness. What are we doing? No. I didn't know that was a thing. Now we know. We've learned. Now they're claiming Goldhoff? Where's Goldhoff? Is that the one above me? Okay, so we'll need to work this direction. If we can't work this direction, then we have to like it go to war with the yellow guy. At some point.
How does this compare to regional dialects in the United States? Which is greater variance in Europe? Because it's not all just English. An animal ran away? What the fuck? What do you mean an animal ran away? How do we stop that from happening? God damn it. American English is like a hundred years old. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. All right, one family's in the malt house now. Okay, we exhausted the clay. How did we go from 20 degrees and sunny to 5 degrees and rain with fucking 80 km hour winds? Dude, I know it's so windy out. My mom's power is flickering? Dude, what the fuck? It should start, the wind should start dying down here. Yeah, the peak was like an hour ago, so it should start dying down. Yeah, we had like, it was like 40, 45 mile an hour gusts. I don't know what that is in kilometers. Uh, mile, wait, we can convert. Sorry. 45, convert 45 miles. Yeah, we had 72 kilometer an hour. So 70, yeah. I just forget we have that. I'm on a journey to get a shawarma wrap. I don't think I've ever had shawarma. I just realized that technical got canceled today. Dude, right wing pipeline. Let's go. Right wing gift grifter character arc. Okay, I said the right wing pipeline before I read your message. Um, <laughs> I 
Yeah, I don't think I've ever had shawarma. We have a new Egyptian place coming in here. I'm very excited to try. I don't remember the name of it. And I, I don't know how to check Egyptian food chain. Um, food, wait, fast, fast, fast food chain. It is. I've just never, um, I've never gotten it. I mean, I wouldn't say it's, like, common. I don't know. We have a place called Lake Kebab. I know they have shawarma. I've just, we've just never been to it. I think it's, like, one of those things where it's, like, I have, like, I just tried Indian food for the first time, and now I'm in love with that. Growing up at where I did, like, I was very, like, unaware of, like, regional foods. Like, I, I didn't even have, like, like, I had never even been to a, to a Chinese restaurant until I went to college. I never even heard of shawarma until the Avengers were eating it. Okay, well, okay, that's... I at least know what it is, but... Gaylor did a number on you. We had, like, one Chinese restaurant, and it was a buffet. Um, but my mom doesn't like buffets because she thinks they're germy, which is fair. Um, so I, I was just... We never... Went there. There was no like uh, takeout Chinese place. <clears throat> they might have them now. They have like a lot of places there now. It's like way more touristy than um when I was growing up. It was always kind of touristy, but they, like, really started hitting, like, a tourist boom recently. So, they're, like, actually rapidly expanding now. There's a million shawarma places in every major Canadian city. Um, Yeah, I mean, like, we have shawarma places here now. Like, I've just never been. Yeah, I've just never, never been, never had it, never tried it. I think I'm overwhelmed with options at this point because it's like, man, like I could try that, or I or I could get Indian food again, or you know, or or I or I could get some some Thai food, you know. <laughs> I don't think I've been. I don't think I've been. Yeah, or Wingstop. I haven't been oversaturated enough with the new cuisines I'm been exposed to to like now want to try another one. Not that there's anything wrong with shawarma or like that but it's just like a whole new experience welcome to living in the middle of nowhere yep oklahoma uh the oklahoma clause grants you immunity you never had x food <laughs> or wing stuff yeah dude oh. ah, ah, i need water help, help me i need, me, I need water. water help, help. Um, dude, I do need water. Actually, unironically. I should go upstairs and grab some. Um. <clears throat> to be fair, J15, you live much closer to a city than I ever did. Ugh. Growing up. I'm gonna upgrade that once I get the planks. Gotta stay hydrated, I know. I need to be better about it. Cannot find storehouse for excess weapon storage. Uh-oh. Can we not store the weapons in here? Why can't we store the weapons in here? I'm confused. Please put please put the weapons in the large storehouse. Why can't we put the weapons in the large storehouse?
Yeah, I'm true. Only, I'm only an hour away from OKC. Yeah, we had to drive three hours to get anywhere. <laughs> three hours going 70 MPH. I don't. What is that? What is that in kilometers? Convert 70 mi. Yeah, going 110. There used to be a picky eater. Yeah, same. Same. I, there's still some stuff that I like. Ew, no. <laughs> Triton. Is this removing that pop-up? I hope so. Thanks for subscribing, Triton. Um, J15 has been busy working at their local newspaper since she was five years old. Yeah, I'll still fair. Yeah, yeah. The newspaper workhorse. <laughs> I've been better about it recently. Like, um, I'm still like really picky with sauces. I, I just, I can't stand mayo. Um, and like the texture and like consistency of things like mayo and ranch. Mm -mm. But I like the flavor of ranch. So. Yeah. I don't like like thick creamy sauces like that. This is bleh. Um, what was the population where you grew up? The town I spent uh, nearly eleven years growing up had a total of like seven hundred and fifty, and now it has close to one thousand two hundred. Okay, so all right, let's let's do let's do let's let's get some Kodiak lore. Let's get let's go let's go do some Kodiak lore, shall we? Okay. Um, here's Michigan. Here's the state, right? Michigan, Upper Peninsula, Lower Peninsula, right? M overwhelming majority of the population lives below this line right here. Um, actually, most of it lives like Muskegon South too, but Saginaw is still pretty big. So um, the majority of the population lives below this line right here. So everything, including the Upper Peninsula, is like 10% or something like that of the entire state's population is above this line right here. Okay, so pretty much everything above this line is considered Northern Michigan, right? Lots of people will argue that's different things, right? Some people might say, no, the real northern Michigan is the UP or whatever. It is a very different environment the moment you get above Saginaw. Um, in, if you get above Big Rap or uh, Grand Rapids, it's pretty much, it starts already, basically. But, um, yeah, the real line's right here for me, at least. Like, if you get above Big Rapids, Mount Pleasant, so Big Rapids is where I went to college, Mount Pleasant's where Central Michigan University is, and Bay City Midland area, you get above that, it's all small towns from there. It is all small towns from there. Um, how many kilometers is this distance uh, from Saginaw? So, like, Saginaw is, like, not too big of a city, granted. It's not that big. Okay, so, like, the real big population centers are Grand Rapids and Detroit. Those are the two big cities, right? We hear about Flint, but when you really look at Flint, it's not, like, incredibly big. It's a small city. Um, it's just, like, in the metroplex of Detroit. In a way. Um, so if you're talking like from my home. Let me make sure I don't have anything in my search bar here. That's going to. No, that's all. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. So if we're talking like from Gaylord, right? If we're talking from Gaylord to. um, Let's make sure that this doesn't pop up any like addresses. To let's say Canton. Yeah, so that's uh 229 miles. Yeah, we were looking up jails for cities. Uh stuff. We were trying to like figure out how prisons are laid out for um the prison that we were building. 229 miles. Yeah, so that's 370 kilometers. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, my country. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. And that was just to get to the the main city in the state. That's that's just to get to Detroit, right? I can drive to Dallas quick, quicker than that, yeah. Well, there's also a lot of construction going on right now, so, like, this is, like, kind of rush hour traffic, but um, I digress. Yeah, it's about three hours. It takes about three hours to get there, yeah. Um, so, we measure everything in 
in time here. Distance is is a figment of the imagination. It's it's all based on time. Uh, anyways, so yeah, I grew up up here. I actually grew up way over here in Johannesburg. This is where I actually lived. A very small bean town. Small bean town. Here it is. That's the oldest building in the county right there. Siding's all fucked up, but you know. Um, this used to be the old train station. It's called the Old Depot. It's a restaurant now. Um, there's our library. Yep. This is uh this was a subway for a while and then it shut down. Um it was it, they put the subway in after I moved out. So like that wasn't there when I was growing up. Um this is my the elementary, middle school, high school, all in one. <clears throat> all in one. There's our football field. You know, and that's that's pretty much the the whole town that's that way. <clears throat> then you go this way. Right? This used to be the pizza place that would constantly open and close. Oh, this is when it was the pizza place and they had the little sign. Yeah. That's an old street view. Uh, there's the gas station. That's Busy Bee. Uh, it's Paul's Pub. This is like our only other restaurant in town. Uh, my cousin owns it. Distant cousin, but cousin nonetheless. Um, this building was never like a, a store. I guess this is a store now. What is this called? Beginning to the End Christian Bookstore. Oh. Oh, that's fun. This is a non-denominational church. I don't, this is, that's terrifying. Um, I don't like the name of that. Uh, and then there's our post office, and then this is a Dollar General they put in after I moved out. Was it a blink and you missed it kind of town? Yeah, but like, you can't like blink and miss it because you do have to make a turn here. So like, if you want to continue down M32, you have to turn right. So if straight traffic stops, right turn traffic just goes. Yeah. There's no, no, it's not a stoplight. It's not a stoplight. It's just a weird intersection. <clears throat> <clears throat> Traffic that turns left and like this way. So it's this road and this road have priority. These roads have stop signs. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. Yeah. So this is my town. This is where I grew up in. Um, the problem is if we Charlton Township. See, the thing is, this town is too small to have census data and regional data on. So I have no idea how many people actually lived in my town. So the, all the statistics are based off the township here. 1,200 people live in this township. The population was 1,300 at the time of the 2020 census. There you go. It was 1,200 when I lived there. So, that's where I grew up. Gaylord is a little bit bigger. Um, where they have population in the city, so that's just inside these lines is 4,300. Um, the big one of the bigger subdivisions in the area is Mishaway. It's down over here. This has like more people living in it. And then, you know, it's like the entire county, like everyone in this general area goes there to shop. So like you could almost consider all of these people would probably say that they live in Gaylord, you know, even though they like live out in the boonies over here. Um, yeah. Oldest existing structure is a Presbyterian church. It was used by both the North and South during the civil war. Yeah. Yeah, wait, Triton said something. Why are these parking so big? Because everyone lives so far away from everything, you have to take a car to get from point A to point B. Also, we get, like... Fuck, how much... Um, what is the convert thing? Is it in inches? Convert... Is it ten? Is it inches or is it in feet? It's... it's oh, we don't even have feet. Oh, shit. Okay, wait. Um... To CM. Yeah, we also get 365 centimeters of snow a year. So, like, walking or biking is not a realistic possibility in the winter. So, yeah. How much? 365 centimeters or 144 inches. Really can't, can't comprehend being that far from a big city. Yeah. I mean, like, we got Walmarts and stuff. So that's why the parking lots are so big, because everyone has to drive. You have to drive to get from point A to point B. It is literally unsafe to not do that. 
Yeah. Granted, development should be more focused, like in the town, like you know, you know, semi semi urban environments, yada yada yada, whatever. But um, yeah, everything's just so spaced out. Like if you live way over here, you're not gonna fucking walk all the way over here. Like that's that's a long distance to like have to walk every day. Like that's like five miles. Um, you know what I mean? Like that's like these are close to town. <laughs> like you you get people that live out up over here, you know. Um. Walmart in rural America that runs every small town. Yeah, okay, so let's go over to Gaylord. Gaylord's where everybody goes shopping, right? Um, so, like, it's basically, like, a big, long drag from Old 27 all the way up into town right here, and then Main Street, which is the main drag, M32. So, And those are the kind of, like, the main corridors. You have, like, an industrial park down over here. Amazon's building a big warehouse over here to act as, like, a distribution center for the area. They're basically going to take over the whole fucking airport, apparently. Um, here's the Walmart. That's the Walmart parking lot. Let's go. Oh, good, good. Don't worry. We have a whole street view of the of the Walmart parking lot. Yeah. I got max five centimeters this year. We also did not get a lot of snow this year, to be fair. To be fair, we also did not get a lot of snow. Yeah. Yeah. Over three and a half meters. Yeah, three and a half meters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I forget that a meter is 100 centimeters. I always think it's 1,000 for some reason. That Walmart needs a bigger parking lot. Yeah. Oh, they have angled parking now. Oh, that's new. Okay. It never used to be... Ang I don't remember it being angled before. Was it always angled? This isn't angled. I don't remember it being angled. Damn, y'all got a Walmart? Well, my well, where I actually grew up doesn't. Gaylord does, though. I mean, to be fair, Ballin, it's because you have to, like, there's there's no Walmart. Where's the next closest Walmart? Hold on. It does Grayling? Grayling doesn't have a Walmart, does it? I don't think Grayling's got a Walmart. No, Grayling doesn't have a Walmart. Um, Where's the next closest Walmart? Let's look up Walmart. Walmart. Where's the next closest one? Is it really Petoskey? Let's see how far away the, the two Walmarts are from one another. They're 44 minutes or 35 miles away. And then... <clears throat> what's, this, what's 35 miles in, in kilometers? Yeah, so 56 kilometers from one another, but, okay, just so the Canadians know. And then if we type in Walmart again, hold on. Yeah, and then the next closest one is Traverse City, which is which is pretty far. That's pretty far away. That's pretty far away. Like, if we, if we just, like, go over to France. Hello. You were probably wearing it, yeah. Like, you can see the difference. Like, the distance of, like, Paris to, like... I don't know how to pronounce Nancy, but what? Um, did your town have any stoplights? My hometown didn't. My hometown did not. Gaylord does. Gaylord's got quite a few lights. It's kind of like the central hub, though. You know what I mean? Like, you have, like, this is the main interstate that goes up and then crosses the two peninsulas here. So, like, and then also Sault Ste. Marie. So, like, this is a connection into Canada right here. So, there's a lot of traffic that goes through. Back from my shawarma adventure. Welcome back. Where you have completely disrailed, derailed the stream um, by talking about the shawarma. By the way, that the, you've you've completely ruined the stream today. Yeah, it's, I think it. I think it's Schmitty's fault. I think it is. I think there's like ten stoplights in the whole county where I grew up. Honestly, I think it's the same.
we might uh, it might be a little bit more. It might be a little bit more than that. <clears throat> Let me see if I can count. So we got one, two, Uh, that's not his traffic light. Three. Four. Five? Um. Six. But this is no longer going to be a traffic light, I don't think, anymore. But we'll count it. Six. Um. Is this a traffic light? I don't actually remember. Yeah, that's seven. It's a circle K now. Huh. Um, so that's seven. Uh eight. Nine. That's all of the ones on that road, I think. And then we got ten. Eleven. 12, um, and then 13, 13, I think we got 13, that's the whole county too, like there's not gonna be any, anywhere else, I, maybe Vanderbilt, actually Vanderbilt might have a traffic light, Does, does Vanderbilt have a traffic light? Vanderbilt doesn't have a traffic light. All right, never mind. Yeah, no, it's 13. Well, no, there's no way this is a traffic light. No, there's no way. Yeah, I was going to say, no, there's no way. Vander Vandertucky's too too much of a... No, no, there's no way. Yeah, so I think 13. I think we got 13 of them. And, and that's just in Gaylord. I grew up way over here in this town. We didn't have none. Ottawa's the shawarma capital of Canada. Yes, they do. No, that's not a traffic light. That's not a traffic light. It's not a traffic light, though. This isn't a traffic light, because right, the main road is, is this way. It's just a weird intersection. Like, if it went straight, it would just be a stop sign. But, like, the traffic that's coming this way doesn't have to stop, and the traffic that's going right never has to stop. They never have to stop. It's this road and this road that do. So, like, we have, like, a blinking light. I wouldn't cause is that a traffic light? Would you guys consider that a traffic light? Maybe it is a traffic light. I wouldn't consider it one. It's just a light warning you that there's a stop sign. Because it's straight traffic has to stop. So if like if if you're going straight through, you have to stop. But if you're turning right, you don't have to stop. And just like this way, if you're this way doesn't have to stop at all. You can go right, straight, or left and not stop. Most places lost power around you so far. What the heck? My mom lost uh, a bunch of. Okay. Taylor. A bunch of places around my mom lost power. Yeah. I'm, that's surprising. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any other issues. You have to use both of the services. That black one. Yes, you have to use the air fryer basket one. Are you using it as an air fryer or a pressure cooker? If if you're using it as an air fryer, you have to use the black basket. That's for pressure cooker. You have to have okay, you have to have both of them in there for the air fryer. You only need the white one for the pressure cooker. So I need the pressure cooker one and the air fryer? Correct. You set that inside the black thing, so that way you can set stuff on top of it so there's more airflow underneath it, or you can do multiple layers then. Gotcha. Yep. I don't know where the pressure cooker is. It's probably in the dishwasher. I put it in the dishwasher yesterday. The, the regular one's in there. The black one or the white one? The white one. The black one's not on the top shelf? No. I put it in there yesterday. <sighs> okay. <sighs> um, 
Why don't they place a roundabout? Uh, that's a great question. That is, it probably would be a good spot for a roundabout. We do have roundabouts. We're not anti-roundabout. Look at this beautiful roundabout by the school up here. This was the first one in the entire, like, area. They put this in when I was, like, five or something. I was pretty young when they put it in. We love, I love this roundabout. It's a great roundabout, 10 out of 10. It's the only one, though. <laughs> well, we have another, we have a couple other ones. Traverse City has a couple, like, for, like, high-speed area up over here. I don't, I don't know the purpose behind them they're for the 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 mire that's over here but i don't really understand why they put them there i don't really know that it it helped traffic flow i guess it probably does it slows you down quite a bit but maybe it helps the people leaving the the grocery store i guess and then there's another one where am i i feel lost up over here Um, right here. Those are all of our roundabouts. <laughs> we don't have any other ones up in my hometown. We have we have some here in Grand Rapids, but yeah, none down there. They're putting one at McCoy Road. Oh wait, really? Wait, at the corner of the Ace, where the Ace is. Th this intersection. Really. Honestly, yeah, that makes sense. I've sat at a bunch of lights where cars never fucking come through, and it's like, why do we sit here? Why do we have to sit here for this stupid traffic light? Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Lots of accidents already. Yeah, dude. People, yeah, nobody knows how to use a fucking roundabout up north. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, That sounds about right. Anyways, yeah, that's right. That's where I'm from. <laughs> so that's why we don't have shawarma. It's fun. Uh, the U.S. hang their traffic lights. Wait, what do you um? How do you how do you guys do it then? Do you guys put it on the? Because we do the pole thing sometimes too, like that. We do this sometimes. On the other side? Wait, what? Triton, you're, you're confusing me. <laughs> By the college, there's literally five shawarma joints. You are confusing me. Okay, all right, all right. This is one way we hang our traffic lights, okay? We put them on poles, and we put them over intersections. Usually downtowns, like, we'll do this. Like, Midwest downtowns do that, right? Um, the other way we do it is if you go down over here where the next traffic light is, is we put them up on wires like this. Oh, you put them here. Oh, so these ones would be your traffic light, not those. It, that is by far, I think, the smarter way to do it because then it forces you to not overshoot the stop line. Well, that's exactly the point, Ballin. You don't then you don't end up in the fucking crosswalk.
Uh, there's two shawarma joints that opened up in my hometown with a pop of like 12k. What is this in 20? <laughs> what the fuck is this, dude? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Dude, I'm confused. What the hell is this? So you you have is this light for this lane? What the fuck am I looking at? I don't how how is a normal person supposed to look at this and understand how the traffic light works? What? Why? Okay, better one up the street. Okay, all right, okay. So, this is... Wait, this is a different inter... You're telling me that this is a different intersection? They're all like this? Why? It looks like a war memorial! <laughs> Yeah, dude, I feel like I'm at Pearl Harbor. <laughs> dude. <laughs> okay, all right. What the fuck, man? This is so jank. I hate this. Wait, is this a slip lane? Wait, this one's got a slip lane. Or is this the traffic light for the slip lane? Wait, is this a slip lane? Or is this a... Is this a yield? Or is this a red light? What the fuck? I don't understand this. No, but you have a red light. Is that a green bike lane? Yeah, wait, why? Explain, elaborate. Elaborate, Canadian. Green's the bike lane. That's how we do it here, too. Let's find one. I know where there's one. Um, this is in Grand Rapids. I know we're bouncing all over the place. I just want to give you guys context. Boom. Slip lane. Or well, not slip lane. Sorry. Bike lane. There is a slip lane though. It's right here. So there's like a bike lane on the right hand side right here, and then it you cr like the cars cross the slip lane right here, and then enter the turning lane, and then there's also a slip lane because there's a school up here, so the slip lane so the buses can make the turn. But this is just a yield. It's not like a it's not like a stoplight or anything like that. That's the part that really fucking confused me there. The fuck is biking on a five lane road? Uh, well, Blue Highway, when they're all five lane roads, you don't really have a choice. It's either that or the sidewalk. And in some places, you get ticketed for biking on the sidewalk. So, welcome to America, buddy. Yeah, this is, yeah, this makes more sense to me. Wait. Yeah. Oh, wait, this is interesting, though. I don't understand this intersection. This intersection breaks my brain a little bit. So, how do you turn, can you turn left? How do you? Oh, that's the left turn lane. Got it. Okay. All right. I understand now. I I understand now. These these road lines are just like they're so faded. <laughs> it's just hard to tell. Okay. All right. I get it. I actually good at using bike lanes in most of their roads. Yeah, you're asking for vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> Yeah.
Yeah, that's America. Well, in a nutshell, you know. This road has a like a raised bike lane. So like this is like raised up. I gotta check something. Sorry, <laughs> I, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked right now. I, Okay, all right. You know, Blue Highway, you can have that one. Uh, Blue Highway and J15, you guys should check your DMs really quickly. Anyways, yeah. That's how this road works anyways, but... I still can't believe this intersection. This thing's fucked. <coughs> Another corner has one of the funniest signs I laugh at every time. All right, send the link. We'll take a look at it. Um... Montreal bike infrastructure is, yeah, dude, Blue Highway's, like, sitting over here, like, what the fuck? Meanwhile, he lives in Montreal. Like, one of the most pedestrian-friendly, like, cities in the entire United, like, entire North America. Have a good one, Sean. Drive safe. I know you'll probably get clocking out of work, so. I hate sidewalk bikers. Yeah, see, I don't mind them here unless there if there's like a if there's a bike lane, I think a lot of people would be like just get in the fucking bike lane, but it's like a cyclist dies here once every 2 weeks. So it's like, you know, um I'm not going to I'm not going to complain about a cyclist wanting to ride on the sidewalk. Um just because of how dangerous it is. But um yeah. They started adding pillars to separate bike lanes in my town, which helps quite a bit. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, they should. The protected bike lanes, good. Good, protected. Protect them. Um, look at this beautiful city in Belgium. <laughs> yeah, dude, this is... Yeah. Americans could never dream of this. This would be like... This would this could only exist in a shopping center. It would be surrounded by parking lots, and um, it would only exist to have designer stores. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way. That's the only way something like this could exist here. Yeah, this is incredible. This could never happen in America. <laughs> what is it? What did you? Okay, let me look at it in 20s. All right, where's the sign?
Is it Hacienda? The sideways merge sign? This? Wait, what happened? Nice save. I was about to throw hands. Was there almost another incident? Wait, what happened? It's really EU, that style of traffic light. Yeah, I think it's funny that not in like a funny, good way. Folks here uh, in Florida, at least in Orlando area, who insist on walking along the side of roads when there's a sidewalk not five feet from them. Yeah, I fucking hate that shit. I fucking hate that shit as a driver. Pedestrians should also hate doing that shit, and it doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you're just putting yourself in the dangerous position when, like, there is a safe place for you to walk. It's always put vertical. Like, I know what you're talking about, because I've seen this sign before, but it's usually vertical, not sideways. You almost said Montreal was in the U.S.? Oh, no. Yeah, no. I just meant, like, in the entire continent of North America. It's, like, one of the most pedestrian-friendly places. Outside of, like, I don't know, Latin America? I don't know a lot about Latin American infrastructure, though, so, like, I don't know, any, I don't know much about, like, how Mexico is laid out. In terms of like Mexico City and stuff like that, I'm sure there's probably like really nice areas um, that are pedestrian friendly, but I don't know about them. <laughs> this is just wild to me. It's such a big intersection, too. Jesus Christ. Anyways, you guys see the new emotes? Kodiak Lord and Kodiak Creep. I don't even remember what you're fucking doing in this game. <laughs> Shorma Gaylord uh, is small. American parking lots, war memorial traffic lines. <laughs> I'm having mac and cheese with ch uh, grilled chicken for dinner. To answer Christabel's question from earlier. <laughs> I hear someone like I hear someone in game talking every once in a while. Yeah, I know that was like a callback you were not expecting. I know. <laughs> I let the people who live in that town know that there are war memorial traffic lights, dude. I, the war memorial traffic lights is the funniest shit. <laughs> That's the final boss, John Manor. <laughs> Wait, no, it's John Mayer, dude. What do you mean? That's actually John Mayer voice acting John Manor. That's the really creative, funny name they came up with. <laughs> Fucking War Memorial Traffic Lights. Fuck, I love that. <laughs> oh, shit. I wish you could, like, manually upgrade these roads. Yeah, dude, this game slaps. I don't know. It's good. It's a good, it's a good little medieval city builder. We're going to be playing it on Monday if I'm live. Um, and if I happen to do a stream this weekend, I don't know if I will. Um, if I do, it will be manor lords. So, not cities. Um, expect some cities news related videos next week also. Oh 
boy, big news. Actually, though, so stay tuned. Stay tuned for that. And if you guys mix it, missed the energy drink review from earlier in the stream, we tried NOS Zero, you know, nitrous oxide zero. Actually, it was like grapefruit flavored. It was delicious. Uh, it ended up in the bottom of S tier. Uh, was always scared that that one was going to be like a gross tasting monster, and it was actually delicious. So. I haven't had NOS since like 2006. Dude, it's good. NOS Zero is good. I don't know why more people don't buy it. <laughs> the medieval cat. <laughs> no. Dude, yeah, the border is like around like this region of the world are so fucked. They're so fucked in this area. Like, especially the southern border of Germany. Like, what the fuck's going on here, dude? Like, you just have these, like, random pockets of towns that are, like, you know, like, it just, like, why? 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 Why this area? <laughs> Fuck, yeah. God. Like, what's going on here? The, so the roads, Belgium, but like the inside part of the roads, Germany, what's what's happening? All right, chat, my food's ready. My food's ready. I think I'm going to call her. I think I'm going to call her, guys. I'm I'm cooking in this bear this bear outfit. I'm cooking. I got to get out. I got to escape. We gotta escape. Um, today was fun. I'm glad. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed Manor Lords. Let's uh, let's listen to some more of the music while we exit today. I hope you guys enjoyed Manor Lords. I might be live this weekend. If I'm not, I should be live on Monday again. Um, at normal time. So we'll probably play more of it Monday. I I'm loving the game. Um, I want to learn more about the warring mechanics and then I have some plans for some videos for Manor Lords too. And then, um, we should also start to return to some cities content as well next week. But are you wearing a one piece? Yeah, I am. I am indeed. Look at that. Look at that tail. I feel like it makes me look a lot fatter than I am too, which is perfect for being a bear. Which is perfect. I'm blown away by the quality of this suit. This suit's fucking incredible. <laughs> it's warm as shit, too. I should have got a bigger one so it wasn't as, like, tight. So I wouldn't have been as hot. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, all right, let's see who's live. Let's see who's live to raid. If you guys are watching on YouTube, um, stream's probably just going to end. Um, who is live? I think Moose is still live. Is Moose still live? I bet you Moose is still live. Let's raid Moose. I don't know. Moose went in blind. He didn't play at all prior to starting today's stream. So, oh no, what's going on? Okay, there we go. Yeah. Wait, did Moose just raid out? No, why doesn't he popping up in my thing anymore? Weird. 
All right, we're going to raid Moose. Thank you guys for watching today. I appreciate it. I'll be back on Monday at the latest. Otherwise, there might be some random streams this weekend just because I haven't been live quite a bit. And there's Banner Lords to play. So um, we'll see what's going on. Why does Moose have the game? It says Moose is playing twice. He's playing the game twice on my Steam list. That's kind of weird. Okay. Anyways, I'll catch you guys again on Monday at the latest. If not... You know. Well, I, I will see you on Monday at the latest. If I see you this weekend, then that's a good thing, right? Cool. Love you guys. Kiss, kiss. Wait, I canceled the raid. I ra I canceled the raid. Wait, we need a new raid. We need it. Wait, 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 wait. Everybody, wait. Stop. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Hold. 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 We have new sub emotes. There we go. We need to include Sussy and the Lord. Make sure that's the raid. That's the raid message. Use that raid message. All right, let's start the raid. Let's start the raid again. We're doing it again. All right. That's the new raid message. Use that one. If you guys aren't subscribed, use the regular one, okay? Okay, goodbye.